I've been streaming all day, talking non-stop, breaking down news, with each headline drop, reading some tweets, playing some games, turn off the stream, prep the next day, it's a wild game. In this Twitch worldview, for streamers like me, and shouters like you, wish these hot takes were fake, but they're all too true, yes they are, oh they are. Streaming in the new world with Chatterino. This bitch man that a bitch made. Lord knows that y'all just wanna spam bullshit in chat. Want me to click their links so I help form their views. But they don't have no subs and they don't have a view. And I'd give you a click, but I'm covering news. Cause a bitch man that a bitch made. I wish debate bros would stick to ideals, but they drama farm for deals on other platforms out there. Oh Lord, we got streamers on kick, showing their dick, and they're trying to make gambling look fair. Now if you're spamming away in a parasocial haze, my moms will step in, put you in a timeout phase. Your minds are in here right now, so stop breaking their brains. Take a week off of chat. There's your five minutes of fame. Lord, it's a wild game. In this Twitch worldview, for streamers like me and shadows like you, wish these hot takes were fake, but they're all too true. Yes, they are. Oh, they are. I've been streaming all day, giving it straight. At the top of the hour is a three minute break. What's going on, everybody? I'm a sound piker in this house, and I broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles. It's 68 degrees and sunny here in Los Angeles, California, and I'm live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is Thursday, December 14, 2023, right? Thursday, December 14, 2023, and I am right on time. I guess a little bit late. It's 11.44. A little bit late, and this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news. So I'll tell you, you know, why I'm late, I guess. Uh, it's because end of the broadcast after playing Ready or Not last night, uh, which was fun. Cop Simulator. It's all right. It's not, like, that great, honestly. There's there's definitely some bugs with it. Definitely some issues with it. Um, but, yeah, I uh, did that. Went to sleep relatively early. Woke up in a, in a hot flash at, like, 4 a.m. My dreams have been really fucked up lately. And um, not because I'm ready or not. It's just, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. I'm constantly having arguments in my in my dreams, right? Which is probably not very healthy. <laughs> oh, I got the new Tiltify plaque in the back. Yeah. Good eye. Chatter. Arguing with us. Arguing with the haters of my dreams. Yeah. Taking up too much mental space. Um... It is reflective, I guess. That means you need more fun time with friends? Yes, I know. I'm going to work on that. Did you dream about Austin being really at you? Then his mom hitting you with a spoon? No. Tiltify is the uh, is the intermediary, I guess, that we used. Please change your notification. It's old. I'll do it in the new year. Uh, Death Stranding, A24 movie, Pog. I don't think it's a Pog moment. I think it's a not-so-Pog moment. I think uh, this is going to probably suck. But speaking of which, in personal news wise, uh, I did start Death Stranding again. I restarted it on my on my Stream Deck OLED. I downloaded that and I downloaded Red Dead 2. Kai Stream React? What was what's there to react to Kai? Death Stranding itself is already a movie, kind of. And a very weird one too. So Kai and Nicki Minaj. The yard talked about your anger on not being great at dodgeball. It's true. I was. Made me sad. Kai had Nicki Minaj on? Jesus Christ. This isn't what I normally post, but I thought this was funny. Also, Kai on Nicki Minaj's stream. I had, huh? or, is that really your name? Or Nicki Minaj on Kai's that? stream? What do you mean, why? We got Smart Water. We have liquor. We have liquor. We have orange juice. 355k peak viewers. Pretty insane. It is not an impersonator. Um, That's crazy. I mean, there's nothing that... There is no equivalent to what Kai is doing, honestly. There's no equivalent, like, in the streaming space. Nothing. Like, the, the Ninja Drake thing is nothing in comparison to this. 
It was at 3 a.m. too. That's crazy. When is the first Hassan TD stream? I'm planning on doing it on, uh, I'm, I'm actually planning on doing my first TD stream on, on Saturday. I saw people posting pictures of that stream I thought would never watch Twitch otherwise. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll look at the Kaisen ass stuff. Could you announce Death Stranding movie A24? I know, I know. Show chat was happening tomorrow. 600K gifted subs. We're excited to team up with Twitch on their biggest subscription giveaway ever, giving more than 600,000 subs in the GTA 5 category. See some GTA RP communities best featured on Twitch's homepage. Uh, they're doing an RP week this week. Is it fair to say that Biden's admin's attempts to win over Republicans by supporting their Nazi immigration policies have made the notion of a lesser evil indefensible? No, it's just what the lesser evil is. Did you know Steven Seagal wrote his own movie? I did not, but I love that. Okay, anyway, listen. You have the concert Saturday. Don't forget, lol. Yeah, that's at night. Um, why do you think Spanish-speaking speaker streamers are more in touch with mainstream artists and English-speaking speech, uh, speak streamers remain in the fringe for the most part? Easy. The entire world watches American and English-speaking content, but the entire country and the entire Latin world, which is much smaller than the entire world, obviously, uh, consumes Spanish-speaking content. Therefore, it's kind of like this. I, I can I could tell, like... I, I can I can relate this back to my own personal experience, like being Turkish, right? If I was a Turkish speaking streamer and I was uh, consistently only doing Turkish streams, I would be able to get much bigger celebrities from Turkey on my stream. Why? How? Well, because you're like there's much more limitations. There's much more. Um, it's much smaller. It's a much smaller audience. But obviously, in the grand scheme of things, there's not as much diversity of content. Does that make, does that make sense? Because big English streamers are a bunch of freakazoids for the most part. Shadow, just look at Hassan. First of all, pretty funny that you say that because I'm objectively one of the more normal. Camera shake is out of hand. Can you turn it on the setting? Is it? I guess like when I do that. But like, not really. I, I feel like if people are just like people get like way more. Chat forgetting you already did a titty stream before. I didn't do that. I said, should I do it? What? Dude, hold up. Camera shake chatters are just as bad as the chewing noise chatters. I know. Um, anyway, listen, listen. Uh, as far as that goes, like, there is so much variety. There's a much larger audience when you're an English speaker. It's the big, it's the biggest field, right? It's kind of like this. I will give you an analogy. Kind of like this. When you go to Los Angeles, if you're a if you're a fucking nine in your hometown in Kansas, you might not necessarily be perceived as such in Los Angeles. Okay? Would you rather be a nine in your hometown in Kansas? Or would you rather be perceived as a seven in Los Angeles? Or a six? English speakers are a six in Los Angeles. English speaking streamers basically farm out to the rest of the planet. Pretty much everyone speaks English. Okay, but it's a much larger pool with a lot more content out there. Whereas if you are, for example, like my friend in France, right? Squeezy Lucas, he is the top dog in France. But that's because he's a, a French first content creator. Does that make sense? They play to a smaller pool. They play uh, like Spanish speaking Spanish-speaking streamers play to a smaller pool, but of course, it's still a fucking massive country or a collection of countries, right? So obviously, more people are going to tune in, whereas because there's less variety of like uh, and less competition, and therefore they become like real full-blown influencers that are famous celebrities in their countries. Everybody knows Squeezy in France, exactly. But when we hung out in America in Los Angeles, like people weren't coming up to him. But I know for a fact if we walk around in France, like, motherfuckers are going to stop them, right? Using bro signs to explain online entertainment is funny as fuck. Yeah, well, you got to you gotta play to your strengths. And then there are, of course, content creators that transcend beyond that and become, like, universal, right? And when they get to that point of universality, like Mr. Beast, then they're Mr. Beast. But I would say it takes, uh, it takes more. It, there's uh, a, a, a lot more competition to get to the Mr. Beast point, because Mr. Beast is serving the entire planet, not just, like, America. Anyway, have you watched the Love Has One Cult documentary yet on HBO? No. What? So excited to cover the Ziony Wood shit today. Please tell me that shit's on the menu. I don't even know what that is. New holiday party meta. Oh, I saw this holiday party. Dude, anti-white grievances 
Uh, Anti-white grievances are back, dude. This is my shit. Boston Mayor under fire for a secret no whites Christmas party. Did you watch the talk Alex Jones Tucker Carlson thing? I was looking to see if you had a vid on it, but I couldn't find anything. Not really, because I don't really care. Yeah, Clarissa Ward went into Gaza. We'll start off with that. We'll watch that. And we'll watch some of the, the uh, Gaza updates real quick. But um, personal news-wise, the haters of the yard did a segment on you. I don't want to even watch it. Maybe later. EPB Giatanyahu of Israel. We got to stop this. Will you talk about the MP extinguishing menorah in Poland? Yeah, I covered it yesterday. It's not that big of a news story. So, like, uh, it, probably nobody cut, like, a video out of it. But I already made fun of him a lot. Like, a lot. Did you see the streamer who did a sexual drawing of the prophet and got banned? And now Reddit is losing its mind. What? what are we doing? What are we doing? Is this, like... Is this like 2008? Like, what the fuck? A streamer did a sexual drawing of a pro of the prophet. Like, this is some real fucking. We're doing replays. Like, what's happening? We're doing straight up replays. Like, what the fuck is this? No, that's wrong. The person that got banned for that posted their reason, and it was literally ban evasion. It's just redditors focusing on them drawing the prophet. Ugh, so gross. I just, I hate the internet, dude. The LSF thread is literally the most Islamophobic shit. I fucking, I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't know. It's so nasty. Have we been drawing anything today? I don't know. I just want to fucking, uh, I literally just, I, I, ugh. I knew your job is on the internet. Check my sweaty. I know. It just like makes me not want to fucking be online ever. Like, God, it's so awful. Damn. Any Kai updates? No. I mean, I just took her to the park this morning. She ran around. Kind of tired. She passed out right now. Um, art, drama, and nudity on Twitch. Uh, Larissa Ward gets into Gaza. Half of the people have read it. What is this? Half of the people on Reddit. Uh -huh. You seem very depressed today. It's just like shit's been depressing, man. The news have been the news has been kind of the news has been shitty as hell, nonstop. There's endless uh, conflict. People don't give a fuck. Top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. You know, it's just it's just sad. It's a sad world. Nothing changes. Art drama nudity on Twitch. Closer word gets in the Gaza. Another hospital. Kai Sinat, Nicki Minaj stream. And more get in now. I think most people do give a fuck, but we just haven't organized enough to be able to do something about it. What do you mean organized enough? There's like a tremendous amount of organization happening. It's just, you just got to keep fucking pushing the, you just got to keep pushing it. There's not really much else you can do. You just got to keep applying pressure. Anyway, um, this song is uh, from Lo-Fi Hip Hop. It's a mess. Sunrise over Casablanca is a uh, Lo-Fi Hip Hop. Hassan, are you a barb? I'm a barb now. Ever since Nicki Minaj took out Henry Kissinger with a tweet, I've been a barb. When you watch Godzilla Minus One at home in a few months, you'll regret not watching it in theaters. You'll remember me that I warned you. What do you mean? <laughs> Dude, okay. I'll regret it, and I'll remember you, and I'll be like, damn. Jojanite was so right, and I was so wrong for defying him. Thoughts on Steven Crowder's new look? Oh, fuck. I didn't even need to shave my goddamn beard, bro. He doesn't even look like me no more. He tweeted the word drama, and I clicked as fast as I could. What did I miss? Nothing yet. Here we go. Blast off. Blasting off. Blasting off. Blast on off. Put on weight. I think he's doing, like, steroids or some shit. Here, what is this? Let's watch this. Make him even more atheist-y. <laughs> Atheistify him 10x. Keep his current look, but out of fedora is science Miss Eve. <laughs> depict this scene where gaggle of hot chicks are thanking him for explaining how God isn't real. Wait, how God isn't uh, a good, explaining how God isn't a good call. He's imagining this while practicing his katana routine in the garage. Why are they Japanese? Because he's libertarian. Reddit atheism, Reddit atheism is libertarianism uh, packaged in a new way. And libertarians automatically have uh, Chinese wives or, or Japanese wives. They're all Asian. They're, Libertarian guys with Asian wives is, a, is the meta. I like how, f uh, like, it looks like he has synthol in his arms, though. Render him completely baffled when after death he finds himself in hell rather than his science and peer-reviewed studies. 
<laughs> yeah. A couple things make me hope that I'm just entirely wrong and like God is real and hell is real. One of them is obviously one of them is obviously people like, you know, evil monsters that just do so much harm to others. Like I hope hell is real and they suffer, right? But then the other reason is because it'll be really funny seeing all the Reddit atheists that are so fucking annoying be like, oh, no, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong this entire time. It's like, bro, whatever. Fuck it. I'll, I'll sit there I'm because I'm going there. You know what I mean? I, I know I'm going there. You have actually helped, with the, helped me with the Palestinian conflict. I hope reincarnation is real. I want some do-overs. That's not how reincarnation works, though. Like, if you were shit, you get reincarnated as, like, like something stupid, like the bug that carries around poop, right? Isn't that how that works? Like you get downgraded until you inevitably like get reincarnated into being like, what is it? What What is it? Like you, you just keep getting upgraded. You can, you keep getting upgraded, upgraded, upgraded. And then like ultimately what? Like you get reincarnated as like what Brad Pitt. And then it's like, you're, you're closer to Nirvana than anybody else. Yeah. Like if you're a Twitch streamer, this chatter is correct. Let's say you're a Twitch streamer, okay? And then you've been a bad boy. You've been a bad Twitch streamer. You die, you get reincarnated into a Facebook streamer. And then you've been a bad boy, you get reincarnated into... What's worse than a Facebook streamer? I mean, a kick streamer. <laughs> you've been a bad boy even more than that. You get reincarnated into Rumble. You get a bad... You, <laughs> a TikTok creator stuck at 200, 300 views per video. I thought cows are supposed to be top tier. I'm not trying to be racist. I'm not sure if that was racist, but it feels like there's a whole cow thing. Is it? Why would a cow be top tier globally when cows are like fucking globally? They're getting murked. Yeah. Maybe if you're a cow in India. Yeah. If you're a cow in India, like shit's kind of pog, right? You get to chill on the road. Nobody moves you around, you know, but like if you're a cow, like the only place outside of India where cows are being treated like holy uh, beings is, is those TikTok farms. Okay. Where they have like the, prettiest cows i've ever seen they sometimes pop up on my for you page i don't know if you guys have ever seen these cows i don't know if y'all have seen these cows like they're so they're so beautiful it like blows my mind how beautiful these goddamn cows are where they're just like handsome right they're just pretty they got like hair i feel like they get hair supplements and shit anyway i saw them eating pumpkin pie like i saw a lady in this fucking cow farm i saw this last night I saw a lady in this cow farm giving their cows pumpkin pie. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. And it's like, bro, if you're living, you're living La Vida Loca, my, my man. Like, what the hell is this? Look, look, look. This is the one place outside of India where cows are being treated so well. Surprising our spoiled cows with pumpkin pie. Also, look at how rizzed up these cows are. Like, I feel like you let these cows out into the real world. They're, they're fucking your cowgirl. Okay. These cows... They're going to steal the other cow's uh, uh, boyfriends, 100%. Like, look at this hair. Or is, does it not work that way? I wonder, I wonder what it works like. I wonder how that works in the cow world. You know what I mean? Steam Deck remote play is no longer available, huh? Also, isn't this kind of like, I guess, I mean, pumpkin pie has like milk in it, no? But I guess like cows drink milk, right? I wonder why you're wondering this shit. I'm just saying like, you're in, you're in the cow world. You're in the cow universe, okay? You're fucking mooing around. You're the goat. Well, not the goat. You're the cow. You're the, you're the big cow in the playpen. And then all of a sudden, one of these fuckboys come rolling around, and it's like, it's like the Timothy Chalamet cow. You know what I mean? All the other cows are like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. What the hell is this shit? All the other cows are now like, damn, this cow's hot as hell. So this is what I mean. Do they care about this? Do they care about like how fluffy their hair is and stuff? Or are they just like, eh, I don't really give a fuck. You're not throwing it down like that. You're not. Timothy Shalamu. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at this. It's so unfair, bro. It's so unfair. Most of the cows out there are just like slammed into these densely packed areas only to get pushed into the fucking meat grinder and come out of the other side a uh, uh, McDon McDonald's McDonald's hamburger patty. Meanwhile, these fucking cows look. This one looks goth. You're right. What do you think? They both got the like TikTok that? fuckboy zoomer cut and shit, and they're eating pumpkin pies all day. 
You hyper criticize every piece of content, dude. I'm just saying, these are the type of things I thought about last night when I saw this on my TikTok for you page, where I was just like, what's happening with these <laughs> fucking cows? Why are they so handsome? It's weird. These cows look soft, zero edge. Try? Yeah, dude, what's happening to our cows? Back in the day, cows used to be, cows used to have dreams. Cows used to stand for something. Nowadays, our cows look like they're TikTok Zoomers. What's going on? These cows, they do not have any jagged edges. They have soft hands. Our cows are no longer producing milk. You're starting to understand that people who hate you just for being attractive. I don't think people just hate me for being attractive. I, I, I think they hate me for other reasons. For good reasons. I'm a bad person. I mean, this is crazy, dude. Ever since Austinox made Hostinox, you've been slowly spreading more vegan propaganda. What's up with that? What, vegan propaganda is like showing you an animal being cute that is not ready for, immediately ready for like consumption? That's what vegan propaganda is? Cows just want high-speed rail too. NJ Transit Rail Service is subject to up to a 45-minute delay between Newark Penn and PSNY due to police activity near Newark Penn Station. Oh my God, look how fucking dog shit this station looks like. NJ Transit Rail tickets pass between Cross Honor by Path and Hoboken. Police activity. So, yeah, I, I just, like, it's disgusting, dude. It's this so, ugh. I mean, look, having the fucking Longhorn in there, ruin in transit is, like, obviously what immediately people hyper-focus on, and they think, like, wow, that's crazy. Like, how did that happen? I immediately look at how disgusting this train station looks like. What the fuck? Soviet-era train station knows the U.S.? First of all, how dare you desecrate the good name of Soviet-era train stations? Soviet-era train stations are fucking incredible. Look at the look at Ukraine. They double as bomb shelters. They got, like, fucking chandeliers and shit down there. It's crazy. It's crazy nice. Ukraine has, like, the GDP of Alabama on a good day before the invasion, and their their public transit was infinitely better than ours. There's a lot of... There's a, there's a lot of things you can say about the USSR and, and the Soviets in general, but, uh, you know, they, they cared a lot about a lot of these amenities. These are the types of amenities, especially in, like, areas where there was, a, you know, a lot of population density. A couple things you can't shit on with, like, socialist countries is obviously don't ask them about, like, how they're uh, treating uh, uh, religious practice and stuff or, or uh, how they maintain, like, uh, some kind of ethnic homogeny, Right. But one thing you can't shit on them is, like, literacy rates and fucking public amenities that they work very hard to keep uh, well. <laughs> Don't ask the Soviets what happened to the Tatars, but, or, or uh, whether or not you can practice Islam. However, ask the Soviets about the fucking train stations all day. They will show you. Can't expect people to respect the public space if we can't respect people enough to build and maintain something that provides dignity. You could try the Bukele approach referencing the Greeks making public spaces nicer than private space for the anti-commies. I don't think they care. I think people just see, I think people see public transit as like gross. Ew, I need to be next to the poor. I need to be, I'm around, um, I need to be around like homeless people. Fuck that. And it's like weird because homeless people use public transit partially because they have no like valid fucking alternatives for shelter, temporary or permanent, right? So it's like this, this problem that is is baked into the structure in and of itself. Can we get to hentai reacts where there is live host reaction to X-ray vision impregnation? Um, I'm not gonna lie. At first, I thought not a big deal. Probably people are exaggerating with respect to like the art, the the uh, art nudity drama. Okay, and then I realized, no, it's actually not overblown at all. People saw the meta. And people saw that Twitch was making it like, you know, Twitch was making it permissible. And they're maxing out on this shit, dude. They are maxing out. Like, in, in ways that I did not think was even possible. There was, there was a, uh, there was a fucking hentai drawing stream at the top of the, at the top of the, the uh, leaderboard earlier this morning. Someone was doing an 18 plus hentai drawing stream. I have a question. What do you have against Persians? Or is it just a joke? I'm new here. What is a history college professor? Persia was the shit in the ancient world, way better than the Greeks or Ottomans. Okay, it is a joke. Duh. It's a, it's a fucking holdover from uh, when my roommate, when I first started, uh, my, my uh, roommate was Persian, well, Iranian, and we used to joke about it all the time. I would tell him, like, it was like a, like a weird fake beef that we had where we would talk about how the Ottoman Empire is better than the Persian Empire. 
Will Neff showed his doll's titties last night. Law, hilarious. There's a legit nude thumbnail in the recommended stream section. Yeah, I don't know what's happening right now, but um, it is definitely crazy. Here is Asmongold hitting a fucking hot take. Uh, he said, Twitch isn't and has never been a safe space for underage people. Everyone fixates on boob streamers, but the reality is many Twitch streamers cover topics and have conversations that would be wildly inappropriate for minors to be involved in. New Twitch changes are a W. Twitch also is not necessarily a platform for minors in general. If you look at, I remember, I, I don't know if it was Casey Tron or who, who was actually posting the overarching like numbers. It's kind of sad when you think about it, but Twitch is actually a much older platform than you would suspect. A lot of people think like, oh, people are watching Ninja play Fortnite. And that's like, that might've been true, but the Twitch platform actually aged. The platform aged across the board. Maybe like when Twitch was in its heyday with the Fortnite stuff, a lot of those people were like 13, 14. But that at this point is like six years ago, right? The reality of the matter is YouTube unironically is a much younger platform. TikTok is obviously the youngest of the platforms as far as like their main audiences. Twitch, on the other hand, pretty old. You see a lot of people uh, behave as though they are young and you assume that that's the case. But the age demographics of Twitch users, uh, the, the largest demographic is the 18 to 24 year olds, 25 to 32 year olds, is the second largest. And this breakdown is pretty similar to what my audience looks like as well. Do you not think the numbers are fake? Kids aren't exactly signing up the websites to say that they're 15 or whatever. No, of course. Of course. So that is the nature of the beast, though. That is just how the internet works. That is the nature of the beast. Um, obviously, no matter what age you are, you're also going to be able to find a way around censorship and the safeguards that you have to go directly and watch porn, right, online. That's just the, that's just the reality of the situation. And I myself have thought about what the impact of that might be on a younger audience in general. Because I don't know. I, I didn't grow up in a fucking, uh, you know, unrestricted access to porn period that I could just, like, access from my phone. I When I was in my more formative years, when I was growing up, porn was actually very restricted. Uh, maybe too restricted, as a matter of fact. I, I, I think that it, there's a delicate balance there. But having said that... Um, that's just like straight pornography that uh, every child can have access to online immediately and with ease. Whereas, uh, whereas like as far as the, the uh, people being terrified of Twitch demographics in general, especially when this is like at its peak. Take a look at this data detail on Twitch's age, dem age demographics in 2020. I wonder where Casey Tron got this information from. But um, Myth was 16, 17 when he started streaming Fortnite. The kids grew up. Kids nowadays watch TikTok. That's full of twerking and ladies fully not clothed. Yeah, I mean, there is definitely, there's definitely broad availability and and uh, and mass access to all matter of different types of of vices online, and I think it's up to the platforms to try to control it as best as they possibly can. But obviously, it's never going to be perfect, and there are certainly going to be young people online that are lying about their age, and that's going to happen. But the goal for platforms in general is supposed to. Um, uh, the goal, uh, in general, for platforms is is, is is to ensure that they are, you know, making they're taking the necessary precautions and making sure that there is like uh, very little, uh, there are there are very little rule breakers. But of course, there are going to be people that break the rules. It's like seatbelts, any manner of regulation. You write the laws for the dumbest person in mind, or for the most vulnerable population in mind in general, right? But then. There are still going to be people that break those rules and, and violate the law. However, the goal is to ensure that most people follow it. Most people will, uh, you know, m most people don't want to be bothered. Um, as far as I would say vices goes, as far as vices goes, I've mentioned this already, but um, as far as vices goes, like sexual content, softcore content, sex work of like a much lighter variety is... Nowhere near as bad a vice, I, like I said, I, I, or, or, as is uh, unrestricted, unfettered access to like all matter of hardcore pornography, because it, it is a gray area as, as far as like what is damaging to the psyche, because I feel like there is definitely, it's a cultural phenomena. In America, we are very puritanical. This kind of cultural phenomena doesn't actually... Uh, this kind of cultural phenomena uh, surrounding nudity does not exist in... European countries, right? 
Does that make sense? Do you guys understand what I mean? Like, for example, there is literally straight up porno, uh, porno, like pornographic material that you can watch on television in uh, after certain hours. We talked about this on the latest episode of the podcast, like RTL, a German channel, is uh, one of the channels that I uh, would watch to see boobies back in the day. So there's definitely, um, we definitely have like a, a, a more outdated approach to nudity and pornography. We're way more pu uh, puritanical. It's super damaging, not really making sense. Bad take, sorry. Porn fucks you up young people's brains. I wouldn't be mad if it was all banned all around. It's going to bring more porn brain rot men and boys. Yeah, I, I think as far as uh, pornographic material being readily available, pornographic material being readily available does contribute to the harm, but the harm is not being done by the porn, if that makes sense. I think that this has been a, uh, a persistent take of mine on this issue. It's just that the issue starts not with pornography, but instead with patriarchy. The issue starts with a lack of sex ed and appropriate avenues to have these kinds of conversations. And the cultural phenomena of being incredibly puritanical and wanting to control women's bodies specifically. Like, these are all of the major factors. And that's precisely the reason why sexual violence existed before readily available pornographic material. As a matter of fact, it was probably higher. If I'm not mistaken, I've looked at some of these numbers. Uh, and and um, since we've tracked things like this, uh, the the access to pornography has not directly contributed to more sexual violence, uh, even though it is a correlation and certainly not a causation. There's no causal effect regardless. Um, but you could not say the exact opposite even. Like you can't say that uh, readily, uh, like mass consumption and readily ready availability to pornographic material has uh, led to a spike in sexual violence. Hypocrite? What do you mean? The problem also is that a lot of the information that you have on this subject unfortunately comes from, unfortunately comes from, and this is a Utah State University study, which is what I was going to mention. Unfortunately, I, and I haven't seen this one yet, but a lot of the studies are actually backed by uh, secular seeming institutions that are actually just Mormon institutions or hyper-religious institutions that are funding studies like this. And the studies themselves are like... Uh, in, the studies themselves are, are usually very wonky. Christian groups are super anti-sex work, and uh, they've figured out that if you attach uh, Christianity to your anti-sex work research, people go, ah, no. So they actually find a way to make themselves seem non-Christian or secular or even progressive, as a matter of fact, in order to sell the idea. But usually uh, it, it is a, a lot of the, like, porn corrupts people's brains or whatever comes from um, it, it, it oftentimes comes from, you know, very uh, religious and very puritanical uh, approaches. So overall, I think the problem is if they don't clearly label their method. I mean, we're talking about straight up pornography now, right? We are talking about straight up hardcore pornography and, and the ready access to uh, uh, straight up pornography that you can consume as someone under the age of 18, which I do think is probably not good. I, I, I don't think that it's good. It, it, like, immediately, my opinion is um, having that much uh, easy-to-access uh, gratifying material, if that's, like, what you're seeking out, is never going to be a, a good thing. There needs to be some safeguards on things like that. I don't know what the best methods are. I've, I will readily admit that. However, um, sexual violence, specifically sexual violence uh, against women has certainly predated pornographic content in general. Um, and another good example is, yes, uh, a Turkish chatter pointed this out, but there's no porn in Turkey. Porn is, is not available. There is, it's, you get banned. Like every pornographic site is banned across the board in Turkey. And yet, do you think that uh, there is no violence against women in Turkey? Do you think that there's no sexual violence against women in Turkey? Do you think that there's no, uh, like misogyny still persists? It only contributes to sexual repression. People say VPN, but the average person, like this is also a ridiculous thing because any kind, of, any kind of hurdle you place in front of something is going to cause a lot of people to not access it at all. You have to understand this. You've been online. Even like the age, like even the age checkbox 
immediately knocks out a big chunk of people. I know it doesn't stop everyone, and of course, it's still not like a very successful method at all, but it still stops people from accessing it because people don't want to be bothered. Security theater works in that regard. Security theater, for example, is not actually there to genuinely stop uh, perpetrators of, of violence. Like the TSA is not there to, to legitimately stop acts of terror. They actually have a very low success rate on that. The real acts of terror that they stop is uh, the, the uh, potential, like the potential acts of terror that uh, people, or the potential acts of terror that people might engage with that they don't because it's just too difficult or they think it's too difficult. So the problem is because America likes to burn the candle from both ends in every single circumstance, and I'll give you an analogy to abortion, right? If your goal is to limit the number of abortions that, uh, that people get, then you should literally do sex ed. But Americans don't want to do sex ed, and they want to stop people from having abortions at the same time, which then doesn't stop abortions at all. It just causes back alley abortions, which are harmful to women. Hundreds of thousands of women actually end up becoming infertile as a consequence of, of the issues that uh, persist in back alley abortions. And the situation is identical to, uh, to sexuality. Well, one, because the, the major vector of why this kind of conversation occurs in America and the way that it occurs is the same. It's uh, controlling women's bodies, bodily autonomy, and also um, a, 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 like, a, like a patriarchal approach. It's a weird Catholic Dark Ages holdout uh, that we have persisted for some weird reason. We've uh, continued for some weird reason here in the United States of America, despite not being a uh, overwhelmingly Catholic nation. Does that make sense? So what do we do? If you want, if the goal of banning pornography truly is for people to, for children to develop healthily and have a uh, healthy relationship with sex and sexuality, okay, um, then you're supposed to do sex ed. That's it. But the very same puritanical attitude that says we have to ban pornography, we have to ban uh, the, the sexualization of women, and this is done from multiple different avenues in America especially. You have uh, people that want to ban porn feministly. You have people that want to ban uh, sexualization uh, even if people are doing it on their own volition. You, you have people doing that from a reactionary point of, point of view. Most of it is reactionary, in my opinion. But you also have people that want to ban it from a, a progressive point of view as well, right? It's, it's a very interesting phenomenon. And, and um, the, the irony is that if, you're, if your overarching goal isn't necessarily to just simply ban porn because you hate it, but the real reason why you want to ban porn is because you think it contributes negatively to uh, people's development, okay, uh, their their uh, development of their sexuality and their understanding of uh, sex in general, then you shouldn't be even touching porn, really. The real problem to tackle in that regard would not be pornography, but it would be sex ed. Very interesting. A very interesting phenomena. And then, once you actually do uh, engage with the subject matter, once you do actually have sex ed in schools, for example... Uh, and then if there are still problems that persist, then you move on to the entertainment factor. Does that make sense? If the government implements China, Turkey style restriction on porn, Twitter will bitch about it. USA doing the opposite. Twitter is still uh, bitching about it. Pick a fucking side. Yeah, because well, most people just want to bitch. Yeah. Also, banning porn causes ethical and not ethical porn to be hosted on the same sites. Yes. The, before we continue on with this conversation, of course, I have to repeat something that uh, maybe most people are not very aware of, right? Um, and that is, there's a difference between porn, sex work, and also sex trafficking. One is, uh, something that an adult can consent to doing. Okay. There is still, of course, the coercive conditions of capitalism that persist behind the background of every action that we take, no matter what. However, that is across the board. That is for every single human being. That is the same coercive conditions that lead people into going and working at McDonald's, right? But people always conflate, uh, when it comes to sex work, people always conflate sex trafficking with sex work. There are still plenty of women who on their own volition and plenty of men who on their own volition want to do sex work. They like it, they enjoy it, they think it's fun, and they like making money off of it, right? Sex trafficking, on the other hand, is of course horrifying, illegal, and uh, the government should 
uh, put an end to it as best as they can. The idea that trafficking enables sex work is actually completely incorrect. If you talk to any sex workers and not like former sex workers who are now reactionarily anti-sex work, they will tell you that as a matter of fact, actual regulation surrounding it or decriminalization in general is how you allow organizations to focus on rule breakers and not the overwhelming majority of, of, of people that actually engage in it in a consensual manner. If you make the entirety illegal, then people who are doing something consensually that most people consume and enjoy is just as illegal as the other stuff that everybody understands is fucking completely impermissible, completely illegal, morally unjustifiable, horrifying. That's it. Um, and motherfuckers think they're brave for that very normal take of, like, uh, sex trafficking is bad when they make movies shouting about how they're exposing some secret. Yeah, exactly. What do you think of the take that every John is a rapist because sex under coercive conditions is rape? Sorry if you replied to this already. I had to take a phone call. Yeah, that stems from, like, pretty basic... Uh, a, a lack of fundamental, uh, lack of fundamentals on on actually listening to sex workers, and instead uh, approaching the subject matter uh, by listening to uh, people that have uh, reactionary opinions on sex work in general. Because obviously, um, the coercion under capitalism is always going to exist, no matter what. However, uh, it it makes it treats sex workers as though they're like little children, and it infantilizes them. It treats sex workers that like they have no capacity to fucking make these decisions. And it also forgets the other side of consent, which is enthusiastic consent versus consent in general, which is something that sex workers talk about all the time, as a matter of fact, and have been for years and years and years. Um, there are there are different boundaries when you talk about sex work. Do you have any pro-sex work book recs? Not necessarily. Stop dunking on random Twitter users and chat, you weirdos. Yeah, don't do that. This is, of course, a very difficult conversation to have. It's one of those issues. It's one of those issues that is very similar to like talking about criminal justice reform, specifically as it pertains to like uh, uh, prisoners' rights. Prisoners' rights is a is a very contentious subject to talk about in the United States of America, due to the fact that we have incredibly we have an incredibly draconian culture towards crime and punishment. So we want to fucking like literally kill everyone and anyone that has wronged people. And therefore, any single time when I uh, approach the matter and start trying to talk about prisoners as though they're full-blown human beings and, and uh, swing people's opinions towards a more rehabilitative approach to criminal justice, there are a lot of people, even in leftist communities, that are very progressive on every other issue that just drop it entirely. Sex work is similar to that as well, um, where uh, I think that our, our overarching uh, puritanical approach to sex and sex work in general comes from um it it comes from like the the american fundamentals you talk about sex workers who have the privilege to pick their customers the most female sex workers are used by misogynist men they think they can buy the body of a woman and also this is the other part of the conversation that completely avoids talking about like anyone else other than sex work this is why i say it's like an inherently misogynistic phenomena because it's like doing patriarchy but from the opposite end because it literally talks about it from the boundaries of, like, women being victims under uh, sex work, you know? It's just, it only talks about, like, women not having any agency. You're talking about, uh, you're talking about sex workers who have the privilege to pick up their customers. Now, this is a great conversation to have. A big part of the reason why women don't have the privilege to pick their customers is because sex work is criminalized in this country unconditionally, which means that the same access that you could have to certain amenities that you have in your other in other workplaces you do not have for sex work for example uh i've talked about this quite a bit back in the day uh with with uh what was it was it called fossa was it fossa and sesta and fossa the the bill that basically made it so that there were no more uh ads for sex work on uh fossa and, uh, and and sesta uh yeah this was uh, this was a bill back in the day that uh, uh, you know implemented severe punishments on on uh, featuring any kind of sex work on your your uh, adverse uh, advertisement sections and and it was sold as a sex trafficking law to knowingly uh, facilitate and support sex trafficking and which is always how uh, these things are sold and many sex workers uh, advocated against this because you can't say like 
Most people understand that uh, if you sell it as like we have to, we want to ban pornography unconditionally, or we want to ban por- sex work unconditionally, people are going to say, "Oh, that's that's bullshit. That's like some right wing reactionary bullshit." But which is why most people sell it as a as a uh, as a provision to combat sex trafficking, right? And many people understand this phenomena when it comes to other right wing framings on issues like pro life versus pro choice, right? Uh, when Republicans sell the idea of abortion, they don't sell it as like, we want to take away women's bodily autonomy. They sell it as we're pro-life and actually a fetus is a real life. Life begins at conception. But when you are, uh, when you have a a susceptibility to succumb to right-wing framing on an issue like sex work because of your personal hangups over sex work in general, and with the very real amount of exploitation and sexual violence that occurs in non-consensual uh, sex trafficking and sex like, slavery uh, situations, you end up uh, believing the right wing framing on a subject like this one. Um, but as far as Sesta Fossa goes, sex workers were very much against it, and um, and it still passed. And as a consequence of that, sex work became less safe because there were plenty of websites, uh, like I believe it was called Umbrella, like there were services online that sex workers would use to make sure that they can communicate with one another about bad johns, about, uh, you know, consumers of the uh, consumers of sex work that were uh, violent and awful. And the reality is those websites had to be taken down as a consequence of this new provision. And then, boom, all of a sudden, it's a less it's a less safe environment. A lot of the negative associations with sex work is also the reason why sex workers cannot move away from that industry if they choose to do so at any given time. Sex workers don't have the same access to banking, for example, and institutions that would otherwise um, institutions that would otherwise like allow you to live a normal life, and that actually traps women under coercive circumstances if you if you care about like female sex workers and male sex workers as well but that that traps sex workers into uh, uh basically only picking one lane and sticking to it so there's no there's no way that they can get out of it which can lead to dangerous uh, uh which can lead to a, a dangerous lane to stay on all of this of course comes from deregulating or not deregulating sorry decriminalizing sex work in general and without that you make it so much harder for sex workers to coexist peacefully in society and set up boundaries on what is uh, permissible and what is not. Isn't unregulated sex work basically indirect rape? Let's be honest. If they had direct opportunities, they wouldn't be selling their bodies. No, you're, this is wrong. Like This comes from just simply not uh, believing that this could ever happen. Okay? You're just you're you're not actually you're not actually thinking about the situation a little bit deeper, and you're simply saying you're thinking about the worst possible uh, uh, media introduction to sex work, which is like someone who's homeless, uh, you know, selling their body on the street in like really horrifying situations, right? You're only thinking about that person, and you're saying, well, if they had an opportunity, they wouldn't do that, and you're right, okay? But that's not the broad majority of sex work that is actually being regulated in ways that end up harming every single person that wants to consensually engage in it. Does that make sense? And it's not about unregulated sex work. It's about decriminalizing it. Because criminalization is not regulation. Criminalization is the worst aspect of regulation. It's not, that's not how you regulate anything. Okay? And what percentage of all sex workers want to be sex workers is not like you. This is unfortunately very, um, this kind of thinking is super commonplace. But it unfortunately isn't. Uh, it's not very, it's not, you're not thinking about it critically, right? Like you have made up your mind on the subject and now you're just kind of adding stuff in there uh, that you simply made up. Like you're saying, uh, what percentage of sex workers want to be sex workers? Not even 0.001% in my opinion. Um, a, a lot of this stuff could get cleared up if you simply talk to a sex worker. If you agree labor is coercive under capitalism, then you agree sex work under capitalism is rape because it is coerced? No. All labor is coercive under capitalism, but there are different levels of coercion that make something violent. It's like saying all work is technically slavery, okay? Because all labor that is done under coercive conditions is slavery. So now you're comparing prison labor, which is slavery definitionally, to someone working at McDonald's, okay? We're playing fast and loose with... um, 
we're, we're playing fast and loose with uh, definitions here and changing the subject matter into a, a very uh, changing the subject matter from like a like a impassioned and and very rational very critical analysis into a passionate one that is not rational at all yeah also i have had plenty of sex workers come on and talk about this sort of stuff and if you would like to find out more you can go to my youtube there's like plenty of conversations that i've had with sex workers active sex workers former sex workers in general um so you know if you're truly interested in hearing a different perspective this is why i always say sex work is real work and um of course, most people that, uh, I guess from a more progressive approach, want to abolish sex work don't necessarily have, um, they, they, they hold sex to a different regard. They think sex is, is a different type of work, and therefore it's, it's different. Like it's not, it should be regulated simply. And it, I think it comes from personal hangups towards uh, sex, sexuality, your own personal experience with that. <clears throat> Now, of course, we've moved far beyond what we were talking about with respect to Twitch, right? Um, this is far beyond that. So a lot of people make the mistake of labeling their complaints of, se uh, complaints of sex trafficking as sex work and then proceed to use that as a hammer against the profession. Uh, yeah. This conflation is a, is a very common one. It is inherently a reactionary conflation. It's like the conflation... Here, I'll give you a Palestine example. Anti-Zionism can be done by anti-Semites, right? Sometimes anti-Zionism can be anti-Semitism. But in the broadest sense of the concept, anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism, right? And the same dynamic exists for sex work, okay? Sex work is not sex slavery or sex trafficking. However, sex work is always conflated with sex trafficking. Sex work is done by adults in a consensual matter. Sex trafficking has no consent. I know a person who left retail slash service work to do sex work and felt more dignity in it. Yeah, I mean, I have friends uh, that the, the original brothel uh, conversation started when one of my stripper friends uh, uh, posted about a Hasanabi head at their strip club wearing my merch. And I posted on Twitter and we had fun uh, for a brief moment until anti-sex work leftists found it and they fucking uh, lost their minds. And then they took one of my uh, one of my older videos talking about sex work, where I talk about like going to a brothel, and they use that to be like Hassan is a rapist. He's a rapist, child sex trafficker. It's it also betrays the seriousness that you uh, supposedly uh, the seriousness of the conversation. Like if you think that if you think personally that um, you know this is the most evil thing, which I do. Right, I, I do feel like sex trafficking is one of the most evil things you can do. Right, then you wouldn't just like immediately fucking slap anybody doing that, anybody doing consensual sex work with like the the idea that they are participating in in you know rape and and sex trafficking of children. That's insane. So yeah, <sighs> how big of an issue is the sex traffic uh, allegations for you? You talk about it often as an example, but I don't see, but I don't know if I see people chirp about it. No, it's not a it's a, it's a ridiculous phenomena that uh, gets brought up uh, whenever, whenever like my name is in the media somehow, but it's not a big issue because it's a fucking ridiculous thing. The brothel still exists. is a very famous brothel called Artemis. They've successfully sued the city of Berlin for uh, conducting a raid and then claiming that there was sex trafficking happening in the brothel. Uh, brothels are legalized and regulated in Germany. And they won that lawsuit. They won two lawsuits against the city of Berlin for defamation. Um, so the, the, the boundaries that they try to fucking hit me on are already incorrect. But it's also ridiculous to, to fucking be like, oh, you went to a brothel one time in uh, 20, whenever, like 2010 or whatever the fuck, right? And that means that like you are uh, uh, participating in the, in the in the sex trafficking of minors like that's a ridiculous fucking uh, uh point of contention you would never do that um you you would never do that the only reason why you can do that is because sex work is is categorized as something different than the rest of work right yeah i was like 19 when i went a good comparison would uh would you rather work for mcdonald's or would you rather have your own hours work for yourself and be an only fan sex worker also many sex workers feel empowered by the job yes 
There were sex trafficking at the brothel. The lawsuit was over. The prosecutors comparing owners to Al Capone. There was sex trafficking at the brothel. It's literally on the Wikipedia page. Oh, my fucking God. I'm assuming that the Wikipedia page has been modified recently as well. Not even that. There was never a claim of sex trafficking except from Twitter freaks, only tax evasion. And for that claim and those reputational damages, they were awarded 250000 and donated all to a charity. There were never sex trafficking uh, charges against Artemis from prosecution. It doesn't matter at the end of the day because, like, the 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 only way this works is be, is because you fucking personally believe that someone going to a fucking strip club equals. Or I'll use strip club as a boundary because it's legal in America, right? If you go to a strip club and get a fucking lap dance from a stripper, and then someone says, "Oh, there's like uh, uh, one of the one of the strippers was, was being beaten up by their pimp," twenty years later, that means you beat up your stripper and you actually are participating in the beating of sex workers, that would be a ridiculous thing to, to put on someone. But because it's sex work is different, people can get away with making this conflation because many people don't think about it. And it's like a very unique thing for them. When Big Mike said this on Flagrant, it changed my attitude. Pushed into doing a lot of things. Well, uh, what is this? Now, but but, but yeah. just, to, just to bookend that, but yeah. she got... Big Mike is also another... goaded ass fucking uh, pro sex work content creator as well. Pushed into doing a lot of things weird when you like actually date sex workers you end up seeing them as full human beings uh worthy of dignity and uh and, and it's really interesting to think about but i myself was of course like a, a swerf as well like at most people's starting position is like that where you because yes it's kind of your fault but not really what <laughs> You were a swerve. Like I had, I had sexist ass opinions about sex workers too, for sure. It's very common. It's very common to have that perspective. It's incredibly uncommon to defend sex work, especially if you are not a sex worker yourself. And most people don't want to listen to sex workers in general because they infantilize them. The very same stripper I talked about that started the brothel controversy, quite literally was bullied by the very same swerfs that kept saying, oh, sweetie, you just don't know. You're a victim, and you don't know it. The default position in a place like America is that, like, sex work is bad. It's across the, word, uh, across the board bad, and all, it's only women that engage in it, and they're doing it at the behest of men, and they're actually doing it because uh, they are coerced into it, and it's bad. And there are elements of coercion, for sure. There are elements of normal coercion, uh, that exists under capitalism. And then there's also obviously sex trafficking. Okay. Problem with sex work, influencing more sex work. Like that's the only way to get by. Please stop this. But again, you're not making an argument as to why it's bad. You're simply saying it's bad. It's, it's a tautology. You're saying it's bad. And everyone agrees with me that it's bad without saying why it's bad. A lot of people who are otherwise rational, for some reason, can't see it this way. Or, yeah, it is a it is a truism. Influencing women who thinks their body is only good for sex, not nah, influence more nurses. That's so funny. <laughs> so, you still haven't talked about why this is like why women doing sex work is a bad thing, because I don't think women who do sex work think their body is only good for sex. You're the one who's saying that. You understand? If you talk to sex workers, they will tell you. One thing that, as a matter of fact, I've talked about uh, quite a bit on this broadcast is about sex workers on this platform. Amaranth is one example that I use quite frequently. Amaranth is an incredibly successful sex worker, right? And the sex work that she does from start to, uh, to, finish, uh, to, start to end is the personal, uh, like, it is her allowance for you to you know, look at that and, and jerk off to it if that's what you want to do. Like, that's, a, that's the boundaries that she's set. But once that's over, she's just, you know, she's a person. She's a business owner. Like, so when she talks about other stuff, for example, turning around and going, oh, well, shut the fuck up. You're a sex worker. I'm going to objectify you. I'm not going to actually treat you with dignity, which you should uh, treat sex workers with dignity as well. But I'm saying, like, I'm going to sexualize you in an inappropriate setting is not correct. You're not supposed to do that. Actually, a lot of sex workers say they wouldn't do this if they could, but they see no better options financially. You just happen to live around and know the glamorous ones. 
I mean, some of the sex workers I'm talking about are not exactly doing glamorous sex work. If you, do, I don't know what you mean by that. Like these aren't like super famous people. Like the my stripper friend is not famous. She just strips. And also, you just described most work, almost all work, every single type of work. You just described a job. So it always goes into, it always revolves around the same concept, which is it's actually different. It's actually different because it's sex. That's it. You're putting all sex workers under a huge umbrella. There's a stark difference between an OnlyFans girl and a prostitute that answers to a pimp. As a matter of fact, if you knew what you were talking about, you would recognize that there isn't. And I mean that in a negative way for the OnlyFans girls as well. Even OnlyFans, as a matter of fact, is riddled with coercive elements beyond just like someone putting a camera on and doing OnlyFans. Um, there is a shit ton of, of coercion and a shit ton of, I would say, illegal stuff happening behind the scenes on the management side of OnlyFans. A lot of the uh, wages are being withheld from the actual OnlyFans performers themselves. So you're... you're you're not right on that front. And of course, the only way to deal with that is by trying to fight against the stigma surrounding this kind of thing and actually dealing with the matter as though you would with other forms of labor. And yes, sex work is a huge umbrella. There is a difference between an OnlyFans girl and a prostitute that answers to a pimp. But what you are most likely pointing to here, I mean, you're what you're pointing to here is a incredibly coercive component that is significantly more violent than the other thing that we're talking about, right? Withholding wages for an OnlyFans girl is not the same as like a prostitute that answers to a pimp that's beating her, that is like coerced into this and is like walking the streets. I feel like the sex work stands and your prison stands are equal and how people are unable to comprehend is frustrating. Yes, because when I, when I bring this subject matter up, I am not dealing with people who are looking at this with a fresh uh, uh, attitude, with a new attitude or with an open mind. I'm dealing with people's biases. It's very difficult to unwind people. I would go so far as to say it's even more... It, it's like another, another issue is like obviously transphobia, right? Like it's very, very difficult to go through this subject matter and have people comprehend it with a, with a charitability that it needs in order to change their minds, right? That's it. Like this person, for example, went from... here. Uh, it, it, this is bad argumentation, right? Um, classic bad argumentation. One, he brought up uh, unsubstantiated information that he personally made the fuck up. I talked to, uh, I talked about it. Then he said, 99% of uh, sex working is unregulated though. Big Mike is an Obama's wife, made a joke about Michelle Obama being uh, a man, obviously transphobic. But then he said, feels like that you're basing all of this info off of your stripper friends, Germany and Holland. Just walk into the streets of a third world country or the rest of countries in Europe. They're usually working to support an addiction that brought them to that position. You're pairing up a lot of other issues now. You're pairing up a lot of issues, uh, a lot of other issues now on top of the sex work. And you're piling it into it to, to build a cohesive narrative. I never said, again, that sex trafficking is appropriate. I never said that the, in your fantasy world... Uh, the the uh, sex work that's happening in in some Eastern European country is consensual. I'm now no longer even basing this argument off of your anecdotes that you may or may not have made up. Now I'm basing this off of what your hypotheticals might be that you made up in your mind. There is no difference between making this argument. Uh, uh, there's there's no difference in this situation like uh, looking at a cooperative corporation with a cooperative structure and a factory floor. And then comparing that to, well, sweat, sweatshops exist in the third world. Or look at the, the uh, Republic of Congo and the, and the mining industry there, which means obviously all of this is bad and should not be allowed. There are obviously slaves as well. There's a difference between slave labor and the coercive conditions that subject people into doing jobs that they don't want to do. It's a, it's a spectrum and it's not as black and white as you think it is. And sex work is no different than that as well. You just have to arrive at the conclusion that sex work is work and it must be decriminalized and then regulation has to exist upon the boundaries of, of what is permissible and what is not. But unfortunately, currently, we simply treat sex work, all sex work across the board with not only sex trafficking, but the worst, like the, the most taken ass situation where someone gets kidnapped and is uh, subjected into uh, slavery, sex slavery. 
Yes, even decriminalization is not enough. It also needs to be destigmatized. Is absolutely correct. Yes, none of this matters because much of much sex work is illegal now. It's like saying alcohol production causes crime, so no alcohol during prohibition. Anyway, um, this is another one of those things that like frustrates people quite a bit when I talk about it. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, but I do hope that. Tell me your way without saying your way. Third world countries, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate, but you know you just you just got to do what you got to do on the on the subject matter. I'm going to keep talking about it. A lot of shit sex workers face in the workplace are the same abuse that existed in factories and workforces before regulation was put in place. The only reason we put in in a different category is the shame put upon sex workers, usually by religion, so they get ridiculed and shunned for their work on top of capitalism-based abuse. Yes. That shame and stigmatization is what causes sex workers to operate not in in uh, uh not under the auspices of like real regulation a real regulatory body that would protect their labor and protect their autonomy protect their bodies in any meaningful capacity but instead do it in dark corners and then uh they are infinitely more uh susceptible to harm by bad actors this is something to remember ultimately the concept of a marxist analysis still applies sex workers should be entitled to the means of production the same way that any worker is the course of nature is derived from the capitalist practice of ad breaks at the top of the hour fuck you uh, I think a lot of people hear you say sex work is work, but interpreted as Jeffrey Epstein Island should be legal. Yeah, exactly. I'm a, a very, very much anti-Jeffrey Epstein, much more so than the average person have uh, done a tremendous amount of work uh, on the Jeffrey Epstein saga. Still talk about it quite regularly, and I will see a lot of swerfs online that hear me shit on Jeffrey Epstein and go, Hassan is Jeffrey Epstein, which I personally think is really damaging to the discourse in general. And it actually unironically betrays the severity of the conversation if you are so fast and loose with the with the uh, the the slapping me with that kind of fucking insane sticker. Swerfs are sex work exclusionary radical feminists. Sex work is legal in Turkey, yet there is more sex work in the U.S. despite it being illegal. To add on to that, yes. Türkiye'de bile devleti yönettiği 56 kadar genel ev var. Kapısında polis duruyor. ABD'de bu kadar illegal olması çok garip. Turkish people in the chat saying 56 brothels are operated by the and operated and protected by the government um, and and yet it's illegal in the United States of America. How odd. It's true. Sex work is legal in Turkey and also uh, regulated in Turkey. There are aspects of that that's bad too for the record. That's why sex workers in America advocate for the uh, criminalization. Dude, I saw a tweet a few months ago that said you were just left-wing Andrew Tate saying you traffic women like he does. Yeah, it's just, you have to also remember, a lot of people are just like 14 online, you know what I mean? And they just have no way of uh, of, of approaching a subject matter, especially one that's like super serious with with the dignity that it deserves or with the critical thinking that is required to understand it. Anyway, let's hear what Big Mike Things, has. Well, I have uh, a question about that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah like, go ahead. So she's pushed into doing these like uncomfortable yep, things, yep. right? Like... She shows up, she thinks she's going to shoot one thing, and yeah. then they, like... Pull the blank, yeah, the sheet out. And sh does she have the ability to say no, A or absolutely. do they really lean in? So, so absolutely. So, like, they, they can't force it. it. When it comes to sex work, it's very... They're very careful, but I'm right. sure... I, I'm not sure I'm positive that in, in cases with up-and-coming girls, the Asian will be like, hey, like... This completely you your no no completely your choice like you don't have to do this scene today right but i'm you know i think the client was just saying that if you don't do this scene today like you lose the next four as well and then you're and now you're like yo i have to pay rent tomorrow yeah. i have to buy food tomorrow and they sometimes know. i have to pay for my kids food tomorrow like am i Bro. am i am i justifying any of this am i telling you know people that they should let people off the hook for their decision. Absolutely not. But what I'm saying is there's a there's a, a big level of like if you asked her and I, I hate I, I hate to talk about this too much with her not being here. But yeah. like she looks at a lot of it as as almost like forced yeah. sexual uh, behavior. Like yeah. honestly, like she she's like, yo, like I didn't do. Not all labor under capitalism is the same in my honest opinion. Things that seriously encroach on fundamental boundaries of bodily autonomy and sense of self can leave deep psychological traumas. Carrying heavy boxes in a factory is not the same as potentially enduring regular physical and emotional abuse. Yeah, famously, I'm glad that you used the carrying heavy boxes in a factory as an example because that's not that's famously not uh, a, an industry that is heavily regulated and yet uh, routinely creates a, a shit ton of emotional and, and f physical abuse. Come on, man. I mean, I, I get it. You're an archaeologist, but like, come on. It also says you're a lefty on here. Like, think about it a little bit more and you will recognize that even 
completely regulated, supposedly regulated industries under capitalism regularly contribute to physical and emotional abuse. Do that with my intention. Yeah. Like I didn't do that because I wanted to. I do that because my agent said, "Yo, if you don't do this same scene, like you're not going to work tomorrow." Have, and so have, it's just a really, it's really nasty. And like I said, like I, it, I'm not making an excuse for it or saying like that. Oh no, you know, no, anything, but, it's, but I think we can all have empathy for it. Yeah. I would hope, I would yeah. hope that people would, but it's just, it's a lot to ask. And and it's and it, strangely, well, you, it's a lot to ask from people who also whack off to it. whack off to yeah, it. Yeah, it's like Michael Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Akash has this brilliant take on Michael Jackson. It's like the reason we believe that he's innocent is because we don't want to be- we don't want to stop listening to the music. Yeah. And we know we would still listen to it even if we found out yeah, if he that still, he was guilty if you, or if he was still making it. You know, the dudes that are posting those pictures on my tweets, right? They're her biggest fans. Of course. Of course. They're her biggest fans. They hate you. They hate me. I guess what I'm saying is like we don't want to believe the sinister side of the adult film industry if you're whacking off to it all the yeah, time. Yeah. It's like the dairy industry. You don't want to know where that shit comes from. That I is, just want that milk. That is a great now. Just give me the milk. I just want to have a cheeseburger. I just want to have yeah. a piece of chicken. Like I don't want to see the fucking I don't want to know how it's birds made. get in their heads. Why are you taking questions as if people are stating facts? What do you mean? Why are you taking questions as if people are stating facts? What I don't know what you're saying. I don't understand what your uh, opinion is. I don't know what you're trying to say here. It's cut off in rapid succession. Yeah, exactly. Don't show me the videos, Peter. Like, you're ruining it for me. I like eating these things. I don't want to yeah. see how the sausage is made. That's the same. <laughs> That's- it means that you take a lot of questions as statements. So many haters larving as one of my subs to make you look bad. I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't think it makes me look bad. Um, I, I, as long as I'm, like, responding to this person uh, normally, it doesn't matter what their intentions are. Sorry, bad English. Because the superstructure is deemed it a shameful thing to be paid for your body, while models in the fashion industry get the same level of expectation and treatment and even nudity, but they don't get the stigma of sex work? Well, they sometimes do. The difference is modeling is like supposed to be a commercialized industry that uh, has regulations, even though bad actors are supposed to be caught and dealt with. It's still not dealt with, but the, but the way to deal with that is not by making modeling illegal. The way to deal with that is by regulating the industry to ensure bad actors are actually called out and actually and, and are, are punished. Hollywood is another industry. What is Chatter saying? That you should immediately attack the Chatter that is wrong? Yeah. I'm actually learning a lot about how to combat swerves because of bad actor Chatter. So I guess there's some benefit. Well, that's why I do it. Anyway, so how is this related to Twitch drama? I guess the way it's related to Twitch drama is... Uh, the way it's related to Twitch drama is because, like, the conversation started with people getting upset about Twitch allowing, um, allowing some kind of, of, like, lighter forms of sex work. It's not, like, directly sex work in the way that you understand it, but, um, artistic nudity and whatnot. And people immediately, of course, started taking advantage of the new boundaries and um, started bringing up the conversation of like how it, it should be completely illegal or it should not occur, um, and how uh, you know we, we have to protect the children from seeing a titty or maybe like a, a side boob or a part of the titty, you know? This was the hot tub drama recycled. It's like a, it's like a phenomena that occurs all the time, right? And it's, uh, oops, that's my, that's my titty stream. Did you comment on the Morgan Pierce interview that the UK doctor from three days ago? No, I did not. So I guess, uh, I, I guess what I was going to say originally is that I obviously don't have an issue with sex work in general. I think that, uh, a lot of the issues that people, uh, uh, can, a lot of the issues that people have with sex work First and foremost comes from a puritanical attitude that people have towards sex. And then beyond that, it's the conflation of sex work and crimes, okay, like sex trafficking. And um, and because of that, uh, people just like are very passionate about the issue and jump to uh, impassioned responses rather than a more tempered approach that requires critical thinking. I feel like I need to preface Here, this video by saying Here, let's listen to MAGA Mail on the matter, and then I'll get into it awesome a little bit further. Awesome PR year, mostly thanks to the man at the top, Dan Clancy. However, this past week, two big blemishes on that otherwise great year. The first one was when they got absolutely thrashed by Team YouTube in Dodgeball. Get fucking owned, nerds. Get owned, Hassan. Get owned, idiot. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to. De- We're going to play basketball, and I'm going to put my nutsack on his shoulder. I'm going to put my nutsack on his forehead. 
This is my goal. The second one is the news that dropped yesterday on their new update to their terms of service which they tweeted about here. We've gotten some feedback that our policies around sexual content are unclear, so we've drawn clearer boundaries between what is and is not permitted on Twitch. Okay, great. And we also uh, recognize that everyone, not everyone wants to see that type of content, so we're also updating criteria for homepage recommendations. What does this mean, Ludwig? Well, let's read. Uh, previously prohibited content that is now allowed with label is, is four things. One, content that clearly highlights breasts, butt, or pelvic region. Two, fictionalized, drawn, animated, or sculpted, fully exposed, fully nude, female presenting breasts, genitals, buttocks, regardless of gender. Three, writing on your body for, like, I don't know, thinking a sub or something. And then four, erotic dances like disrobing, strip teases, or twerking. Okay, whoa, Twitch a bit horny. What, what is this new update? Why are they just saying, hey, allow all the, all the sexual stuff in the world? Is, is that it? Is it the answer they're horny? No, it's a little bit deeper than that. Now, this does come with a caveat. Any of this content is allowed, but you must label it that it is sexual content, which I believe will probably make it uh, uh, 18 plus, which is really just like a checkbox that says I'm 18 plus. But also, you must also, uh, uh, you can no longer be recommended on the homepage. So you'll no longer be here. It, it, it's impossible. You won't, you won't have any of that, if it's labeled correctly, content on the homepage. It might still be recommended in the sidebar, but that's because there's no thumbnails. It won't be on the homepage. And, and the question everyone's asking, why? Why Why come out and be like, yeah, twerk on our website? Are they trying to get, like, a bunch of OnlyFans streamers? I don't think so. <laughs> I think the answer is that content moderation is not a scalable business. It's not a good business to be in. You don't want to have to hire more and more people to just look through streams and say, okay, this is okay, but this is not okay. Because that's what they've been doing for the past few years and losing. You've probably seen the stories before, but Twitch streamer Amaranth banned for spreading legs on stream. You know, Twitch streamer whoever uh, banned for 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 twerking, uh, and then and then and Twitch writes new rules, and then there's new streamers who come along who try to stretch those rules. They get banned, or worse, they don't get banned. Everyone makes a big stink of it on Twitter, and we all move on with our lives. We have seen this cycle happen every few months, like clockwork. And I don't think Twitch wants to deal with it anymore. I don't think they want to have to worry about it. They just want to have a, a, a firm line in the sand. This is good. This, is, this isn't good. They want to, you know, automatically moderate it all and, and, and try to have as little PR nightmare as possible. However, that's not exactly what happened. This, this backfired uh, a little bit today uh, because the takeaway was not, okay, we're, we're trying to draw a line in the sand. It was, Twitch now allows artistic nudity following the viral topless meta. And if you don't know what that is, it, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, this. it's this. It's this right here. It's literally just someone topless, but they don't show their breasts. The and goat. at one point, I think, I think she made her breasts clap. So anyway, the other, the other takeaway... I think it's journalistic malpractice, not the show, but to simply tell. I will say it. I think that MAGA males' standards of journalism have diminished over the course of the past couple of years. Back in the day, you would show, not tell. MAGA male now, simply tells, doesn't show. Unethical, terrible standard. You have to change this. You have to change this, okay? Yeah, no, I... I I think, uh, you know, I'm going to keep criticizing it. I won't show it to you right now because I've shown it already. Let's continue. Ways from this, this update. You can now twerk, grind, and pole dance on Twitch. 21 million views. We'll be streaming more, says Tommy Innit. Noted. You're finally free at Nick A30. Okay, you guys all have the same fucking joke. Okay, good job, streamers. Uh, and, and that's everyone's takeaway is that we're, we're allowed to fucking get crazy on this website, which has resulted in people, either jokingly or not, doing exactly that. Here is Nim today uh, in the art uh, channel drawing a very vascular penis. That's still like, it still weirds me out because it's like, I, I want to not show that, right? Because in my mind, I'm still operating with the former boundaries, which that's a great cock, by the way. Good job. Good job, the Nim. Um, so in my, in my mind, I'm like, I'm looking at that. I'm like, oh no, I showed that. But then I remember again, it's actually not bad that this is uh, now there's more of an allowance for things such as this because it would have been ridiculous to get banned for something like that. All right. If you went to the art channel at any point over the past 24 hours, you I mean, will probably see this is all blurred out, obviously, it, a lot of nude art. 
VTubers specifically were also going a bit crazy, just going fully nude because they were like, well, this is technically animated. Does that does that mean I can just be a nude VTuber now? I, I won't go to the art section right now, but but I'm, I'm looking at it and I can tell you a lot of boobs, a lot of butts, a lot of breasts. OK, and then there was this clip, which I, I cannot show you, but I'm just going to play it. Please, God, show us what Dan Clancy has done. Audio experience. Good. Well, come on, Dan. Ah! And that is pay money Wubby uh, screaming at a naked uh, anime girl. Okay, that it, that's that's obviously him, not what this new update was trying to do. I think this is people limit testing the update, and it they are they are limit testing it, and it's like I'll know it when I see it type situation. Okay, with the topic of moderation, how about like news then? How do you do news on Twitch? Do you think I do it how I do it right now? What do you mean? And Good. the people yeah. who are limit testing it, like streamer Marina, who went fully nude in the VTuber model, this is blurred out with emojis, uh, are fucking around in finding out that, that that's not the goal. The goal is not to have more porn or nudity on Twitch. It is to moderate less, to either automatically moderate or make moderation easier for already existing mods. And you might be thinking, well, nobody gets dumb. They should just have more moderators. But, but is it? Because that's not how YouTube works. Right? Everyone, everyone is freaking out and there's discussions about, is, is this good for the kids? Is this a kid's website? We can't have nudity on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's actually okay. It should be an 18 plus website. YouTube, a website way more for kids, I would argue, has just as bad, if not worse stuff on the website. Yeah. In terms of nudity, uh, drug paraphernalia, all types of shit. All right? It won't be on the homepage. I'll tell you what, you go to the home. I loved it, Ludwig. As soon as he's like now... Uh, both on YouTube and Twitch, his attitude shifted dramatically towards defending Twitch and maybe even criticizing YouTube. You make me sick, this guy says. Wait, don't ban him that quickly. I want to know why. Like, they also might be joking, you know what I mean? That's like such a ridiculous thing to say, right? Like, look, he's, he's got wonderful opinions. His opinion on Southeast, uh, Southeast Asian illegal immigration to the U.S. Bum. You make me sick. He's got good takes. Let's hear it. Southeast Asian immigration into the U.S. is funny to be, to specify, like... Page is all squeaky clean, but there are a lot of things that, that, that won't make it to the homepage. All right? I'm not telling you to look this up, but there is a nude yoga section on YouTube. That is crazy. I pulled up a couple of channels here to highlight it. This a big part of this also stems from, okay, whoa, 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 what's that? Piano, song cover, nude, what the fuck? A big part of this also stems from, like, kind of pointing in the direction of it. And because it's a meta, because it's, like, a big-ass meta, right? And I don't mean, like, the meta is hot tubs. I mean, like, calling Twitch out for nudity is the meta, right? That people point to it, which unironically ends up, like, giving it a brief moment. Of, of interest, like uh, renewed interest, and it blows it up a little bit. People take advantage of that. Twitch comes in, moderates with a heavy hand, normalizes it once again, and then people don't think about it. They Streisand effect it for a little bit, but that's it. What Ludwig is doing here and what Ludwig is talking about here is actually the truth. It's just like, you know, there's full buttholes on YouTube. We've all seen that video, right? Oh, shit. Kaya, get out of there. Get oh, no. Oh my god, get out of there. Get oh, dumbass. Oh no, wait. God damn it. Fuck. Hold on. God damn it. Found her all of the cords. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. I think we're good. Holy shit. She just ran up to the. She just ran up to the window. My mom was like near the window and then ran back and, and, and pulled like half of my cables insane okay let's continue this one i think is really fun it's called pan piano we talked about it on the yard before but it's okay. this it's this woman who just cosplays in very very lewd costumes and then just plays the piano in the video <laughs> it's not even lewd what the fuck this one is and then a little bit more obvious is is this uh yoga uh instructor and like this is it this isn't yoga we can call a spade a spade all right click the video the first thing you're gonna see Oh! OnlyFans logo. Let's just call it a spade a spade. This shit exists on YouTube. All right? And it's not like it exists and nobody's watching it. Most viewed video, 11 million views. 5 million views. Okay? Ah! That, that's a lot of damn views here on YouTube.
for stuff that people would consider not for kids. But YouTube has a very good content moderation system. They automatically flag at 18 plus. It's no longer recommended in the homepage. It won't be mixed in with advertiser friendly content, which is I think the end game that Twitch wants to reach. They don't want to have to deal with drawing lines in the sand further and further because different streamers are limit testing the rules they've written in the past. They just want to say, here's what you can do. Here's what you can't do. Just fucking tag your shit and let us know when it's gonna be a bit sexual so we can get you out of the way for advertiser friendly stuff and let's move on with our lives. Now, will it actually work or will people start getting more sexual on the website and it will become basically a knockoff OnlyFans? Time will tell. I doubt it will get to that point because I think for the most part, people still like what, what, what is the regular content on Twitch, playing video game or just chatting. But, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the topless meta will take over and everybody who is at the top will have to go topless. We'll see. But for now, I think it makes sense why Twitch did that and... and yeah, it's a, it's the Streisand effect. We we end up doing this every time. We've done this cycle to, so many times. Okay, how's your content dog doing? Content dog reacts. What my Kaya is my content dog really? That's my child. How dare you? Um, if Hassan did a top of stream, he's getting hundred k viewers per stream. Yeah, probably. Um. I could have always done a topless stream, though. I'm a man, and I have male-presenting nipples, which has never been uh, not allowed. So I think that I think that uh, the only reason why like everyone is hyper-focusing on this is because everyone is hyper-focusing on it, and it's a, it's a meta. It's a meta. That's how it works. The meta itself is that uh, Twitch is allowing nudity. There's a reason why nobody talks about kick and the nudity that kick allows, because... It's not as fashionable, right? I mean, they were showing straight up pornography to children. They were also quite literate, which I think he probably has a younger audience too, uh, given the content creators on there. And then also on top of that, there is um, there was like actual acts of sex that was not just like being played out, but literally uh, acts of sex on uh, on kick. And since then, I mean, there's plenty of hot tub streamers on kick as well, but nobody ever talks about it because like, it's more fashionable to talk about it. Uh, when we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about Twitch, Twitch and it's nudity. Yeah. He might literally got his dick sucked on stream on kick. Yes. So it's just, there's always going to be, uh, there's always going to be when there's a will, there's a way there's always going to be people who are rule breaking. There's always going to be People who try and and uh, find new boundaries. What is this? Care to explain? Mubot, thanks for being here. At Hasanabi Marina's love. What is a Mubot? And what is a Marina's love? I have no idea what this is. Kick has gotten stricter now after the whole Aiden shit show. What Kick does now is shout out and streamer. So the section hot tub area is in the part of the app. This is a titty streamer. The pirate dancing where his dick appears on the bottom of the screen is still on YouTube. It's a follow alert. I don't know who this person is. You're saying that the way you say what has come down? No, I actually don't know who the fuck this person is. Um, but, I mean, I have no shame. I'd watch it. I don't give a fuck. Guys, the reason why I have no shame on this is not only because, like, I don't think that there's anything wrong with sex work, but also, like, it's not my primary form of consuming sex work. It's not for me. I don't find it appealing. Like, I just go straight to the source. I go to Pornhub, right? Like, I don't, I, I don't understand why people make such a big hubbub about, uh, about the, the, uh, permissibility of like, not straight up porn, but things close to it on a platform like Twitch, when the same level of sexual content and even more sexual content, like more nudity, straight up an asshole and a dick and balls, for example, like that famous video from that one. Uh, twink uh, is allowed it's 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 uh, hidden but it's still allowed to exist on the on the website on YouTube specifically so yeah United States oh speaking of porn by the way Pornhub has now released the United States top relative searches California Asian stepmom choice nice uh, Oregon searches nudist Washington sensual sex that's gay as hell okay uh, New Jersey Turkish. What is this a joke? Are they joking, or or is this for real? This got to be a joke, right? New Jersey top searched porn is Turkish. Hello, look at Texas searches creamy. Oklahoma searches what? Sex dick. What is the D? 
Tennessee Giantess. Yeah, I don't believe that. I think this is fake. North Carolina Bubble Butt. South Carolina High Heels. Georgia Ebony Solo. Florida Fantasy. Minnesota Tickling. North Dakota Loud Wet Sex. Oh, it is United States top relative searches. Terms search more often in each state when compared to all others. Oh, it means like weird terms that they search in comparison to other states. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. That makes a lot more sense. I didn't understand that at first. Uh, look at Ohio, dog. I don't want to look at Ohio. Ohio has suffered enough. I, I, I think we got we to gotta give Idaho to smoke uh, in the future. I feel like... I feel like Ohio gets way too much, and it's not... Yep, there it is. Okay, dildo ride. What does that mean, Idaho? What's happening? Nevada searches Vegas for porn. That's so funny. Arizona, car sex. New Mexico, Native American? What the fuck? I lived in New Jersey, and I think I might go pad the stats on the Turkish search. I can't get over the whole... I can't get... Wait, Pornhub.com? Dude, that's the only Pornhub.com link that you can send in this chat that isn't immediately going to get you flagged in here. Let me let me scroll through this to see if the insights have any like pornographic material. It doesn't seem to be. Holy shit, Abella Danger is still number 1 top search porn star. Car sex in Arizona is a fetish cuz it's too hot to fucking cars. Please look at DC dog, big ass cop, ass cop. The most searched terms in 2023 according to Pornhub is hentai Oh, dude, it's over. MILF, lesbian, Japanese, Pinai? What the fuck? Swagapinos? Oh, my God. Swagapinos on top, dude. What the hell? Respect. Respect to my Swagapinos out there. Look at this. You're about to catch the Japanese market. You know how big that shit is? That's crazy. No, Swagapinos on top is a different category. Yeah, good one. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Western white middle-aged men on sex tours. Uh, speaking of Idaho, have you seen this? Uh, yes, I have. This made me really sad. Can I call you? This made me real fucking sad, boys. I, I think we are we are lost as a nation. I gotta pee real quick. I'll be back in a second, but this shit made me sad as fuck, dog. Can I call you? Can I call you? I wanted you to see it over and over again. Eight fucking hours. Eight hours long. Dude, I get it. Like, there's nothing going on in Idaho, right? Like, there's nothing going on in Idaho. I, I understand it. But God damn, bro. God damn. What the fuck? Dude, dude, dude. Is it that bad? Is it that fucking bad, dog? Really? Like, I get wanting to be the first in your family of 35 uh, potato farming ass cousins to be the guy who tastes the Los Angelino burgle, okay? Like, I get it. But just, like, go inside or fucking don't go on the first day. The fuck's going on? I don't understand it. Like, I, I, I look, I think In-N-Out is great. I'm not one of those people who's like a hater of In-N-Out at all. I think In-N-Out, for its price point, serves an incredible burgle, okay? And burgles are America's greatest invention. Don't tell me that it was uh, designed in Hamburg or whatever. It's perfected in California, okay? Let us have this. Let us have it. Americans make a burg, a good burg. California specifically, you know, Cupertino-ass shit. Designed in California, that kind of thing, you know? Designed and perfected in California. That's, a, that's what a burgle is. But having said that, nothing, and I mean nothing, deserves the undignified wait period of eight hours in your fucking car. Nothing. If you were getting burgles with a side of the best dome you've ever copped in your entire fucking life, eight hours, still not worth. That's crazy. Eight hours. Makes no damn sense to me. In and out is the gold standard. Any burger that costs more than one should taste proportionally better. Also, not worth waiting that long. I mean, this is the most positively British thing Americans can do. This is American queue culture. Americans love getting in queues as well, as long as they can sit in their King Rancher with the AC maxed out, 
listening to some fucking tunes. As long as there's a burgle waiting on the other end of that queue. My point is, eight hours for a burgle or, you know, ten minutes for a burgle that's like, sure, worse than the burgle you're about to have. It's no question. It's not even a question. I'm getting the ten-minute burgle in and out, unironically. This betrays the entire notion of in and out. When you are not in or out, there's no inning and outing in that situation. It's a, there's a whole day. That's a wait and stay. They changed the name. That's just in. This kind of shit makes me sad, man. I'm going to be honest. It makes me sad. Bro, people from Idaho don't think they're waiting eight hours for burger. They're waiting for burger from a place that was only fancy in states, in fancy states, so it must be better than regular burger. Ironic because, like, I'm sure Idaho's got some fucking sick-ass cows, you know? They probably have some decent bergs. They're super efficient, though, so that line will go faster than anything. Brother, it's eight hours long. Does that mean they serve the entire fucking state? You know what I mean? What, what efficiency at that point? I mean, that, that is mind-boggling. <clears throat> it boggles the mind. This, bro, Americans didn't wait in lines like this for vaccines, dog. That's crazy. The last time I saw cues like this was literally during the vaccines, the first rollout of the vaccines. And that shit was efficient. Man, that put a, that, I loved the government then, dude. It was so good. That was like peak government. Made me so happy. I bet they would never stand in line for eight hours to vote for free health care. Fuck no. Because free health care is communism. And that's bad. I'd much rather wait eight hours for a burgle and get diabetes and then not be able to pay for it and cripple my family financially. Well, wait, well, wait that long to hop on the new Disney ride, though. That's also crazy. I just don't get it. I don't understand waiting for eight fucking hours, dude. Show this to the motherfuckers who talk about the rational actor in free markets, okay? Show that. Show this to motherfuckers that go, what do you mean? There's rational actors in free markets. I mean, supply and demand, baby. It's like, no, man. This marketing. Making motherfuckers behave in the most irrational ways possible. Waiting for eight hours for anything is crazy. Aurora PD, 12 to 14 hours waiting in line when it opened in Colorado. Update, In-N-Out Burgers is now at 12 hours wait. I repeat, 12 hours. Traffic is still significantly impacted in the area surrounding the mall. They will close before you get to the window, most likely. Meanwhile, many other local eateries do not have a wait. Hint, hint. That was in 2020. I don't know, man. It makes me a little sad to see. It makes me kind of sad to see how fucked up this shit is. It's like you can't get a burger later. Holy shit. What are Americans? I think, yeah. I mean, I think it's this spells the the... The deterioration of the quality of life in the United States of America. It shows how much we rely on uh, commodity consumption as a cultural signifier, as a means of creating community and fostering a sense of belonging. That you're like, I got that fucking in and out burger before anyone else did in Idaho. You know what I mean? I do love that Los Angeles has imported not only its burgles, but its fucking... <laughs> Bumper to bumper ass traffic. That's also a good one. Also a good point. But it's just like going back to the to the structural analysis here. It's just like I think people just wanna people wanna consume and experience, like be a part of something. And the only way we can do that is from no the the twenty twenty one was in uh, Aurora when it first opened in Colorado. I think communities create cultural events around this stuff. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just makes me sad. Would L.A. do, what would L.A. do if Wegmans opened up there? Bro, L.A., they don't, the, the eight-hour wait is, is ridiculous. In Los Angeles, there's a shit ton of in and out and it's normal. Uh, and even then, there's like a big wait usually for in and outs in Los Angeles at any given moment of the day. On the drive through never eight hours, though. And I don't think people in Los Angeles gives a shit. I don't think people in Los Angeles give a single shit, a single solitary shit about anything beyond, like, anything beyond themselves they're in a weird way the only thing that people do in la that takes eight fucking hours is by is is traveling okay from one point to the other that normally would take 10 minutes that's the only time los angelinos find themselves in a fucking eight hour bind okay guy in that line getting impatient because he's got to bring a sack of burgers and fries to his racism meeting yeah it's a good burg it's a good burgle i like this burgle it's a good burgle not worth eight hours, though. I don't think anything is, really. It's a, more of a cultural phenomenon, really. I think, I think people are doing it because they want to be a part of something. That's what I think. Coochie? Bro, 
Really? You would wait eight hours in a fucking uh, line like this with some coochie? What the fuck? There's alternatives out there, man. Go jerk off. People are starving out here, huh? Anyway, let's get back to what really matters. Pornhub's end of the year surveys. Speaking of fucking pornography, 2023 year in review is the 10th anniversary of Pornhub's year in review insights. Take a look around. You will find plenty of eye-catching infographics laying out a variety of results between the genders, sexual orientations, breakdowns of state-by-state search habits, and the time people spend on Pornhub and so much more. But let's do some porn reacts on this wonderful website, which now apparently makes such things totally permissible. The trends that defined 2023. Number one, the golden age. Mature searches grew by 77%. It became the second most popular category among men, led by mature cougar. MILF became the second most searched term worldwide, while DILF, terms including muscle DILF, grew by 71%. That's good for me, boys. I am getting into that fucking DILF category myself. I'll take it. Muscle DILF? I'll be your muscle DILF, okay? I'll be your fucking muscle DILF. All right, granite searches gained... Plus 132% and GILF plus 166, uh, 168% with terms like sexy granny and hot GILF trending. Super size terms, big, bigger, biggest, grew by 177%, which is like the most American thing, I feel like. Huge tits and huge cock and huge dildo grew by 67%. Even massive searches were up by 91. Big boobs expanded by 78. Big booty, 83%. Americans are coming to terms with... Being ass men and ass women. The big ticks uh, category grew by 31%. Sex machines. Okay. Searches in uniforms grew by 243%, led by military uniform, cop uniform, and man in uniform. Sexual healing, worldwide therapy searches went up 344. Now, of course, this is just like the growth. This is simply just growth, right? So uh, it could be something that wasn't that popular, became much more popular, but in comparison to like something that is more searched, it's not about totality, but about percentage growth. So it's, you know, it's one thing. But let's look at the most searched for terms in general. If, of course, it was hentai. Most searched terms of 2023 was hentai. I assume part of that is because, I assume part of that is because uh, the, the, uh, the hentai haven or whatever was the hentai haven that website was shut down right so most people uh, more people will turn around and 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 google like they they will look for uh whatever they are looking for directly on pornhub i suspect no as you can see it was already a top term no that's like that's when it actually went down it went down last year right our stati- statisticians theorize factors of the popularity of video games like zelda which was released earlier this year in addition to Overwatch and Fortnite, as well as the global popularity of anime, because that has something to do with its growth. Rule 34 is alive and well in the realm of porn. Hentai's been the number one. MILF grew by one, the second largest. Uh, number three is lesbian. Uh, Japanese got knocked down a peg. Shouts out to my Japanese. Uh, Pinai was already here, and I did not know that this was like a, like a category that people search at all. But Swagapino's stable... At the number one, two, three, four, fifth slot, Pinai Gang, Swagapinos at number five, staying at number five, even though they were at number five the year prior. Shouts out to my Swagapinos. Very stable. Uh, anal grew. Asian went down a peg. Swapped spots with anal. Uh, Latina grew a lot. Anime grew by the most, it seems. And oh my god, Femboy popped the fuck off. Plus 12 points. Animation plus 18 points. Trans plus 10. 2023's most popular performance. Abella Danger is still in the top slot, which very interesting. That I am actually kind of shocked by. Not my favorite, I will say. Angela White also. But Eva Elfie, uh, friend of the show, really had a wonderful, phenomenal year again. Just like... The year prior, Eva Elfie kind of came out of the gates swinging. Eva was a uh, fan favorite, up-and-comer, uh, a couple years prior to both myself and uh, Will Neff. We were a big fan of her work, and then she blew the fuck up. And she deserves it. She's great. Lana Rhodes finally coming down from the top slot here, going down to the fourth uh 
uh, the, the, the fourth place, which is wild because Lana Rhodes hasn't made porn in years. Violet Myers, don't know who that is, but uh, a lot of surges for her. Riley Reed also knocked down a peg, not a big fan. Mia Khalifa, also another uh, person who hasn't really made pornography in many, many years and yet still has a lot of prominence to, I think it's, this is actually controversial because like, I don't think she wants to be there. And I don't, I think even Lana Rhodes has talked about like having to, uh, take down some of her porns. Um, Sky Bree with a plus 13 Sky Bree, probably this year's like big, like every year is defined by a generational talent. Every year is defined by a generational talent, a talent that comes out of nowhere, starts swinging. Okay. And starts slinging. Uh, Sky Bree did a lot of outside of porn collaborations, including with the likes of Aiden Ross and many of the W streamers, which, in my opinion, certainly played a big role in her popularity skyrocketing. A lot of times I think that porn stars that do outside of porn collaborations with other people genuinely, genuinely pop the fuck off for that reason. Seems Eliza Ibarra is the most improved player this year. Raylo Black, also friend of the show, uh, is is has seen a three point dip here. Lena the plug staying down here, stable. Uh, other these are like Jordi El Nino Pola. Isn't this the dude that looks very young, but with like a fat cock? He's like an adult. Very weird. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I I don't. It's it's something that I don't really understand. Um, Johnny Sins, obviously the goat, still standing strong right underneath. Uh, Sky Brief, first uh, number one most searched male porn star here. Mia Malkova sees another friend of the show, sees a two-point dip here below Johnny Sins. Uh, Emily Willis sees a six-point dip, pretty pretty big dip. I, don't, I wonder what contributed to that. I wonder, I wonder if Emily Willis is still uh, you know, popping off and making new videos or not. Alex Adams, I think that's a dude as well with a five-point increase. There's, we're seeing a lot of dudes out here. We've seen a lot of dudes. It makes me happy to see the fellas being represented in the top category here. Uh, Lena Paul staying strong in her position. Uh, and uh, Brandy Love with a two-point dip. Lexi Luna with a six-point increase here. And Lena the Plug staying in the same category. Lena the Plug, of course, has, uh, is Adam 22's uh, uh, wife. And uh, Cuck's Adam 22 now. And that's like, despite all of that, her you know staying stable here. Uh, or Lena the Plug staying stable here uh, is very interesting to me, which means that, like, you know, even with the controversy surrounding, which normally would improve your uh, search results here, uh, she has not seen that benefit. I don't know who Eliza Ibarra is, but goddamn, 46 points is crazy. Savannah Bond with 11. Alexis Falk with 14 points. Don't know who these guys are, but it seems like they are popping off. Seems like they are popping the fuck off. Uh, good for them. Amateur models, most viewed amateur models, Candy Love, Sweetie Fox. I don't know who any of these people are. Luxury Mirror, Serenity Cox, Luna Roulette, Brooke Tilly, Ellie Clutch, 18 Yo-Yo, Mr. Pussy Licking. Very weird. Dick for Lily, Mew Slut. I have seen Mew Slut a little bit. I have definitely seen uh, some Mew Slut stuff. Um, but yeah. State of the Union. Holding the top spot for most search term of the United States yet again this year was lesbian. Much like last year, Americans loved to see some woman-on-woman -woman action. In 2019 and 2017, the top U.S. term was lesbian as well. Milf Rose to the uh, plus one spot. Or Milf Rose plus one spot coming in in second in this year. And bumping hentai into third place. Much like the world's most search terms, most desired among Americans as well. The term gangbang saw a substantial increase with 12 spots this year. Compared to the last of the term, Japanese saw a considerable decrease of 11 spots. I wonder what that, like, what contributes to that? Like, what, what leads a term like gangbang, like, popping the fuck off? Whereas, like, this year, it's like Japanese just uh, diminishes. Like, I wonder what is the reason for that? Like, what happened? People are just not fucking with the Japanese porn no more? When breaking down by state... We found some interesting results. It should be quickly noted that we no longer serve some of these states. That said, the data is relevant up until the time we block their access. The state of Nevada is most interested in themselves, as Vegas was a search more in Nevada than the rest of the country, much like Hawaii, where Hawaiian was of special interest. On the West Coast, the state of Washington was more interested in sensual sex, while on the East Coast, the state of Virginia was more interested in smoking. 
In the Midwest, Wyoming loved goth, and back east in New Jersey, they loved Turkish. Our statisticians theorize this could be the reflect this could be reflected of the fact that New Jersey has the highest population of Turkish people in the country. And while Wyoming might have some nice gothic architecture, our statisticians cannot confidentially theorize where the interest in goth comes from in the interest of porn. District of Columbia had a special interest in big ass cop, while Oklahoma was more interested in sex dick. What the fuck is a sex dick? Oh my God, Oklahoma is so fucking illiterate as a state. They are literally going on to Pornhub and typing sex dick. What does that even fucking mean? What are they doing? It unironically feels like they just don't know like how to type. They just sex dick. Sex dick? What the fuck is sex dick, man? We really need to, we, we should have left some kids behind. George W. Bush, you fucked up specifically in Oklahoma, okay? We should have. We should have left some kids behind in school. They should have fucking learned again. They should learn to read and write. Sex dick. Um, over in Utah, the state with the highest Mormon population of the country, Mormon was of special interest to them, and let's not forget Alaska, where it can get quite cold and lonely, and where they have a special interest in sex doll. Yeah, that's because everyone is, in Alaska is a fucking serial killer, okay? Top 20 countries by traffic, United States at number one, Philippines at number uh, two with uh, uh, going up three points. That's probably the reason why Pinai is so fucking popular on the on the platform. That makes a lot of sense. France staying in the same spot as they were last year in third place, following very closely behind the Philippines. Canada, Brazil, Spain, and Poland all kept their respective places on board. Combined, these top 20 countries make up 78.5% of all daily traffic to Pornhub. United Kingdom, looking at alternative methods of consuming pornography, dipping three points. And Japan, dipping one point. That makes no fucking sense, dude. The world is lasting a few seconds longer. This year, the average time spent on Pornhub increased by 15 whole seconds, making the average visual duration 10 minutes and 9 seconds. We can thank the 45-plus-year-olds for that as their average time went up. What the fuck? Between 25 seconds and 70 seconds, while 18 to 24 age bracket was down 74 seconds. 25 to 34 age bracket was down 34 seconds. And the 35 to 44 was down 6 seconds. That's crazy, dude. Philippines full of gooners? Yeah. Broken down by country, the Philippines increased 16 seconds per visit, taking the lead from Egypt last year, who decreased 24 seconds per visit. Japan is at 11 minutes and 14 seconds. I do love, like, this unironically is reflective of my own personal pornography habits. Like, I feel like I probably spend around, I would say I spend around, like, 15 minutes, maybe 20, when you factor in, when you factor in, like, uh, the, the uh, like, when you factor in, like, the actual porn that I'm consuming, it's probably around, like, this as well. You just said Philippines exactly like my mom does? Yeah. Yeah, you open 20 videos and pick the best one. That's what I'm saying. But, like, when you factor in, like, the amount of videos. So, like, people probably are cranking it for, like, five minutes max. And then the other six minutes is, like, looking for videos, I assume. Sometimes I get into a three-hour wormhole. That's insane. Get out of it. Just like you get out of the top of the hour wormhole where there's a three-minute ad break being served to you. Three minutes that you can spend wisely looking through this survey rather than cranking a hot one. Here's the three-minute ad break now. United States time spent per minute. Maryland is the highest. Shortest is Louisiana. Uh-oh. Favorite times to watch porn. Midnight and 11 p.m. This is literally... Okay, this is me. That's me. This. You know what this is? This is the going to sleep fap, okay? This basically is when you... This is called natural melatonin, okay? The real ones, no. This is the perfect time to crank one. The absolute perfect time to crank one. I don't know what's going on with the 5 p.m. though. Like, what is that? Afternoon crank? After work? Like, what is that? That's the work from homers, I assume. Look at the difference by age, though. All people 44 and younger are on no fat, whereas women and the elderly are cranking it. Most viewed categories, lesbian, Japanese, ebony, anal, transgender, mature, threesome. Hentai gets a plus three. Big tits gets a plus three. BBW up six points with the highest increase. Big D gets a plus five following BBW, also popping the fuck off. Most viewed categories worldwide. Russia, what the fuck? America looking for ebony. Canada looking for lesbian. This is so funny. Men, men in region looking for Arab uh, for their top porn. And then fucking Russia looking for Russian is hilarious. I can't see where Indian is on this map. 
It says Indian, but I don't see it. What is reality? Top gaining categories, Korean with 82%. Categories view the longest, small tits, not causing people to crank one, or brunette, or double pen, hardcore big ass, and big dick. Categories view the shortest feet, meaning that the foot fetishes get in and out. It's quick. Solo male, also at six minutes. Scissoring, muscular men, fingering, and fisting. Pornhub gay most search uh, terms is twink. Oh, my God. So fucking predictable. Austin contributed dramatically to this. Number four is anime. And number three is staying. Or number two is anime. Number three is Pinoy. Again, to all my swagapinos out there. Most viewed gay categories, straight guys. <laughs> Bro, this is the most predictable. Dude, gay men are the most predictable motherfuckers on the planet. I swear to God. The biggest gay jump has been in Mature, which is interesting. And on this, Curious Straight Friends has gotten a 27% uh, a 27 point increase. Are you fucking for real right now? God. Oh, shit. I got scared for a second when we were scrolling. Malik Delgatti. Malik Delgatti is the number one most searched performer. Congratulations to Malik Delgatti and Joey Mills. Men versus women. Breaking the categories down by men versus women is uh, are more interested in uh, quiet uh, la, 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 overlap. Men are more interested in Japanese, much like last year. It remained in the top spot. Mature saw an increase of plus one, and anal saw an increase of plus three. Milf remained number four. Ebony dump, uh, bumped down minus three. And transgender was up two points this year. Women's favorite category was lesbian, followed by... That's probably why lesbian carries. Because both men and women watch lesbian, whereas women don't watch a lot of the other categories that men watch. And that's probably why lesbian is like the most searched term, by the way, I suspect. Followed by Japanese and then threesome, women's top seven uh, favorite... Wait, Japanese? Women's favorite category is, is Japanese? What the fuck? Yo, women, are, women are into some weird shit, dog. That's actually crazy. Because, like, for me, I feel like Japanese porn holds a lot of promise, right? But Jav is just, like, even beyond the censorship, Jav is just not for me. I, I've never been able to get into Jav, mostly because I feel like they're not having a good time, like, at all. Does that make sense? Like, it just always feels like the ladies are just having a fucking bad time. And for me, I just, it feels cruel. Like, I'm like, wh how do I crank to this? You know what I mean? But I guess Jav also is, like, very story-focused beyond the, the weird, uh, super rapey components. So perhaps that's maybe why women are more into it. Because, like, it is hyper-focused on a story. They, there will be, like, a big, I would even dare I say, convoluted plot to uh, a, a lot of Jav and, and a tremendous amount of, of foreplay uh, featured into it. Even if the foreplay, in my opinion, is, like, sophomoric. Like, I... I uh, I find the, the foreplay to be also silly. It's literally like touching a nipple like this for four minutes at a time. And it's like, how is this even fun? Like, who is getting off to this? There's always something so, like, timid about Jav in, in very weird ways. Because, like, the overarching, the, the overarching like, uh, uh, production in general features, like, someone who is just straight up not having a good time. And it, and it, I don't get it. I, I genuinely don't understand it because it's like, if I have to watch another Jab, I will cut off internet cables from my house. Everyone in Jab is having sex for the first time every time. Yeah, literally. Like, the thing is, for me, I don't personally understand it because it's like, why would I want to watch someone suck a pixelated, or even if it's not pixelated, dick in like the worst way possible? You know what I mean? It's like you're watching the worst blowjob that has ever existed. Like, how is that fun for anybody? I don't get it. Like, even the kissing, it, it feels so timid and so reserved. It, it just looks bad overall for everyone. You know what I mean? I, I will never understand it. This is a wild combo to come into. Depravity craves innocence. Jab is the condom blowjobs of porn. Yeah, it's just odd. It's also very fucking hairy, which I don't personally prefer. There's a lot of slurping sounds going on. No, there isn't. You're wrong. Okay, you know how we talk about blowing bubbles on it? I was thinking about that last night. Blowing bubbles on it is like a fucking phenomenal job, right? Japanese uh, jab blowjobs are literally like, it's like licking a lollipop like this. Eh, eh. It's the exact opposite. No fucking, no bubbles at all. It's, it's like 
How is your mouth so dry? Hassan is reading my comment. No, I'm saying I, I am reading your comment. Is your I think you're wrong. Every pussy is good, mate. Don't knock it, says the Katik and Jack. It's not for me, mate, but it's all right to each their fucking own, yeah, lads. Between men and women, the overlap in their top five include Japanese and ebony. When it came time for categories viewed more comparatively by women than men, scissoring was 196 percent more popular. Transgender was ooh, 175 percent more, and pussy licking. That's sad. Was 105% higher. Other areas of higher interest for women include solo male at 85%, romantic at 59%, bisexual male at 47%, and rough sex at 39%. Yeah. Viewed more by women compared to men is scissoring, transgender, pussy licking, solo male, lesbian. Please explain this. Don't be scared. I actually went back and watched JoJo Season 6, Episode 1, Minute 2112 for the Jolie Shipping. This is not, this is illegal. This I didn't do that. That's fake. That's fake. I don't know where you got that from. That's not real. The fuck? It's not real. That's, I never said that. That guy's bald. I'm not bald. That's not me. Shut the fuck up. Most searched porn stars by women. Abella Danger. I wonder why. I, I guess maybe she does a lot of uh, lesbian stuff. Eva Elfie, Lexi Lore, Angela White. Most more searched more by women compared to men is, uh, I guess, gay porn stars. Female visitors contributed to over half the viewers in one country this year. The Philippines. They had 58% female viewers plus five. Dude, Swagapino all over this, dude. All over this fucking list. Pinoy gang up and down, dude. What the fuck? Countries with the lowest female inclu uh, viewers included Egypt and Germany with only 26% female, 74% male. Female visitors made up 28% of the viewers from the Netherlands, 29 in Canada, Sweden, United States, United Kingdom, and Italy and Spain. Hmm. Colombia was split evenly with 50% being female and 50% being male. The rest of the countries had a higher percentage of men viewing Pornhub. Argentina also contributed to having a high female viewership with 47% being women, the same as 2022. Yeah, there it is. This is a very interesting. It's just like stable 30%. I wonder if it's like, I mean, I don't know what um, sexual freedom looks like or what is like considered appropriate, uh, specifically pertaining to like women and their bodily autonomy and their own... Uh, like, knowledge over their own bodies and, like, how permissible it is for women to get off and shit. But I assume that, like, it's sexual repression that causes that kind of thing. But, I mean, where is this person? Hold on. Uh, yeah, but noisy isn't enjoyable for women. What? The swerve movement is very big in Germany. Is there a reason why lesbian is so high? Do they have Korea on here? Oh, they don't. Because women read their porn. Yeah, I've talked about this before. Um, it, it, yeah, women... Like, women getting off is, is definitely very different than men getting off. Women love getting off, too. The idea that, like, women don't get off is is completely wrong. But I think, like, the type of porn that women are into or the type of, like, the type of fat material that women love is definitely very different than what men love. Men is just, like, visual stimuli, titties, ass, whatever the fuck, right? Whereas for women, it's, like, whereas for, for women, it's more of a, a holistic thing. It's a It's a more holistic approach it has to be like a full-blown uh scenario that is uh all-encompassing that's why a, a, a lot of women love reading like erotica right i i think i think that's a that's definitely a, a part of it hold on what the fuck is going on no i hope don't hold on um werewolves fall in love with a maiden bullshit type yeah exactly uh loads of men are into the situation part of it they just don't recognize it like, it's not that different from watching, like, student-teacher porn. No, but student-teacher porn is, like, super basic dynamics, I think. Super, super basic. Like, I feel like women want to feel uh, all of their senses tackled. You know what I mean? They want all their senses to be tickled at the same time. Estrogen sex drive is different to testosterone sex drive. There's a lot of studies on this. I noticed complete change in sexual drive. Not less, just different when I went on hormones. Yeah. Like... I, I love a good story, you know what I mean? But not to the same degree as, like, I care about the visuals. You know what I mean? Age demographics. The average age of Pornhub visitors was 37 years old, which has remained the same for the past couple of years. Jesus Christ. Most viewers are between the ages of 18 and 34. This makes up over half the entire viewership. 18, 24 age bracket made up 27% of all traffic, and the 24, uh, 25 to 35 made up 26% of the traffic. After that, the numbers decrease. 
Proportionally, the top 20 countries, the 1824 age bracket was highest in the Philippines, Mexico, Germany, Brazil, and Egypt. Smart written out is so much better than any porn. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would never be able to fucking... I would never be able to crank one out to, like, smut, uh, written out smut. Do you think this explains... I haven't, I haven't made it about the hood yet, yo. I'm, I am not Hassan. I don't have the socialist money. And I do think this explains... That's funny. Aren't you 37, bro? Uh, I am 32 years old. Related, have you ever been this, this, this depressed before? Fuck no. Bro, what? Bro, that is... Oh, my God. That's the worst thing I've ever seen, dude. What the fuck? That's the... That is so fucking sad, brother. No shot. No fucking shot. That, oh, oh, how did you get there? You know what I mean? Been there, bro? No, you haven't. That's some real gooner shit. All right, I'm done with this. I can't do this any longer. Um, let's get to some serious fucking news, okay? We did it. We covered a lot of uh, silliness, a lot of goofy, fun gaffes and, and goofs. And, and uh, you know, well, let's get back to fucking reality, I guess. 15 years, time flies much like a shoe. Yeah, it's been 15 years since George W. Bush was uh was able to evade a shoe coming in his direction here i'll show you the funny goofy thing i was first skeptical of the cyber truck but this commercial made me change my mind completely come on join in guys that's great man megaphonics is fucking clenching his fists and breathing erratically watching this yeah he loves that i i even broached the subject matter of of uh of of cyber truck Nicki minaj has joined the kai Sinat stream and things are getting wild already okay we'll do one more fun thing uh, yeah, that's right. Barbs are taking over, uh, Twitch and I apologize for ever saying anything mean about Nicki Minaj in even a joking way. I love Nicki Minaj. Anyway, we love Nicki Minaj. I have converted my entire community to loving Nicki Minaj. Wait, okay. Let's start with Gaza. Never mind. Let's start with Gaza. Let's start with Gaza. Let's, uh, we'll talk about Nicki Minaj and Kai. I'll, I'll save that for a little bit. I'll save that for a little bit. We have been trying for many, many weeks. CNN's Clarissa Ward actually uh, is able to get into Gaza to witness the Gazan humanitarian crisis, which is, like, pretty important. Uh, I, I will say this is uh, respect, much respect to Clarissa, because shit's not easy right now. It's not easy to get in there. I don't know how the fuck she was able to do it, but I'm glad that she did. I'm glad that she got Israel to let it happen, at least. When will you get Megan Thee Stallion? Uh, whenever she wants now to try to get into Gaza. It has been impossible uh, for us up until Tuesday. We were able to travel inside with some medical volunteers who are working at a newly established, newly built field hospital that has been set up by the United Arab Emirates in the southern part of Gaza. As you know, the southern part of Gaza is now very much the focus of Israel's military operations. That is exacerbating an already dire humanitarian catastrophe and leading to record numbers of civilian casualties as we saw for ourselves. You don't have to search for tragedy in Gaza. It finds you on every street, strewn with trash and stagnant water, desolate and foreboding. So we've just crossed the border into southern Gaza. This is the first time we've actually been able to get into Gaza since October 7th. And we are now driving to a field hospital that has been set up by the UAE. Up until now, Israel and Egypt... Fast food again? You are not caring for your health, bro? Yeah, dude. Not caring for my health by eating straight chicken, you dumb fuck. I never eat fucking fast food. I always get my parents to cook me shit. Don't ever fucking come at my diet. Ever, you dumb bitch. Don't ever do that. The fuck? I don't even eat the rice. Look at all that sauce, bro. Damn. What sauce, dumbass? There's a little bit of sauce on the fucking salad. It's hummus. Egypt have made access for international journalists next to impossible. And you can see why. Since October 7th, the Israeli military says it has hit Gaza with more than 22,000 strikes. That by far surpasses anything we've seen in modern warfare in terms of intensity and ferocity. And we really, honestly, are just getting a glimpse of it here. 
Despite Israel's heavy bombardment, there are people out on the streets. A crowd outside a bakery. Where else can they go? Nowhere is safe in Gaza. It used to be right. a stadium. Arriving at the Emirati Field Hospital, we meet Sorry. Dr. Abdullah Al Nakbi. No sooner does our tour begin when. So, uh, our ambulance. That's a real life. And this is what you hear all the time now? Yes, at least 20 times a day. At least 20 times a day? Maybe more sometimes. Uh, I think we get used to it. One thing none of the doctors here have got used to is the number of children they are treating. The UN estimates that some two thirds of those killed in this round of the conflict. I can't watch when you eat because metal clanging with plates bothers me like crazy. So this plastic is pog. You've literally never heard metal clanging. I have a noise gate. That's a made up problem. You've never heard women metal and clanging. Children. Eight-year-old Janan was lucky enough to survive a strike on her family home that crushed her femur but spared her immediate family. She says she's not in pain, so that's good. Her mother, Hiba, was out when it happened. I went to the hospital to look for her, she says, and I came here and I found her here. The doctors told me what happened with her, and I made sure that she's okay. Thank God. I was sitting next to my grandfather, and my grandfather held me, and my uncle was fine, so he is the one who took us out. But Dr. Ahmed Al Mazrawi says it is hard not to. I work with old people, like uh, adults. But the children, something touching your heart. Touches your heart and tests your faith in humanity. As we leave Janan, Dr. Al Nakbi comes back with the news of casualties arriving from the strike just 10 minutes earlier. So just call us, they will send right now two amputated uh, young uh, male. Uh, from uh, the, just the bomb. You from hear. the cusp we just yes. heard, from the bomb we just if heard. This is uh, my understanding. Okay. They will arrive to our red areas. A man and a 13 year old boy are wheeled in, both missing limbs, both in a perilous state. What's your name? What's your name? The doctor asks. The notes provided by the. Listen, we've seen this. Um, a million times over, right, since the beginning. But Americans have not. So it's really, really, really important that, like, CNN watchers also get a personal glimpse into the genocide that the American government is contributing to. So I think um, this is something that the Israeli government wanted to avoid, like the fucking plague, okay? The fact that this is, the fact that this is like, uh, being played on CNN is, is really important. Paramedics are smeared with blood. A tourniquet improvised with a bandage. Since the field hospital opened less than two weeks ago, it has been inundated with patients. 130 of their 150 beds are already full. So let me understand this. You are now basically the only hospital around that still has some beds? I guess so, yes. Or maybe I'm very sure of that because they are telling me uh, one of the hospitals with a capacity of 200, uh, they are accommodating 1,000 right now. And the next door hospital, I'm not very sure, it's like 50 to 200. Uh, it has maybe 400 to 500 patients. So at one occasion, he called me, he said, I have three patients in each bed. Please take any. I said, send as many as you can. I mean, we've been here 15 minutes, and uh, this is already what uh, we're seeing. This is, you hear it, you see it. In every bed, another gut punch. Less than two years old, Amir still doesn't know that his parents and siblings were killed in the strike that disfigured him. Yesterday, he saw a nurse that looked like his father. His aunt, Nahaya, tells us he kept screaming, Dad, Dad, Dad. Amir is still too young to comprehend the horror all around him. 
But 20-year-old Lama understands it all too well. Ten weeks ago, she was studying engineering at university and helping to plan her sister's wedding. Today, she is recovering from the amputation of her right leg. Her family followed Israeli military orders and fled from the north to the south. But the house where they were seeking shelter was hit in a strike. The world isn't listening to us, she says. Nobody cares about us. We have been dying for over 60 days, dying from the bombing, and nobody did anything. Words of condemnation delivered in a thin rasp. But does anyone hear them? Like Grozny, Aleppo and Mariupol, Gaza will go down as one of the great... How are you not constantly crying covering this? I'm broken. I'm broken inside. In an irreparable fashion. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm used to it. I know. I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes for, for the past 66 days. This is the 67th. You know what I mean? It's like, but can you stop eating while watching this shit, please? Shut the fuck up. Anyway. Ask the baby to condemn Hamas. You know? Do it. This is baby Hamas. So, here's the thing. This directly contradicts the overarching, prevailing narrative from mainstream media. Okay? The overarching, prevailing narrative in mainstream media, and the reason for why you have an Israeli foreign ministry guy contextualizing their acts of violence every single time they do it, in real time, on CNN is so that they can control the narrative and say, no, 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 we're doing precision strikes, targeted strikes. These are all deliberate. It's by design. Don't fucking worry about it. And, the, and that way, the only thing you see on social media, which, you know, uh, older generations already don't really trust or are scared of unless it, like, directly confirms their biases, right, like the anti-vaxxer shit or QAnon or whatever, um, is, is basically dished out with uh, or, or brushed away with a Pallywood narrative. When you have Clarissa Ward of CNN, decorated fucking journalist, now showing a baby and a 20-year-old engineering student who was victim to Israel's discriminate, not indiscriminate, precise striking, then it turns a lot of people's attitudes. Then it changes a lot of people's minds. I can fucking yell here every day in perpetuity and show you this death and show you this devastation, and it will fall on deaf ears to a certain demographics that will never see it. That will never look to what I'm saying, okay? That will never look to what I'm saying and treat it as though I'm serious or an honest actor. They can just, like, cast it away. Because it's CNN, those very same people will look at that and go, okay, wait a minute, I didn't know it was like this. I didn't know it was this severe. Great horrors of modern warfare. It's getting dark. Time for us to leave. A privilege the vast majority of Gazans do not have. Our brief glimpse from a window onto hell is ending as a new chapter in this ugly conflict unfolds. Now, the death toll in Gaza as a result of Israel's frenzy bombardment currently hovers at roughly 18,000. If you do the math, extrapolating as the UN says that two thirds uh, of the casualties roughly are civilians. That uh, is about 11,800 civilians who have been killed in just over two months. And to give you a comparison, in the first year of the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, uh, according to an independent research organization, some 7,700 civilians were killed by U.S. forces yep. in 20 years in Afghanistan, according to independent research groups, some 12,000 civilians were killed. So in just two months, you're now approaching 12,000 civilians, and that's the same amount who were killed in 20 years uh, during the U.S.'s war in Afghanistan. So this is true. Plus displacement in the millions. No, CNN and other news outlets will now turn on Israel, pretending moral outrage to save face while the U.S. will tacitly accept the genocide. They are trying to support genocide while taking the moral high ground. No, I mean, there's truth to what you're saying and, and what you're saying is exactly how it will play out. But I don't care about that. I care about the way that this is being perceived by a broader public. I also look at this from a very realistic perspective as someone who's been advocating for Palestinians for the past 10 fucking years publicly. I've never seen this level of like insider 
uh, humanizing coverage on the plight of Palestinians. It took, you know, tens of thousands of dead uh, uh, civilians to get here. But this certainly changes people's perspectives, okay? 20,000 Palestinians, UN estimation being that two-thirds is civilians. It's probably even higher than that. Total U.S. deaths in Iraq was only 12,000, really? No. In the first year, it was civilian. In the first year, the total U.S. deaths for civilians by independent analysis was 12,000 for the first year. Truly staggering and unprecedented. Phil, Erica? Clarissa, it's, it's an extraordinarily powerful piece because you're taking us, one, in, and two, to the personal stories. I think it's been dif difficult to some degree to come by because of the conflict and the type of conflict this has been. Your reference in the piece to uh, Grozny, Aleppo, Mariupol, uh, you've covered so many conflict zones. You've covered uh, some of the worst conflicts uh, that have happened in the last several decades, if not longer. How would you compare this to this? It's always difficult to compare conflicts, um, but I would just say it is so striking that the people of Gaza have nowhere they can go, have nowhere that is safe. They are literally being told to move from the north as the north gets bombed. They move to the south and the south gets bombed. Now they're expected to move to a different area in central Gaza. And let's be very clear. It is not easy to move around right now in Gaza. We saw almost no cars on the streets. People do not have fuel. People are afraid to try to make road runs because of the risk that that incurs. And so, of course, you are seeing a horrific impact, not just in terms of the civilian casualties that we talked about, but in terms of the humanitarian crisis. You're talking about malnutrition. You're talking about the spread yeah, if you scale the population, it's even more sinister since Gaza has only 2 million people and Iraq and Afghanistan have some 10x at the start of the century. That and also it's in a much larger, in a much broader area of conflict. It's an entire country versus a tiny fucking sliver of an open air prison that Israel has relegated these 2.2 million Gazans into. They're internal refugees. So it's the cruelty is fucking unimaginable, dude. It is so fucked up of preventable diseases. We talked to the doctors who said that they're treating cases of sepsis and patients are nearly dying where these should be straightforward operations that can't be performed. They described one incident where a man had worms in a wound on his head because there is such a lack yeah. of a sanitary, uh, you know, any sanitary environment in which to perform surgeries or operations. So this is a crisis of epic proportions, and the fact that humanitarian aid workers do not have the access that they need just makes it all the more staggering. One extra point that I really need to make here, Phil, because I think it's important. This was our first time being able to gain access into Gaza. But the journalists in Gaza have been doing heroic, extraordinary... What the fuck is going on with the CNN coverage, man? What's happening? This is like the second time this shit happened. This is the deadliest conflict for journalists. Yeah, this is the other part of the coverage that I'm like genuinely shocked that the Western media didn't immediately get into. Journalists in the United States of America are like, in many instances, just petty fucking assholes. But there is one thing that they care about, which is like jur journalism being under attack, right? They love talking about how, you know, a journalist, even in a fucking foreign ally, and certainly in a foreign adversary, whenever a journalist is like under attack, they see it as like the entire profession being under attack. But this is the first time I've ever we seen them like straight up, not even fucking talk about it. Wound on his they just had and cried none at time doing heroic access into Gaza. But the journalists in Gaza have been doing heroic No, it's just broken. Shatter who told me to fucking uh, uh refresh, it's just broken. They have paid such a high price for that. This is the deadliest conflict for journalists that we have seen in decades. More than sixty journalists in Gaza alone have been killed in the last two and a half months. That is according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. So you have a perfect storm here with massive bombardment, an inability to create safe zones, an inability to get humanitarian access where it's needed, and incredibly brave journalists who are doing everything they can to tell the stories and bring the reality to the world. But 
the frustration of international journalists who can't get in to try to complement and supplement their efforts. So it is it is remarkable and such an important picture that you paint of all of those challenges. Why did you say new Philly D Thumbo? Why people are freaking out about the new nudity rules of Sam Piker? Oh, I made it into a Philly D Thumbo again. Okay. In this moment, I was struck by in that field hospital. So much of what we've talked about has been what is needed in terms of medical supplies, as you just pointed out, um, and, and what that can mean, but also the electricity. And there was so much talk about fuel in the beginning and fuel being needed to run generators at hospitals. How that field hospital that you were at, how was it able to operate and to run some of those mm -hmm. machines? And is it at risk? So, Erica, because that field hospital is operated by the Emirates and because the Emirates have a normalized relationship with Israel, they are able to get supplies in, get fuel in, in a way that the vast majority of hospitals in Gaza are not. And even they face very real challenges endless bureaucracy, onerous waits at the border trying to get those supplies in. But what the doctor said is... Uh, what is happening with this coverage, Gazan man? Gazan hospitals are referring their patients to the Emirati Field Hospital. They're coming in in a very bad state of shape. Fuck. Let me explain something to you. Chat, let me tell you something. This is one of the first... This is one of the first instances where you are watching this atrocity happen, like you're watching the impact of Israel's bombing campaign, and there is no Jonathan Conconcreus on the side of the fucking screen with his big-ass Frankenstein-ass head going, oh, this is a, a totally valid act of terror. We had to do it. That's the first fucking time you're seeing a white American woman, a white blonde lady, a respected journalist, a respected conflict reporter, and no fucking contextualization whatsoever is occurring. 67 fucking days it took. 67 fucking days it took. Think about that. Think about how important it is. Think about how important it is that this level of, like, contextualization occurs. That's precisely the reason why they won't do it. They don't have proper tourniquets even, which are a crucial thing in terms of stopping the bleeding. They don't have proper painkillers. Uh, the doctor told us they're needing to give vast doses of painkillers to people who are in extraordinary no, amounts Ward does of a lot excruciating of pain because these hospitals... Clarissa Ward does a lot of shit that I don't like personally, but it doesn't fucking matter. Ultimately, all the stuff that she does that doesn't... Uh, uh, all the stuff that she does that I'm not fond of actually contributes to her... Uh, reporting on this now with more credibility. ...have just had to ration whatever minimal supplies they have. Also, this field hospital is very close to that border uh, with Egypt. And so, really, they are not a microcosm, and they should not give you uh, any a reflection or idea of what most Gaza hospitals look like. Um, they are a sort of island, and that is why they are getting so many referrals from these other hospitals that are teetering on the brink of collapse. In fact, many of them just have simply mm -hmm. collapsed and are therefore trying to refer as many patients to this field hospital as perfect as possible to try to get them some modicum of decent care. Like you got, you got Clarissa Ward who was like ducking when rockets were falling around her as she claimed, okay? You got her doing that week one, okay? You got her week one doing that. And now, week fucking, however many weeks have passed by now, it's like 70 fucking days almost. Now this is her coverage. Now, I don't like it when she did the other thing, but I do like it when she does this, because the other thing finally contributes to her being seen as like a legitimate person by, by the broader CNN uh, audience. Why is this happening? It's because of all the pressure that people globally have put upon their administrations. It's because of the severe demonstrations that have occurred over and over again, everywhere, that it's getting to a point where governments can't just turn a blind eye and, and say, nah, it's fine. We're just going to do uh, whatever we've been doing. We're going to stay the course. We're going to keep Israel. Uh, we're going to let Israel do whatever the fuck it wants. That's what it is. You're seeing American allies start to turn. She's not a government official. First of all, as, a, as CNN's conflict reporter... She's more of a government official than like 
a, a local council district member, okay? Let me just explain that real quick. This is an extension. As far as foreign policy goes, CNN is an extension of the State Department. Mainstream media is an extension of, of America's State Department and its interests. This, to me, signals something very important, much more important than even, like, Bernie Sanders saying some shit about Israel. This, to me, spells trouble for Israel and America recognizing that it's on tenuous ground. Israel's actions have gone above and beyond and perhaps maybe even way too fucking far. She says this today. Anthony Blinken talks about it two days from now under much more somber tone, under much more somber terms. Do you get it? Americans almost all agree on what they have to do overseas. Why do you think Americans think Assange's foreign policy is shit? Yes. Okay. Are you going to fight for anti-porn the same way as you fight for anti-gambling? Uh, no, because I believe one is a genuine vice. The other is not. You know you're doing human rights atrocity when Pootie Poo calls you out? Yeah, I know. No, I think that uh, the most suicidal addiction, the most suicide-prone addiction is not the same as, like, fucking not being able to put the porn down, okay? Because your brain is broken. Also, imagine coming in here in the midst of, like, genocide coverage and being like, ah, I'm going to fight a battle for my favorite juicer. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. If you don't want to do either of it, don't do either of it, okay? It is worse? Sure. Anyway, I guess gooner lives don't matter. Okay, we're, we're done. We're done. We're kind of wonder why or how Israel even let her in. I don't know how she snuck in. It is very interesting. She went in with the UAE for sure. But I, I don't know how. Um, anyway, through, through the Rafah border, yes. But it's like, it's, I don't know why. Does Egypt not allow crossings along Rafah for journalists? I doubt Israel would, let, would want Clarissa Ward to go in without an IDF, uh, without, uh, uh, without like an IDF troop. Israel has allowed American and Western journalists to go into Gaza, but they have to go in with IDF. And Israel does have some level of control over the Rafah border with Egypt. So as, they've, as she also brought up, which is precisely the reason why I'm confused as to how she was able to get in or whether Israel allowed it or not. And I don't think Israel would allow this to happen because when you go in with an IDF, uh, with a troop, with a battalion, uh, they say it's for protection, but it's also because like they don't want to kill you on accident or deliberately. But the other reason why they uh, let you go with an IDF escort is because then IDF gets to literally comb through your footage to make sure that they have full editorial control. This is known. This is a thing that Fareed Zakaria talked about like literally a, a, a month ago. So I'm genuinely shocked that she was able to get in there. I'm, I'm glad that she's getting in there. Did you ever cover the accusations that the IDF executed children in that school? Uh, no, I did not cover it. I, I looked into it a little bit, but I did not personally cover it on the broadcast. Anyway, I, I will continue to be struck by the line. No one's listening. Uh, it seems like every patient either wanted to say or was saying to you, Clarissa Ward, it's uh, remarkable work. And to your point, there are dozens of journalists on the ground there that have lost their lives covering this. There are dozens still there covering it every day. have lost family members. Um, and your work coming in and supplementing that uh, and adding to it is incredibly important. We appreciate your time as always. Thank you. President Biden's national security advisor. When they say no one's listening. They mean you, brother. Oh, so the last piece of footage that I just showed you also plays along very well with this. This is, I don't want to say leak, but this is something that you are allowed to see and hear about what Israel is doing, okay? And it's a big fucking deal. It's a big fucking deal. The fact that this is reported in the news that they're talking about nearly half of the Israeli munitions dropped on Gaza are dumb bombs, U.S. intelligence finds, is legitimately a break-off, a breaking point. You don't do this unless you, one, have people who want to wash their hands of this because they see the operations going in a direction that is really unsustainable, or you don't do this unless you have a shit ton, a fucking shit ton of people in the State Department that are like, I don't want to be a part of this, like, like, I personally, at an even higher level, I'm like, this is too much. Now, the second thing is, is uh, palace intrigue, and I don't think that that's true. I don't think that uh, there are a lot of people who are in the American State Department or in the uh, American intelligence apparatus that are, like, legitimately going, oh, I can't believe these atrocities, right? I think it's more so the first one, especially because 
America has been giving them more dumb bombs. This news, this this came almost immediately after, almost immediately after America, uh, uh, Joe Biden, under emergency authorization, sent Israel a shit ton of dumb bombs. The difference between smart bombs and dumb bombs, for those of you who don't know, dumb bombs are like artillery. Uh, even though some artillery even has like smart guiding systems now, apparently, which is fucking crazy. But it's like tank shells, right? Smart bombs, on the other hand, are JDAMs, the the uh, guidance systems that you can attach to otherwise dumb bombs like the Mark 84. So the entire point of this is uh, precise striking capabilities, okay? Yes, JDAMs are dumb bombs, kitted to be smart bombs, exactly. So um, Israel has uh, taken a lot of pride in claiming that their weapon systems are super precise and every single bomb being dropped is actually, again, done uh, with the full knowledge of, like, what target you're striking. This completely destroys the idea that Israel is not carpet bombing Gaza. Nearly half of the Israeli munitions dropped on Gaza are dumb bombs goes completely against the surgical precision narrative that they have been expertly trying to craft. This alongside with the New York Times coverage showcasing what has happened to Gaza with a map with satellite imagery showing exactly what look Gaza looks like now and what it used to look like, destroys this narrative entirely. Not for us, because we've seen it. We've seen these atrocities. You've seen thousands of top-of-the-hour ad breaks over the course of the past couple of uh, uh, weeks. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. I'm going to run it now. That's right. But yeah, getting back to the serious stuff. You already knew all of this, but this is important because this is for your dad. This is for your mom. This is for your grandparents. This is for your aunt and your uncle, okay? Because you are in the age demographic of a uh, Hassan Hassan Ivan Piker consumer, a watcher of of news on TikTok, social media. You, it's almost impossible for you to not see uh, this kind of coverage in the in the death and devastation. But your parents, they've only seen what CNN is showing them, okay? So it's very, very important. If half of the munitions is a dumb bomb, doesn't it discredit the deliberacy that Israel is doing in sparing as many civilians as possible? Absolutely, my friend. That is precisely the point. Pfizer is in Tel Aviv right now for discussions, meeting with Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, its Defense Minister as well, other members of the War Cabinet. The White House said a major directive for Jake Sullivan is to pressure Israeli leaders to be more surgical and precise in their pursuit of Hamas in order to reduce harm to civilians. But CNN is learning that thousands of the air-to-ground military weapons used in Gaza since the Hamas terror attack have been unguided. CNN national security reporter Natasha Bertrand is here with the details. Um, this is illuminating reporting, especially in the wake of President Biden saying that Israel is engaged in indiscriminate bombing. What more are your U.S. intelligence sources? Bro, they're also latching on to every minor quote that Biden has made that is even a little bit critical of Israel. Like, that motherfucker, Joseph Robinette Biden, said a whole bunch of psychotic, bloodthirsty nonsense in that Hanukkah special, right? And the media grabbed on to the one instance where he was a little critical of Israel, where he said, you guys are indiscriminately bombing, and that's actually going to hurt. That is actually going to hurt the public attitude towards Israel and the way that uh, Israel is being received in the public. And the media swarmed on that quote. They were looking for anything from Biden that goes against the grain which is precisely why I think the public attitude is shifting and you will see older demographics who legitimately do matter in the eyes of all of our cowardly politicians because they are the voters. They are the ones with disposable income. When they start seeing this kind of coverage in a week or so, the attitude in America will be much, much more different. This is why I've been fucking screaming from the rooftops since day one for more adequate coverage on the matter i feel like you think too highly of the older people that think that smart dumb is just bombing being bad in general wait what no man this the reason why i'm talking about the dumb bomb smart bomb narrative is because like it, it, it goes against what israel has said israel is the most moral army in the world israel is the only democracy in the world israel is doing everything and anything and everything they can to avoid civilian casualties those are the three major narratives that like a shit ton of boomers believe they're all lies. If you look at the fucking reality on the ground, you're like, get the fuck out of here. But boomers don't see the reality on the ground because they're only watching Jonathan Concuncrius every time they see a fucking blown out hospital. Do you understand? This is precisely the reason why this kind of coverage is actually good because it literally 
rips into that narrative, the, the prevailing narrative that, that what's going on here is, is that uh, Israel isn't the most moral army, turns out. Dude, they just entered our country, went to a rave, and just slaughtered everyone who was there. How can you say that we are wrong here? Brother, it is disproportionate, and it is unacceptable. And yes, while the actions on October 7th, conducted by Palestinian militants, Hamas, and, and others as well, is an act of terror, because it overwhelmingly targeted civilian populations, the notion that you can get mad at that but you literally think Israel's deliberate targeting of civilians over the course of the past fucking 60 plus days is totally valid shows me that you are incapable of seeing Palestinians as human. But it makes sense that you don't see Palestinians as human because if you saw them as human, you'd be mad. You'd be so mad that Israel has been doing this apartheid shit for so long. First of all, we don't. Second of all, it's like picking a fight with your older brother because of course you will lose. Basically admitting that it is a, uh, you're responding to what Shadow says because Israel's committing genocide. You go, first of all, we don't. And second of all, it's like picking a fight with your older brother because of course you will lose. It's silly as fuck. You're doing might is right politics. You're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You're on the one hand saying, we're just so, simply more powerful. So of course you're going to lose. While you're simultaneously saying, he said he thinks he knows everything because he lives in Israel. Doesn't need to watch dumb reports. Yeah. Brother, I live in the United States of America, and I could tell you there are a lot of dumb motherfuckers here, okay? There are a lot of dumb motherfuckers living in the United States of America who think everything that America is doing is great. So just because you live in Israel doesn't mean that you actually understand the full scope of the matter. As a matter of fact, I watch a lot of Israeli news as well. I, I read a lot of Hebrew newspapers specifically designed for the Israeli audience so I can get a better understanding of what the fuck's going on in Israel and how the attitudes shift. And let me tell you, a lot of what they show in the Israeli newspaper or in the Israeli news in general and in their Hebrew coverage is very, very different. Very different. I don't think all Palestinians want me dead, but most of them do. Okay. Uh, dude, my own brother fought terrorists in 710 just to stay alive, not to kill Palestinians. Yes, October 7th was the first and last time your brother actually fucking rose to arms to do something that is defensive, both legally permissible and morally permissible. October October 8th, October 9th, and October 10th. And every day since then, as Israel has relentlessly bombed Gaza, the Gaza Strip is both illegal, immoral, and unjustifiable. Israel, according to international humanitarian law, does not have a right to defend itself because it is a belligerent occupier. It does not have a right to defend itself against those it has occupied. So if you or your brother had taken arms on October 6th, on October 5th, on October 4th, then that was not a justifiable action. This is not a matter of national security either. This is just simply a matter of revenge. And many people can't see it, and it's understandable. It's a traumatizing event, especially if you're close and personal, uh, uh, if you're close and personally related to the victim. But if you can comprehend that from your perspective and why Israel is behaving the way that it does, then remember, 75 years of Palestinians and their entire lineage has experienced what you saw or what you felt and the fear that you had for a brief moment on October 7th. We just want them to stop doing whatever they want. They want to exist. That's the only thing they want. They want to exist. They want to live a life of dignity. They want to be able to have autonomy. They want to have a sense of purpose just like you do. And Israel won't allow that to happen because Israel is an apartheid state. The closer you come to terms with that reality and the closer you choose to fix that in your own country, the closer you arrive at permanent security for yourself, for your friends, for your family members, for everyone around you. If you don't want to do it from a morality perspective, remember, this is what Yitzhak Rabin also wanted. It wasn't morality for Yitzhak Rabin. It was a sense of permanent security. He recognized that it was impossible as long as Palestinians want a nation state, unless you fucking genocide them in its entirety, they're going to need, like, something. They're going to need, uh, this is the only way you can genuinely get a, a, uh, genuinely arrive at, like, a, like a, Salah Kaya! No! Get out! Get out! No! You did this already one time. No shot. That's crazy. She went back down there to just fucking plop her big ass under my cables. Anyway, let her live. No, fuck no. Of course, is telling you about this, Natasha. 
Yeah, Pam, so what we learned is that the U.S. intelligence community assesses that of the roughly 29,000 air-to-ground munitions that Israel has dropped on Gaza over the last two-plus months, about 40 to 45 percent of those munitions have been unguided, also known as dumb bombs. Now, that stands in contrast, of course, to precision-guided munitions, which are sometimes laser-guided, GPS-guided, typically are more accurate and precise than unguided munitions, which experts told us really pose an elevated risk to to civilians and can be less precise. And when you're talking about such a densely populated area like Gaza is, you know, the difference be between a target reaching, uh, a, a munition reaching its target within a few feet can mean uh, a matter of life and death uh, in such a densely populated area. And so the question is now, why is Israel using these dumb bombs? And we really don't have a great explanation at this point. We don't partake in videos. What the fuck am I not BDSing for? What do you mean? Chicken is not a part of BDS, bitch. Point. Um, US, the U.S. has provided Israel with the kinds of bomb kits that they can use to transform their munitions that they have in their stockpile into smart munitions, smart bombs that are, you know, GPS or laser guided or other forms of, of, of precision guided munitions. Uh, but the Israelis are still choosing to use in a very large uh, proportion of the time these unguided munitions. And that really, according to the experts that we spoke to, undercuts the repeated Israeli argument that they are doing everything that they possibly can to minimize uh, civilian casualties. Now, we did get a statement after we published this story from uh, an IDF spokesperson who said that the type of munitions used in each strike is determined according to the characteristics of the target. And they said that they do take steps to mitigate the harm to civilians. But really, uh, the, the, uh, the sheer scale of the use of these dumb bombs has raised a lot of questions among experts uh, about why is using them whether it's necessary and yeah, of i wonder course, why if it's i mean this is like the funniest mealy mouthed like passive tone ass fucking way to cover this situation it's like many people are asking questions why israel is using dumb bombs instead of smart ones if they want to minimize civilian casualties and it's like because they're doing a genocide they're doing ethnic cleansing we know why they're doing it they've been saying that they're doing ethnic cleansing and their goal is to fucking raise gaza from the jump is so wild. Like day one, they straight up were like, yeah, these guys are animals. We're going to kill them all. Fuck it. YOLO. It's true. Then why, uh, you know, they're saying that they're taking all of these steps to, to um, mitigate harm to civilians when these actually can pose a greater threat to them in the long run. Yeah, and we should note, it's not just Israeli officials saying they're doing everything they can to limit civilian casualties. The U.S. too. I mean, John Kirby, a spokesperson for the National Security Council, just said Wednesday that Israel is doing everything they can to reduce civilian casualties. And yet this reporting is coming out really raising a lot of questions about that. Natasha Bertrand, thank you. Hamas just takes all the money we give them and that's why they live in poverty, not because of us. <laughs> okay, bro. How can you even say that when people from my family died to defend Israel? So why are you saying it's all our fault? Because it is your fault. It's not your fault individually, but yeah, it is. It is Israel's fault. Israel is the occupying force here. Israel is the powerful force here. Israel is the force that is a nuclear power. Israel has a military. Israel is backed by the Western world. It's fucking ridiculous, dude. Like, think about it from the framework of, like, America versus Iraq, okay? Maybe Israelis have a better understanding of this if I, th if I talk to them with, like, terms of America, okay? America did not need to invade Vietnam. It did not. But it did it anyway. For 20 fucking years, it occupied Vietnam. It's like if I was defending that and a Vietnamese person came in and was like, why the fuck are you bombing me? And I was like, well, you're making me bomb you. It's ridiculous. And you don't think it's for a reason and all the world supports us? No, the world doesn't support you. Leaders around the world support Israel, but the world doesn't support Israel. That's fucking crazy. The world does not support Israel's actions, brother. Be for fucking real for a moment. Just like if you are Israeli, you know that your government doesn't support your decisions unless you're like some psychotic Likudnik bebeast, right? Like the government doesn't care about your interests either. Our governments are the same. It's no different. They don't give a shit about what the actual population wants. But if you look at the actual population's wants and demands, especially globally, no, there are significantly more people that want to stop they want to put an end to this fucking genocide and end the cleansing campaign than wanted to continue. So no, that's not correct. So remember that. Yeah, also look at the latest UN ceasefire vote. The world is overwhelmingly in favor of a ceasefire. Even leaders are now overwhelmingly in favor of a ceasefire too. 
You know, cry harder, cope harder, cry harder. The world does not support you. The U.S. supports you. Yeah, I mean, I don't want innocent people to die, but that is the price of a war. Yeah, brother. Um, no, that's the, they're also the price of ethnic cleansing. Like, you, you do want innocent people to die. If you live in Israel and you're not spending every fucking waking moment yelling at your government to stop the genocide, then you are no different than those who looked away. Those who looked away in other genocides. Okay, that's it. I was reading reports from someone talking about, from someone talking about like, like, I think it was a German person talking about, talking to their grandparents about how they let this happen, how they let the Holocaust happen. Like what, what the fuck? And the grandparents were like, we didn't know. We didn't know. Okay. And it's like, no, they fucking did know. They saw the smoke coming out of the concentration camps. They saw that they felt the scent. They knew they fucking knew. And they turned the other cheek. They looked away and they acted like they didn't know. And that's precisely what's going on right now. You see the death. You see the destruction. And there's another more powerful force within you that says, I think this is allowed. I think it has to happen. I think it's okay. Come visit here and see the experience of an Israeli. Brother, I'm Muslim. And also incredibly outspoken against Israel for the past 10 years. You think I'm going to fucking go to Israel? Are you out of your mind? You think? You think I'm going to be able to touch, uh, step foot inside of Israel and, and be unscathed? What are you, fucking nuts? What are you, insane? Good luck. <laughs> How about instead of telling me to come visit there and see the experience of an Israeli, you fucking go with breaking the silence and many other institutions comprised of Israeli Jews, okay, that used to be pro-occupation and now are not, and go visit the fucking West Bank. I know you can't go to Gaza because, you know, Israel will kill you, uh, but you can go to the fucking West Bank. See how the Palestinians live in, in the West Bank. Why the fuck are you telling me to go to Israel? I know what it's like to be a fucking occupying colonial superpower with a fucking nuclear missile system, multiple nuclear missiles that literally gets off on doing ethnic cleansing on the, on the little guy, okay? I live it. I live it every day. I have brothers in Gaza. No, not your fucking brothers that are fighting in Gaza, dumb bitch. Go to the West Bank and see Palestinians like human beings, okay? Yeah, I do. I live it. I live in America. Thank you so much. And a short time ago, the White House revealed My more of what happened during Jake Sullivan's trip to Tel Aviv today. Right Palestinian right children today. Yeah, National Security Council official John Kirby said that Sullivan talked to Israeli leaders about transitioning from, quote, high-intensity operations to lower-intensity operations in the near future. Let's take you now to Israel with CNN correspondent Jeremy Diamond, who's live for us in Starot. Jeremy, what are you learning about the meetings between uh, the national security advisor and Israeli officials? Well, these meetings really come at a critical point in Israel's war effort against Hamas in Gaza. It comes as not only the civilian death toll is mounting, but also as growing international uh, pressure is also mounting on Israel and being acknowledged uh, by the United States, including by President Biden just days ago, talking about Israel's indiscriminate bombing of Gaza. And so enter the picture, Jake Sullivan meeting with top Israeli officials, including the Israeli prime minister, to discuss not only that mounting civilian death toll, the ways in which uh, the United States wants Israel to be more targeted in its operations, but also beginning to think about a timetable for... Remember, this is still a laundering operation. They're laundering Israel's unjustifiable actions to a broader public by still presenting it as like Israel's war against Hamas, right? However, now they're like, ooh, oopsie, Israel's doing its war against Hamas, but maybe it went a little too far. Why do you not hate on Palestinians who fully fucking support Hamas? But Israelis who half support the Israeli government are fucking crazy murderers? Very simple question. Very simple answer. Palestinian emancipation is good. Israeli apartheid is bad. So even if you support half-heartedly the Israeli apartheid, you are participating in much more evil, graver evil. Has Hamas done evil things? Yes, they have. Killing civilians is unacceptable. Okay? It's unacceptable. But as far as the totality or the per capita civilian death in comparison to enemy combatants, for example, Hamas is the lesser evil. It doesn't feel like it because you're like, you're not conditioned into seeing it that way. But if you look at the numbers on the board and you look at who Hamas and other Palestinian militants targeted uh, in comparison to civilians versus straight up uh, uh, civilians versus Israeli military forces, Hamas's percentage of civilian to uh, military force casualty uh, percentage is significantly better than Israel's. So that's one of the reasons on its face as to why I think that the Palestinian support for Hamas, which has increased as a consequence of Israel's actions in Gaza, is 
totally understandable. Whereas the Israeli support for the Israeli government's offensive actions, which it does not have a right to do so, by the way, is not permissible by my standard because I don't think it's appropriate. Israel does not have a right to defend itself as the belligerent occupier, as the nuclear superpower. Palestinian resistance, however, does have a right to defend itself, legally and morally. And you would do the same thing. You would do the absolute same thing. You would. Every single one of us, hopefully, would have the same bravery, the same courage to be able to defend their loved ones, to defend their homes. We would do the same fucking thing. If someone came from nowhere, blew up your goddamn house, killed your fucking family members, if you didn't take up arms and you didn't fight back, you'd be a fucking coward. That's it. I mean, in a way that just by simply living there, you are going to be biased. To be honest, I would if I was Palestinian, probably. There you go. Okay, but do you see how an Israeli would support their same side the way a Palestinian would? Yes, I do. But it's wrong, and that's my point. I know why Israelis would be biased towards Palestinians. I get that. But biased against Palestinians, I get that. It's still wrong, though. That doesn't change whether or not it's appropriate or whether or not it's wrong. That's the point. And I make that point all the time. I make that point every day. And I try to get Americans to understand this perspective in America. Because Americans also feel the same exact way about our foreign adversaries. We think about our foreign adversaries as pure evil, right? And all of our actions overseas is actually good. Sometimes we might not agree with it, but ultimately, it's kind of for the betterment of society. Because after all, if our enemies were to win, it would be much, much worse. So that's the reason why a lot of people can't come in here and be like, well, why don't you wash your hands of America's uh, death and destruction? Because I do that on a daily fucking basis. As a matter of fact, I would chalk up a lot of Israel's death and destruction to America as well. This is something that many progressives need to think about because there are a lot of progressives now who are coming to that recognition that like Israel's actions against Palestinians is actually completely unjustifiable, wrong, morally abhorrent. And yet they have a, a different way of looking at America's actions overseas, America's actions globally in death and destabilization. And to them, I say, if you can't comprehend why Israelis are ultra Zionists, and hate Palestinians and dehumanize them and think the Israeli occupy, occupying forces attitude is actually correct. Okay, if you can't, if you cannot come to terms with their reality, maybe just look within. We're transitioning uh, the high intensity fighting and bombing of Gaza that we are seeing from Israeli forces right now to a lower intensity phase. That's according to John Kirby, the National Security Council spokesman. Uh, there is an acknowledgement. <laughs> Over 70%. Over 70% of those killed on October 7th were civilians. That's more than two-thirds. I love that that is the reason why Israel is trying to be like, no, 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 you don't understand. Our, actually tar our targeting is, like, way better. Our targeting is way better than Hamas is targeting. Yeah, dude. You're not going to be able to swing the lesser evil shit, okay? When Israel has the capability, the targeting capability of not even fucking coming close to that percentage. Shut the fuck up, Okay. And that is not fam is terrible on both sides. No dog, there is no both sides in that. You can't fucking come in here with that th uh, with that five head bullshit. You just said the Hamas had a better ratio of military to civilian targets. That's just wrong. I absolutely am correct on that. You are deluding yourself into thinking that Israel's destruction and death, okay, which is significantly more than just like even the civilian targeting. You're looking at Israel's numbers that go. Oh, it's fine. Every fucking Palestinian over the age of 15 is actually an enemy combatant. You're looking at those numbers and you're going, actually, Israel's targeting is much better. You're looking at all of those people that are arrested and stripped and Israel serves it to you like they are literal enemy combatants, that they're actually Hamas terrorists or whatever. And you're going, oh, that makes me feel safer that like Israel actually is doing a good job. Part of the reason why they're doing that is because they have to show you scalps. Because guess what? They can't hide the fact that 10 commanders, for example, were wiped out in one fucking explosive, uh, in, in, in one deployment of ordnance in, uh, what was it, Jabaya? Okay, it's crazy. I'm 100% against the Israeli government, but I want the facts to be represented without false info. 90% <sighs> of these, 70% he's talking about have a military experience with IDF. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, the, new, the new meta is being like, I'm actually for, uh, I'm actually pro-Palestine. I just want the truth to be heard. And it's not. You're not fucking pro-Palestine, and you don't care about the truth being heard. If you cared about the truth being heard, you would recognize, yeah, it was Shujaya. I don't know how to say it, okay? 
if you were to recognize that, you wouldn't come in here with this fucking cowardly bullshit of being like, I'm against the Israeli government. I am 100% pro-Palestine. I just think your coverage is wrong on this. Okay? Yeah, you don't understand the situation because you don't live in Israel and are anti-Semitic. Now watch me pair the IDF press release. Yeah, you don't care about the truth. Look at your reporting. It's so fucking funny. Hamas is a terrorist organization. You're a terrorist sympathizer. Israel won the wars. Arabs hate them to death for it. You don't care about the truth. Look at your reporting. Okay, chatters, including Noble Bochamp. I beg you. I don't think you will have it in you ever. You will probably never look at me the same for the rest of your life. But I beg you. Okay, stop adding this fucking chatter. Stop adding this chatter. I hate it when you motherfuckers do this. Okay? I'm begging you, please, look within yourself. If you have a way to comprehend America's unjustifiable and cruel actions, then you can see what Israel is doing is also not right. Okay? It's hard. It's hard to shake yourself of your personal biases of this sort. I mean, you haven't been in here for months. I mean, you haven't been in here for years. But there was a point in time when you legitimately... Like, look at this. Someone needs to tell these pro-Cuban revolutionaries that calling capitalists worms is mean. So weird capitalists want to pretend the number one world economy and your neighbor embargoing you for decades has no impact on your economy, lol. How did you go from, in 2021, having these attitudes to being like Israel is unconditionally correct? If you can understand America's embargo against Cuba as an unjustifiable act, as an act of collective punishment, you should be able to recognize, even in the small sliver that we talk of Gaza, with all the atrocities, before you even get to the death and destruction, think about, just think for a brief moment, what the Israeli blockade means for Gazans, 2.2 million of them living under Israeli occupation. Think, what do you mean how someone can't change their mind? No, of course, but you can change your mind in the worst direction, okay? I sympathize with colonies, babies, collective punishment, wrong too. Israel doesn't want to behead babies on purpose. Brother, what are you talking about? You just said you don't care about your truth. Look at your reporting. And then you said, I sympathize with Colin as babies collective punishment wrong too. I don't think that killing babies is permissible in any capacity. I have time and time again, since October 8th, when I started this broadcast, said that Hamas's actions and the Palestinian militancy engage in acts of terror, okay? But you have, for some weird reason, you have, for some weird fucking reason, never seen this stuff you've only seen clips out of context time and time again i've said that that is completely inappropriate so remember remember where you got this information from do you feel like they betrayed you do you feel like they lied to you i never in a million fucking years said collective action against israel is appropriate i never said that i said the exact opposite that is a part of the reason why i'm actually an advocate for a one-state solution rather than a two-state solution because i don't believe that we can collectively punish the babies in the West Bank. The settler babies in the West Bank. I just got to say, I love that you, I can debate you in chat and get responded to, yet be allowed to stay in the community. Major props for allowing this discussion to be so open, even if we disagree on specifics. The message is impactful. I, I try, the part of the reason why I do that, I, I try to do this specifically because I want to make sure, I want to make sure that people are, are well-equipped to deal with a lot of bad faith takes, Okay. But anyway, overall, I want to I want to understand what happened in your fucking brain that you literally turned into like the major the biggest Israel dick rider for no reason. If you have passion for Cubans, if you have passion for Cubans who are suffering under an embargo, think about the condition that Gazans are subjected to. Think about the conditions that Palestinians are subjected to in the West Bank. It's infinitely fucking worse than Cubans. Cubans will agree with that. So that's what I I, I wonder, like, how how do you have such cognitive biases what went wrong? Yes, but Israel didn't always treat them that way. Wait, what? And that, wait, I still believe in the Cuban thing, by the way. And that Gaza is like District 9. Israel treats them wrong. My man said Gaza is like District 9. Yes, but Israel didn't always treat them way, that way. That's wrong. Israel's inception is death and destruction. 750,000 Palestinians robbed of their homes. This is the Nakba, okay? A fact that Israel doesn't teach in its schools. Yeah, 500 plus historic villages decimated. Israel wiped the fucking villages out. And then literally, Israel wiped the villages out, the olive orchards out. And then on top of that, planted fucking uh, trees that gave it a more European feel atop these Arab villages. Israel changed the names of some of these Arab villages to sound more, uh, uh, to sound more in line with, uh, with Judaism. 
some fucking Genghis Khan shit. Arabs wiped out Jewish settlements. Not true. Gaza, stay on topic. Arabs wiped out Jewish settlements. Brother, I don't know why you think you can go toe to toe with me on this when you are fucking delusional. But I will ask you to be on the. Uh, I will ask you to be on the broadcast because I'm legitimately, legitimately uh, uh, trying to figure out where you're coming from. Because it seems like you had a normal brain at a certain point. So I'll, I'll hit you with a guest star, and uh, I would love to hear from you. This is the fourth time that I've tried to fucking guest star. Why do you have this constant issue to talk to every chatter who does this, brother? I have the, the constant itch to talk to a chatter that does this specifically because if you have been in here and you show passion for Cubans, that means you literally have a capacity to cut through the noise, to cut through mainstream media's like narratives about how Cubans are all fucking, you know, uh, monstrous people who hate America. And that's why they deserve this fucking blockade. But then something changed over the course of the past two years that he hasn't been in this community. It's never one chatter that I'm talking to when I talk to a chatter like this. There's a shit ton of them in here right now, some of which used to be former fans, some of which uh, are, are, are haters that will probably become fans in the future. I also want to try out the guest star feature in general. I want to know. I want to know what it, how it works. So it doesn't, it just fucking sucks that I can never use it. What does that mean? Sorry, sectarian violence was president of the region before Israel was a nation. Arabs wiped out Jewish settlements. What does that mean? Sorry, I can talk about it. I do have a worrying bias. Okay, I, I sent you a, a link, like a guest star. I don't know how the fuck it works. But you have a... I, I'm waiting for you to connect right now. Look, you cannot say Israel didn't always treat Palestinians this way. And then when you get told what Israel did to historic populations of Palestine, say Gaza stay on topic. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's, he's completely wrong about that because Gaza exists as a consequence of Israel doing that to the Palestinians. Gaza is a, a open-air prison for Palestinians that were displaced internally. As I'm sure you know, some Jewish settlements were destroyed over the course of the 1900s and in 1948. The issue is not that it didn't ever happen, but they did it on a scale way higher than Arabs ever did. Yes, 6,000 Jewish uh, people were killed in the Nakba. Okay, 6,000. 15,000. Palestinians were killed in the Nakba with 750,000 Palestinians being forcibly displaced from their homes during that process. Yes, of course. Of course, there is violent resistance to that kind of ethnic cleansing campaign. It's like, wait, what? Oh, he's show on stream. I think he's in here. Okay, perfect. Oh my God, guest star worked. What is this? Ready to push a guest onto your stream? Guest video will appear in the session in your streaming software. Guest audio will be pushed through your streaming software. Guests who are removed will become transparent in your streaming software. Oh my God, it worked. Oh my God. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Fuck. Include camera in the group output. Set audio through your browser source. Wait. Oh no. Fuck. I said don't send audio. Send audio. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Oh my God. I'm so excited. Hold on one second. Oh God. I'm such a fucking dumbass nerd. Um, I'm going to disable my camera and, and see if I can see if I can enable it in here. Okay, chat. One second. What the fuck? Game capture? What the fuck is this? Uh, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Oh, uh, my mic is off. That's what it is. Turn mic on. I'm trying. What the fuck? Hello? 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 Why is it not letting me turn my mic on? This is so dumb. Communications microphone, microphone, Rodecaster Pro. Turn it on. Oh, yes, it worked. Hello, can you hear me? I can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me or not. And I don't know why I can't. Okay. Oh, this is fucking exciting. Hold on. I see him chat, but I can't hear him. I'm going to fix it real quick. I'm going to try to fix it. I think you need to... Oh, unmute. I just unmuted you. Hold on. Speak. Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear me. What the fuck? Hello, hello, hello. You can hear me. I can't hear you. Speak. Change your output. Change your uh, output. It's like weird. I, I don't know why it's like uh, not fucking working uh, appropriately. Or I mean, uh, ch yeah, no, it, not input. Or is it input? Yeah, change your input, not your output. Sorry, change your input on your on your mic settings. Um, Kaya has, must have messed up the chords on there. No, it's not Kaya messing up the chords. Chatter. It's literally, it, it's literally not that. He, it's just simply that. Whoa. Hi. Oh, I hear you. See, you he did it. Ah, yes. yeah, it's on. All right. Okay. Noble Bow Champ. Yes, that's um, me. Welcome, welcome to the broadcast. You had some takes. You you had some takes that you disagree with uh, on me, and then some takes that you agree with. 
So mm -hmm. let's talk about your journey. What happened? What that has pulled me away from the left. Wait, I do have a worrying bias that has pulled me away from the left. I can, you said. That was the last thing you said before we pulled you into the conversation. What do you mean right. by a worrying bias? What does that mean? As, as far well, sorry, as sorry, I muted you. I muted you on it. I don't know why it automatically mutes you. No, um, okay. What do you have? A, what do you mean by a worrying bias? So, I have a worrying bias. I, I guess I'll, 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 just, I'll just say it, Frank. Um, with the Islamic world, kind of, um, and their anti-gay stance, and it coming down to refugees and in Sweden and all that. And I want to be a, le a good leftist, and I want to say we need to take on, especially we still don't always, always need to take on. You refugees. don't live in Sweden, by oh. the way, right? Like you're just saying you. No, I, no, I no, 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 no. I'm in Texas. I'm in Texas, um, and um, I, I and and I like like uh, immigrants from 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 Latin America. Well, like immigrants are our nation. They're 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 we literally are all immigrants, you know, and um, but but um, it's also we need to as a nation integrate with each other and kind of and that's, that's what worries me is that america makes no attempt to integrate other peoples and it's good to take on all these refugees war-torn countries that's just really good but i i just worry that with public education kind of going down the drain and this rise of private education by these like you know these, these dumb dumb republicans it's going to lead to like a cultural divestment of like uh you know, we're we're already culturally diverse, and that's fine. But like, you know, all uniting us all was this idea of we're all in it together. I worry about this kind of um, that that town in Michigan. Um, what Dearborn? Ah, uh, fuck, no, not Dearborn. Um, it, it's the the it's the all Muslim city council. Um, and they and around Pride Pride they they um banned the the Pride flag from being displayed on public property, which yeah, included that's schools. that's Dearborn. Oh, it is Dearborn? Okay. I think you're talking okay. about Dearborn. I'm pretty sure, right? Um, or wait, someone is saying Hamtrak? Hamtrak? Hamtrak. Yeah, Hamtrak. So let me ask like you a question really quick before we even move on to anything else. So sure. you're worried about you're worried about like Muslims not integrating correctly into American society and like not upholding liberal values, especially as it pertains to gay people, right? That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, the, the same as like the, the, yeah, it's the, the same as I worry about the when Orthodox Jews do it in in, in New York. I I really think okay. like them having their own police you, force is really that's crazy. That's wrong. <laughs> like this is America. Okay. okay, okay. So here's one thing I, I I will tell you that I hope will maybe soothe your uh your perspective a little bit. Um, as far as like being anti LGBT goes, uh, it is really interesting to me whenever like uh if it's like a Muslim uh, uh population like a densely populated area full of Muslims that do something like this, that it becomes a matter of national news when obviously you and I both know, if you've been in this community for a very long time, it's predominantly the act of, of far-right Christians that actually engage in this sort of thing all around the country. Now, that's number yes. one. Number two is, as a matter of fact, if you look at the Pew Study research uh, that is conducted on like the opinions of Muslims and homosexuality, U.S. Muslims are significantly more accepting of homosexuality than white evangelicals. This is a fact that I've used quite a bit. As a matter of fact, this is back from like 2017. I don't know what the latest numbers look like. But American Muslims, which are not exactly a very big political constituency to begin with, not exactly movers and shakers, if you will, uh, in comparison to like the white evangelical Protestant base of support for the Republican Party, are significantly more pro-gay than white evangelical Protestants are in general. So, uh, having said that, does that change your opinion at all? Yeah, it actually, actually helps soothe it a little bit. Um, like, 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 definitely. Like, I, I still worry about the adding to the problem. But yeah, that that kind of like my yeah my 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 worry was mislaid because it's definitely you're right. It's definitely you know the Republicans who are the main uh, people pushing that agenda. So I I, I guess I, I guess I can make, make sense to that. But then, but, but as when it comes to Gaza, I'm really worried. So, 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 I, I just, what can they do? What, like, can, can they so, tear down the walls and let God, let, let God in? end? Like, but, 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 how many like gay Jews would have to? I, it's like I don't know the answer so, to that. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm get into that. Hold on, kind of I'm stuff. gonna get into that. Okay. So, first of all, almost everything you've heard, I think, about how life and operations in Gaza are conducted, or how Hamas is even is a little bit misguided. Remember how you had this uh, bias uh, about Muslims mm -hmm. in general, where you were like, oh, well, these guys wanted to ban the pride flag. Like, 
A lot yeah. of this is actually just media narratives that you hear. Are some of the uh, Muslims in Gaza homophobic? Certainly, of course, absolutely. There are plenty of homophobes in Israel as well, as a matter of fact. Now, this does not change, first and foremost, it does not change the reality of whether or not they are. Uh, it is appropriate to engage in a relentless bombing campaign in an open-air prison, right? Do you, do you get that? So it's not, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this. Uh, our allegiance that. with other people around the world should not be on the conditions that they agree and see the world from our lens, from our perspective. There's also a shit ton of gay Muslims. This is something that, Americans talked about with ISIS quite a bit back in the day. They were like, ISIS, they're throwing gays off the roofs. And I would always ask them, who are the gays that they're throwing off the roofs? Like, do you think that those gay people are not Arab? They are. They're, they're killing other gay Arabs. So um, in, in many instances, this kind of homophobic anti-LGBT violence is a direct consequence of the material conditions being uh, awful. That, uh, you know, we are Christian fascists would probably throw gays off the roofs, too, if America's material conditions resembled uh, uh, right. Syria or, or uh, Afghanistan or Iraq. That's the that's the major difference here. Our our Christian fundamentalists just go and, you know, calm themselves down over some some bottomless margaritas and five dollar jalapeno poppers at Applebee's. Right. They're fucking Muslim yeah. fundamentalists don't have that same stability uh, and, they and they, they live in an economically volatile environment. So uh, that, that is, is the true. reason why they do way more acts and of gross violence in abundance. To, su to support your point, I do hear that, especially around the youth, the young the, the young people in all, in all these developing Arabian nations. I don't know if that's the wrong, Marie, I don't know. But um, uh, are really pro. Uh, like they're, they're pretty liberal in democracy. The one point I will disagree with you on, though, was will be the uh, – our condition of supporting allies on uh, not thinking like us. I think historically that has been what the U.S. has done. I think that's been a mistake. I think we should be supporting kind of a, I won't say like a liberal world order, but we should definitely be like, hey, like, you're like, are you, you're, are you a democracy? Are you open to like discussing ideas or whatever? And if they're not, kind of like edging their government to do that you know <laughs> like i don't know that's just my opinion i think america uses way to supporting no. you you people. said you are not a fan of identity politics in 2021 when you were talking about this because you had recognized that mm -hmm. identity politics was simply a selling point for a lot of the atrocities that america engages in i don't know what has mm -hmm. shifted in your perspective but that still very much is the same this is precisely the reason why we never talk about saudi arabia's fucking uh human rights violations right. uh right. in in not we don't even look at for example here i i support ukraine i support ukraine and yet ukraine is not exactly a pro lgbt safe haven right no you're, and you're and right that's about not that. and and whereas cuba on the other hand is and yet uh despite the fact that their constitution was ratified recently with like overwhelming majority support to defend uh lgbt rights in cuba America still has Cuba under the trade embargo, and yet America considers Saudi Arabia, a country that is incredibly restrictive towards uh, gay existence and LGBT people, as a uh, incredibly important foreign ally in the region. America does not give a shit about whether a country is pro-gay or anti-gay. America itself has historically been very anti-gay and still is kind of trying to go back to being as anti-gay as possible. All of this stuff is just seasoning to make it seem like what we are doing is actually advancing a cause. You mentioned the liberal world order, right? You said that's good. Mm -hmm. And yet the liberal world order has been laughable when you look at Israel. What good is the liberal world order if America allows its allies like israel to commit atrocious acts and war crimes every single fucking day what good is that world order in that situation if we are so, throwing if we're mm -hmm. throwing serbian leaders into prison but when it comes to israel we turn a blind eye to the atrocities and as a matter of fact give fucking weapons so that they can continue mercilessly bombing uh, a a uh, a palestinian population that it is a belligerent occupier over then there is no liberal world order it's just a lie that we've made up to try to sell this concept uh okay so i, I can say we can still have a liberal world order and do like you know wrong things to people uh, i think th think that's mutually exclusive but but, but to move on it's not really a, a main point i just want to say that but um 
the uh, the the world order liberal world order is, right now is tiny it's it's europe and us in canada right like mexico um and i don't and, know what you mean by this by the way like it, liberal world order i mean it's people who promote democracy people who accept lgbtz people who will accept uh you know differing ideologies as a country he'll accept refugees from which one it's, it's like when you think of liberals when you think of liberal what a liberal will do you know it will adopt some kid from some country because it looks good that's, you know, the liberal world order that's what they that's what they do but it's only europe and the west and we we project power across the world and, and you're right we work with allies who don't don't think like that in culture. I think you that, mean. That, I think you're talking about the Western world. I don't think you're talking about a liberal world order. And even then, it's it's, it's still kind of, not, kind of both the same. I think you just mean like a liberal democracy, like capitalist liberal democracy, which um is is right. well not capitalism. I mean, it, that is a tool of of control that are that we use that we use. Yes, but but um. And it's it's really the late stage capitalism is the, the word. LGBT yes. LGBT freedoms is not like a, a a real metric by any means to to look at like the well, yeah, overarching it's really harm. To, it's one of the one that's important to me, and not not because I'm LGBT or anything. I just all I just I feel for people who are misaligned, maligned. And that's one of the like LGBT crosses nation boundaries. You know, there's LGBT people in uh, every nation. And so uh, a nation that will, that okay. will to me, that supports LGBT, LGBT BGQ rights is a nation that is looking to uh, be, I don't know, I want to say, uh, in my opinion, good. Like, just like a, a good a good nation that's looking to prove that the citizenry to the point that they'll even accept something that like religious people might think is weird, you know, and uh, I think that those nations are generally uh, doing good policy wise. You know, they could okay, be so doing you, better it, always, but okay, they're so very it, small. It's only you know that it's illegal, right? Like gay marriage is illegal in Israel. Like yeah, they yeah, have to yeah, go yeah. To Cyprus and stuff. So that does, I don't that, think, that, yeah. does that cloud your perspective at all? Or I mean, I don't no, know. I think I, no, no. I think no. I think Israel is an evil state. I, I think what they turned into is is. A, yes, they, where they they people keep people opening our prison. They took over all the water uh, things, and I think the last one was in two thousand, whatever. They took, they took over everything. Is illegal too, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Interfaith, yeah, that, okay, that's that, yeah. Israel, Israel is, is bad. And the conservative government, they've been, they've been terrible. They're terrible to the Palestinians. Okay. I understand. I understand the Palestinians. I understand why they would join Hamas and be angry at Jews. I understand okay. that. I really do. And, so and I also understand something. the Jews, why they would be scared that they live – these people who are angry at them and hate them to death okay, are right I, there I and might do October 7th again. Okay, Sorry. I have a, I have a question for you. So, mm -hmm. um, so why do you think a like queer Palestinian, for example, would be in support of uh, Hamas's form of resistance in your mind? Or do because you think that they're all unconditionally anti-Hamas? Well, no, no, no. I don't think they're all unconditionally anti Hamas. I'm sure there might be a gay Palestinian who's like closeted, whatever, and joined Hamas and wants to defeat Israel over wanting to express his sexual freedom. I can see that. Yeah, sure. That's so, fine. I, <laughs> I mean, you, <laughs> you know, you know, the Ma you know Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Like, I, I, there, this is something that I've talked about quite a bit with respect to Turkey, but with respect to Iran, with respect to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. many other places that America has played a role in destabilizing. In a lot of these countries, in a lot of these countries, okay, when your first and foremost uh, goal is to ensure that a uh, belligerent occupier is bombing you and that bombing campaign stops, uh, obviously there's different degrees of this in all of these other countries that I mentioned. But if it, it, specifically in, in Gaza, if your goal first and foremost is for the Israeli occupation to stop killing your family members – you do not have time to uh, conduct civil affairs. There's no moment to go, yeah, I'm going to fucking fight for gay rights now internally. Why is, there no, why is there no moment? Because everyone is united under the same umbrella. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that umbrella is to end the occupation. Now, it all comes down to this. Do you believe that the Israeli occupation is just or morally permissible or do you not? I don't. I don't believe that the Israeli apartheid should exist. I think that the Israeli apartheid should end it is a gross crime for it to exist for as long as it did. And every day that it continues to exist uh, only compounds upon the evil. And I think that resisting against that occupation is both moral and right. 
and also legally permissible. Now, in that resistance, there are many different forms that that resistance can take. Obviously, mm. October 7th was an offensive operation into Israel proper, and uh, the Palestinian militancy united on, uh, on, on uh, everything beyond ideological boundaries with a singular focus went into Israel and killed a shit ton of civilians. That, in my opinion, fits the boundaries of terror. That, in my opinion, is unjustifiable. What the Palestinian militancy did on October 7th is demonstrably an act of terror. It is a collect, an act of collective punishment. Okay, This is something that even like leadership within the Palestinian movement uh, recognizes and has talked about as well. Now, having said that, however, this does not justify Israel's reaction to October 7th by any means, because like I said, Israel does not have the right to defend itself on against an, a nation or against the people that it has been a belligerent occupier to, okay? This mm -hmm. is why I, I make the argument that Hamas in this circumstance is still the lesser evil in comparison to Israel, both by totality and both by the per capita deaths uh, or the percentage of deaths that it dealt and, and uh, all of the destruction that it dealt to a population that it occupies, a population that it has the registry, the population registry to. Okay. Okay. Uh, I get what you're saying. Um, I disagree with, with, with some of what you're saying. Um, what do you disagree with? I, well, I, I disagree with Hamas being better than I didn't say better. Israel are, okay, no, I'm sorry. Uh, are I said lesser evil. Justified. Lesser evil, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, you I disagree just, with um, Hamas being the lesser evil? Well, I, I think comparing their evils is, well, a moot point anyways. But I just think that... Well, you said both sides are bad originally, no? So that's why I'm saying, like, yeah, well, one both side is bad. objectively, demonstrably worse than the other one. Uh, yeah, you can say... I, I think I say, at times, one side can be worse than the other. It, it depends on the moment. It depends what's going on. It depends on you, and who's in charge of the Israeli government, even, you know? Or who, no, I think that is the Israeli government Hamas. is... <laughs> Well, I think the Israeli know, government is objectively and demonstrably worse than any kind of Palestinian resistance in any form due to the sheer amount of terror caused by the daily maintenance of the apartheid regime. This okay. is why, when all is said and done, uh, Yanis Varoufakis and many others have said, when we look back at the South African apartheid, we do not talk about the ANC's actions. We do not talk about the horrifying practice of necklacing, for example, a practice that the ANC utilized upon black collaborators and even white people in its resistance against the South African apartheid. Do you know what necklacing is? Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Throw, throw, throw a tower around people, yeah. And yeah, and light them on fire. Yeah, yeah, that is a horrifying practice, and yet nobody... Nobody thinks about necklacing when talking about the South African apartheid because everyone understands the greater evil in this circumstance was the apartheid itself and its existence and its maintenance. And that is the case with Israel as well. When all is said and done, okay, if you truly believe that uh, evil won't be able to win in this circumstance, okay, when all is said and done, we will look back at this and we will never think about the Palestinian resistance as anything but under fond terms, similar to the Tet Offensive and the Vietnamese resistance to America's military actions in Vietnam. Maybe. I mean, I, I think that would be depend on your perspective. Like, I don't imagine like Israelis in 50 years might think that. If there's Israel still around, who knows, right? You know, if, no, you know, that's, a, that's, the, that's entirely the, up to what happens. River to the sea. But, uh, That's entirely up to what happens uh, in the upcoming months or in the upcoming years. Obviously, right, right. You, you I don't. Know, I, I, yeah, Israel's obviously go to land to respond. back and, and land acknowledgments like America does to the indigenous population of Israel does end up wiping out the damn near entirety of Palestinians. It, it, it's, it's interesting to me. Like, okay, like so. So you you view Israel, the state itself, as unjustifiable, right? Like, like there's there's no way that the state should exist for you and our 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 is Dutch Father we can exist for you? It's what because of how it, it, it was Israel, uh, established Israel or and how it's established and how it exists in its current form in is absolutely unjustifiable. Yes. Israel is an apartheid state that is unjustifiable. Um in its current state. Absolutely. If Israel was not an apartheid state and in the nine million Israeli well seven million Israeli Jews and the uh two million Palestinian citizens of Israel if they were to offer the same level of protection, uh, same level of amenities, 
uh, and, and live in a pl uh, pluralistic democratic society and the Palestinians had a right to return in said society in the same way that all Jews around the world can go into Israel and get citizenship wherever they want and live wherever they want. If that, if the, if the circumstances were uh, identical, then yes, that it doesn't matter what you fucking call that state. I don't give a shit. As long as it's a state where Palestinians can live and, and thrive and have the same, uh, uh, can lead a life of dignity. Okay. I just wonder when could Israel ever have done that? in their history like there's just no there's no chance i mean israel they can't can do, do it they can't tomorrow they can't do it now they can't do it because they can. if they do they if can. they do if they if they do it now all all that hamas and, and iran and the people who are just dead set on getting people rid of of, of any kind of jew around in the area because they hate them that much okay can i can i just cut in real quick first of all iran utilizes hamas as a as a weapon against israel so if there was no the West, if there was yes. no apartheid then there would be no hamas and there would be no weapon to use against israel so that's number one number two uh, uh, you're wrong you're wrong about this on a, on a couple different fronts okay okay so let me let me go through it really quickly first of all israel has the capacity to end the apartheid tomorrow if it wanted to it had the capacity to end the apartheid yesterday it had the capacity to never even do an apartheid israel had the well, here's why i worry but they don't but the reason why they don't do it is not because of national security concerns that's a lie that they tell people mm -hmm. the reason why they don't do it is because they have demographic concerns Israel is an ethno state. It is not just mm -hmm. an apartheid state, but it is also a Jewish supremacist ethno state, right? Right. Um, and this is by design. This is literally the law. The law of the land in Israel mm -hmm. is that it is a Jewish supremacist ethno state. Yes. Where where there's two million Palestinian citizens of Israel who are not Jewish live it was, there, it was established and even that they way. don't yes. have the same fucking uh, rights yes. and liberties. So Israel at least came, bought up land, kicked all the Arabs out, and then it's like, not only just hired Jews. <laughs> Yes, it's yes, not yes, just yes. that they bought land. There's uh, there's uh, more to it than that. But right, right, my right. point but, is, um, there, my point yeah, is right now population. we are working off of the national security and demographics concerns of a group of incredibly far right, fascist, Jewish supremacist, ethno staters who want to continue maintaining an apartheid regime that is incredibly bloody, incredibly deadly, and does an October seven monthly almost on the Palestinian population. At least the past two months Here's have been numerous October 7th brought upon the Gazan mm -hmm. population. Well, here's my point. Okay. So my counterpoint, what I was trying to say uh, is like, say on October 8th, right? They had said, okay, we realize now after this attack that this isn't working. And so they open, they, they tear down the walls. Well, all, all they hear is violence works. They violence is good. As after the second infatada, that's what, what Hamas ran on. That's how they got elected into power. Is they ran on and said, "Hey, we got the Jews out of Gaza, who left us, you know." And they, they asked, you know, it's just um, they can't, they couldn't do it then, and they couldn't do it in, after the nineties. They tried the Clinton administration tried to negotiate with Hamas and and uh and with the Palestinian Authority and stuff. Like there's been good faith negotiations to try no. to be peaceful. But then there's also been this bloody crazy wrong stuff that has happened and, and I, I, I know i know that's such really no, this is, I'm, I'm packing it into a little small ball i realize no that, no but. no it's just you're misguided and it's fine this is a very common narrative that uh that i hear on a on a daily basis that the idea that like israel has never been able to find a partner in peace is is bullshit the two-state solution all the way from oslo down to the last uh the the last negotiation that happened wait are you listening still Mm -hmm. Okay. I got you. Has always been very fraught. Um, uh, Ghassan Kanafani once famously said, How can I negotiate with you when you have a sword to my neck? Right? Um, so, and this is actually identical to what Nelson Mandela had once said, where at, when Nelson Mandela was in prison, they asked him time and time again, If you renounce violence and communism, we will let you out. To which he replied with, how can you negotiate with me as though I am a man when you have me in chains? So this same principle existed for the ANC in South Africa, and the same exact principle existed for the Palestinians from the jump. The idea that the mm -hmm. Palestinians were able to neg negotiate with the occupying power, okay, with the occupying mm -hmm. power on equal terms is 
of course, not correct. It's still a right. coercive negotiation, and the results of which were, were shown time and time again to be coercive, that it was yeah. never in good faith. Because in that process, in that two-state solution that was supposedly held up as though this is like a real thing that Israel wants to do, when even Yitzhak Rabin, the original uh, uh, guy, ultimately said, we do not want to give Palestinians a full-blown nation, but something a little bit less than a nation, right? And in that mm -hmm. time frame, what happened? Something that Palestinians saw across the board. From the 90s onward, from the 90s onward, there was rapid expansion in the West Bank. In 1977, I believe, there was uh, 8,000 settlers living in the West Bank. Right now, there are 451,000 settlers living in the West Bank proper, and another, I believe, like 200,000 in East Jerusalem, totaling almost a million settlers living in the West Bank on occupied territory that Israel has no right, according to international law, to exist in, in the way that it does. The Palestinians in that, the Palestinians throughout that time have never had a standing military. The Palestinians do not have control over their own water. The Palestinians do not have control over their own uh, building structures. They, do not, they can't get permits to build water wells. Israel destroys their water collection. Uh, Israel destroys their rainwater uh, uh, supply. And then refuses to let them, uh, refuses to let them build desalination plants. Refuses to let them build wells, both in the West Bank and in Gaza as well. So there is no real partner in peace with a belligerent occupier of this sort. Do you right. understand? Yeah, yeah, I get that the negotiations would never be on equal footing, and not all Palestinians would be happy with any kind of agreement. But I still believe that any kind of agreement would have been better than no agreement. And it would have been a way towards peace. I mean, but it said it said the P, the PLA called for like you no know, mass protests and mass killings of of, of Jewish civilians. No, before. they didn't it's call just, for it's... mass killing of Jewish civilians. That's not true. The PLO very okay. famously I, been... the the PLO very famously actually gave up their arms to kickstart the negotiation process. Is a, a concept that was actually. Uh, popular. The, there were elements within the Palestinian resistance, of course, that always wanted to violently resist against the, the mm -hmm. occupying sure. force, and that's correct. Okay? That is correct. There were mm -hmm. always elements. But how oh, did yeah, those elements looking, yeah. thrive? How did those elements grow to the power and influence that they have? Hamas is the most popular it has ever been. How do we get here? That's the real question. We got here because the occupying power sets the standard of violence. Even Hamas itself, in the mm -hmm. early 90s, a couple of years after its inception, when it was an unpopular uh, group, okay? It was a very unpopular group at the time. Even so then, charity, they had right? a policy of not targeting Israeli civilians. They shifted their methods, and they shifted their policy to target Israeli civilians after the Baruch Goldstein massacre. That's when they said, all right, fuck it, we're, not, we're no longer targeting just the uh, military uh, we're not uh, only targeting the military apparatus, but we're actually going to try and kill Israeli civilians. Okay? So that, to me, shows that all of these tactics, these methods, and the violence that the occupied force has brought back in retaliation has happened as a consequence of, of, of the occupier evolving and the occupier becoming more and more belligerent, more and more violent in the daily maintenance of its apartheid regime. Yes, yes. The cycle of violence is, is a very real problem. And it's, it's, that's the, the main problem with sectarian violence. And it often ends with... I mean, this isn't sectarian violence. This is, like, th this is entirely different. This is an apartheid well, regime. Well, are, they, are they both Semitic? Or, uh, I mean, that, that, I that's know. like nobody, nobody broadly defines like Arabs and, and uh, Israelis as the same thing, even though they true. are. That's true. Um, like the the Israeli population being a this is not sectarian uh, uh, sectarian violence this is this is colonial settler colonial violence right 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 well what would you say like the Rwandan genocide was colonial violence as the Tutsis were a minority that was previously propped out by colonist occupiers to and, and it, with the intention to divide the populace uh, within Rwanda and so when the colonists left. The Tutsis were still kind of like, you know, in power. Well, eventually the genocide happened. And it was, you know, it, it's stuff like that, that is a, a sectarian violence. You know, it's just it's two people who are very much related 
and minor differences that are ex the, the 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 big differences or small differences. I don't know. I don't, there's some saying that I can't remember. Uh, but um, sectarian violence yeah. of uh, sectarian violence doesn't fit the bill in Israel, in my opinion, because uh, these aren't people that were like propped up within a caste system or a caste structure that was pre-existing. Palestine before uh, historic British mandate Palestine was a part of the Ottoman Empire. And within mm -hmm. that, there was no, there was no uh, uh, colonial power structure that put uh, Jewish people above uh, Muslims and and right. Christians. As a matter of fact, all Muslims, Jews, and Christians were historically on the same level under the Ottoman uh, under mm -hmm. the Ottoman Empire. So um, it's not the same. These are not like Jewish people that historically lived there and always were propped up by a colonial power to be in control. And dominate the region, and then oh, no. uh, yeah. once Not the colonial the same, power left, yeah, they came in and just started ripping everybody. It's, I mean, I don't know why we're uh, why we're getting yeah. lost in the we got in lost the in the weeds. It, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what the Don't definition is because I think you understand that it is completely unacceptable to maintain yeah. an apartheid state, right? Well, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think we've almost said about all we can say. I will say, uh, I will finish on uh, on this note. I, I was previously really, I was pro, I was really anti-Israel to the point where I got into it with like, you know, tw Jews on Twitter too, too. I was like, y'all, y'all are- uh, Brother, you can't. <laughs> Okay, listen to me. <laughs> no, no, that's, no, but because they're, they're Israelis, Israelis. I'm sorry, I would, but like they would, they would be like, um, you know, saying like, you know, uh, how the left is has a real, real, real problem, and I would be sitting there. And uh, you like, yeah, let me show you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I say like, no, it's Israel's really, it's treating the Palestinians is really bad. Y'all need to stop. This is really like, you know, the poor. Pal I was really pro Palestine to the point, you know, that I, I would, I would always confront these, these, these scientists. I would call them. And, but I didn't know Zionism, Zionism just meant that you believe Israel should exist, which I think Israel should exist just because it does exist now. And it's, it's been a while and it's, it's, it's there, you know? So I guess I'm a Zionist. And I, you know, I, I used to call people like that, like I would call people Gazano and stuff. And now I'm, now I'm it. So I, I'm kind of reevaluating all my conversations out on Twitter. I probably do gotta apologize to a couple people, dog. <laughs> but you know, Zionism is a concept. Zionism Elon, is a concept. Elon didn't like me. No, Zionism so. is a concept that's evolved into Israel's existence and how Israel exists. Uh, I mean, Einstein well, today, Einstein, a socialist who was propped up to potentially be the president mm -hmm. of Israel. Okay, um, or was it the prime minister? If I, I don't want to fuck it up. Anyway, regardless. Einstein today would be considered an anti-Zionist, despite the fact that he was considered a Zionist in the inception of the state of Israel. Einstein today openly had criticized what became Likud, as a matter of fact, like Irgun militias and, and many of the Zionist militias and their actions and how belligerent, how violent they had gotten. Uh, and and really? those That's criticisms cool. okay. right now would be, would be considered anti-Zionist. Einstein and his perspective would be considered anti-Zionist. So, no, Zionism does not mean, uh, you know, all of the people that live there uh, get to live there, and, and uh, or, or anti-Zionism does not mean that all of the people that live there need to be expelled forcibly. Noam Chomsky was a Zionist before Israel was founded. Yes, there are plenty of people. Gabor Mate was a, a, another Zionist before the inception of the nation-state of Israel. The understanding that, like, Jews deserve a, a nation-state is a valid one. The idea that Jews deserve an ethno-state built on top of land where billions of Palestinians live is not a valid idea. And unfortunately, it's less the former and more the latter uh, nowadays. Zionism today means you want to defend Israel, that Israel has a right to exist as an apartheid state in the current way that it exists. That's what it is. Nothing else. Nothing more, nothing less. And therefore, it is an invalid ideology. It is one that is inherently, it, it, incredibly fascist as well, too, because it's mm -hmm. built upon the mentality of Jewish supremacy. Right. Yes, yes, I, I, I fully support all of that you said, but I also believe that the surrounding Arabian states are one built on ethno states, uh, and what? there's no yeah. So the people that they're dealing with around them, will, the biggest be Arab ethno states in the region are America propped. I hope you know that. Like, yeah, uh, man, regions. True. true. The biggest Arab ethno states in the region are 
like the actual ethno states that where it's not so easy to get citizenship, which you still are able to, by the way, regardless. But ones where like they have at least some some semblance of like um, Israel has this as well, but uh, slavery of different sorts where uh, Israel, for example, refuses to pay you until you uh, leave in some instances in order to combat immigration from bad areas. But, uh, you know, Qatar has this. Uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE has a different form of this as well, where they bring in indentured servants, basically capture their passports or refuse to pay them until they leave or even outright deport them. OK, that mm -hmm. is those are those are uh, America's greatest allies in the region and not necessarily uh, reflective of the the broader, I guess, um, Arab majority, the, the broader Arab uh, structure in general. But most of these Arab countries in the way that we see them now are just uh, colonial projects that were designed in, in a way that is not dissimilar to how uh, England uh, or the British designed uh, Israel and Palestine right. as well. Right. Right. Yeah. Go but on they're on not, that. but they're not ethno yeah. states in the same way that like Israel is because you can fucking go to these countries with, uh, with ease and even uh, uh, go through their immigration process with ease. Many people don't want to do that because we fucked them up. But Arab majority does not, as a chatter pointed out, Arab majority does not mean it's an Arab ethno state. Sure, sure. Well, so we when you talk about a Jew, a Jewish ethno state in Israel, Israel is also not all Jewish, right? Are all, all Jews? There's there they have Arabs, Arabians that live in there, live in, in Israel. Okay, here's and, the, here's and the other one, races, no, right? no, no, it is it well, is I'm an ethno saying, state. Here's why. You want to know why it's an ethno state? I'll explain it to you. Because of the discrimination, easy. right? Because of the caste discrimination, right? No, not just the caste so, discrimination. No, I, no. Here, so I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I agree. Saudi Arabia is also an ethnic state, right? Because they also discriminate against other people, other workers, and they're American. Supported. I already mentioned yes. that, but that's not what I'm talking about. I would Again. say, but we are trying to pull away uh, in America's defense. I would say America has made a lot of mistakes, but underneath Obama and everything, we are trying to pull away from a lot of our partners. We are trying to pull away from Saudi Arabia. What? By, no, we're with not. Fracking. No, that's not true. <laughs> with fracking. Yeah. We're trying to get off Saudi Arabia's oil. No, brother, that's fracking. a lie. They told you in Texas, so you fucking are pro fracking. <laughs> no, no. It's Oklahoma that's getting fucked up by fracking. We don't well, do that. Had to, Oklahoma we got, we got stop it, Oklahoma had to stop because of fucking uh, earthquakes. But... Earthquakes? Yeah, yeah. That shit's fucking okay, listen, crazy. Listen, 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 listen. Sorry, listen, sorry, listen. Chad. Uh, this is, here, here's something important. Here's something important to understand first of all america's never pulled away from saudi arabia as a matter of fact we go back to saudi arabia uh hand and feet on the ground begging them to fucking uh, uh to 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 you know develop i mean uh to to increase the supply of oil uh oil barrels that's what joe brandon did recently that's number oh, yeah, one well, yeah. number two israel's not yeah. an ethno state for one reason or the other there are palestinian citizens of israel however what you have to remember is there are a lot of Mizrahi and Sephardi Jews in Israel. Those are Arab Jews for the most part, or Spanish Jews, but Arab Jews, specifically Mizrahi, is a, a category of, of uh, uh, Jewish people in Israel that are just Arab, that are from the Mena region, right? Jews mm -hmm. that are normally considered like Itamar Ben Gvir is, is Kurdish, is, is Kurdish Arab, and he's Jewish, so he is classified as a Jew under the Israeli demographics. However, he's actually Arab. There are millions of Arabs in, in Israel that aren't Muslim or Christian. They are considered full-blown uh, citizens of Israel. Palestinian citizens of Israel, unfortunately, however, are not. They do not have the same amenities. In, under, until 1967, they were under military occupation in the same way that the West Bank uh, Palestinians are, and after 1967, um, after 1967, the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the two million of them now, were actually given more amenities, and yet they are still constitutionally barred from being able to live where the fuck they want. For example, those are they they that is is uh, basically Jim Crow, like it's it's mm -hmm. Jim Crow under no uncertain terms. So those are the people that have the best amenities, like luxurious lifestyles in comparison to the West Bank Palestinians and, uh, and in comparison to the Palestinians living in Gaza. So think about that. None of yeah, that is yeah. appropriate. It's still no, an no, apartheid Jim Pro is very wrong, right? Yeah, that was very wrong. I would say the fact what made it really wrong was the fact that they were previously slaves and then they were quote unquote free and they were able to vote and then but not really and like, you know, it's all a show. And that was all really bad. Now, now, 
I can see Israel has some differences. I think we can see that that Israel is, is has been. So you're you're right. They're occupying force over a belligerent population. Now maybe not the whole population, but but some of them in there. No, the whole population. <laughs> because because you have to remember, brother, you have to understand. Like yeah. Palestinian citizens of Israel are also under uh, occupation. Just because they have the luxury to be able to go through the civil courts does not change the reality that they are also under no uncertain terms, still treated as second-class citizens. Sure, there's, like, a fucking Supreme Court guy that's an Arab. And I know that there are, like, some Bedouins that, uh, uh, or, or some Druze that uh, are in the Israeli military. Okay? Right. He, he just said Palestinians are belligerent, and you agree with him, by the way? No, he, I think he meant Israel is a belligerent occupier, not Palestinians are uh, belligerent. Well, no, I, call, I, call, I did call, uh, like, a belligerent population that's belligerent towards... Their what? force Israel and Jews. Yeah, it, it got lost. No, that's in the not, I don't agree with that classification at all. I I, I yeah, was yeah, being I charitable, and I thought you weren't saying that. No, no, no. So, so I was just saying. So, so when after the after the the war, where when and when when Israel occupied Gaza and the uh oh my God, I'm so tired. The Strip, um the like is 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 different than a, a population of like slaves brought over from that we brought over 100 years ago that we now live with and and that they're still we're still oppressing right like this is like a, a previously a the the enemy was here and now that now people from their nations are living here now they're trapped because their nations cut them off which is weird you know like I, like, are, you, are, you uh, trying to talk, are you trying to b- talk about Israel in terms of chattel slavery? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, yeah, I'm trying to, re- to where you related Jim Crow to Israel. I'm trying to say, like, to yes. point out the differences and what makes it which makes it a little difference and why I, I kind of can so, relate. Okay. Well, okay, why I, can, I can imagine sitting here and, like, you know, saying, like, um, like uh, I understand discrimination, I guess, against your are you previous... saying that are you saying that the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the treatment of the Israeli state against the Palestinian citizens of Israel does not resemble Jim Crow? Is that what you're trying to say? I said uh, not not completely. I was just pointing out the differences that makes it so different and how why I feel those differences matter. Uh, and it just matters to me because the, the the fact that the Palestinians and the 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 Arab nations all surrounding Israel's were previous war belligerents makes those makes those populations you can't just you can't you can't just like integrate those populations okay. and especially with they they don't share uh, here's, the same here's where you're wrong and here's what you're you, saying that is like kind of fucked up and I don't okay. know if you're like aware please, of this or please not. Please tell me. Yeah, I, I okay. I'm not. I'm, all I'm of Texas. the. Arab, <laughs> all of the Arab nations, not Arab, Arab nations, um, yeah, okay, sorry. are, are, they're not Palestinian. You understand that, right? Like, you have to understand that. Like, these are not all the same people, okay? They're not. They have their own interests. Egypt is a great example of this for, uh, as a matter of fact, like, Egypt is a, a, another American client state. Egypt does not have the best interest of the Palestinians at heart when it's uh, operating in the way that it does. Egypt is just Egypt has the best interest of whoever is leading Egypt and and what their interest is at heart when they make decisions. So when did when did the, Egypt the, become the, an American client state? I'm sorry, I just don't know. Uh, I would say probably around the 70s. Okay. Uh, and before that, but, it was. I mean, it's a it's a Cold War it's a Cold War calculation that uh, yeah. that America did not want uh, Egypt to continue its allegiance with the USSR and therefore turned Egypt basically into a client state. And now the Egyptian government is 100 percent, I mean, 100 percent a a government that was uh, a government that is by uh, design an American uh, aligned government. We prop up the Egyptian economy to the tune of billions of dollars. We give more money to Egypt, I think, than we do to Israel. It would not exist without our help in the way that it currently does. Okay. I would say but, Egypt but regardless, has, these are not, has, like, has they, been belligerent to Israel. I think. But but hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to 80s. understand, like what Syrians are doing, what Iranians are doing, what Iraq is doing, what Lebanese people are doing. Like none of this still justifies what Israel has done to the Palestinians and what it continues to do to the Palestinians on a daily fucking basis. That's my point. You're trying to take the long way home here to just say, like, well, Israel has uh, national security concerns. Israel has national security concerns, and that's why it's 
perfectly valid to maintain the apartheid structure is not. And a lot of Israel's security failures, both October 7th and every other fucking instance where Israel's security has ever been threatened, whether it be the Six Day War, Yom Kippur, whatever, whatever you want to talk about, is always been born out of Israel's actions against the Palestinian population that it has occupied. Does that make sense? Like it's never sure. Yeah, you can it's say it's been, all. It's always been a, a but that 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 puts it like all on one side. Like eventually, retribution it is, becomes it retribution is on one side because it is one sided. Because the apartheid is is a one sided endeavor. Like it doesn't. It feels weird to say it like that, but it is a one sided endeavor. You talked about Cuba. Like uh, the Cuban Revolution was very violent. The Cuban Revolution was very violent, but that violence was seen as is a. Uh, perfectly Just permissible because mm -hmm. that violence was conducted to topple and dismantle an American-backed dictatorship that was propping up uh, 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 sugar plantations and, and utilizing the island as a, as a, uh, as a colonial uh, vassal state for mm -hmm. American interests. So obviously in that situation that violence was permissible violence was permissible in the in the vietnamese operations against american soldiers violence is always permissible in in uh acts of of uh in in decolonial actions violence is of course going to be both moral and permissible that's why we have an international humanitarian law surrounding this precise thing that we just talked about you said the rule-based international order if we were following it then absolutely, fucking lutely are there uh, war criminals or, or those who have conducted war crimes in the Hamas leadership? Certainly, of course. However, if we were to look at Israel and Israeli governance and the Israeli military, and we were to look at war crimes and war criminals, uh, Israel has a shit ton more. That's for sure. Right. Yes, yes. And so, uh, sorry, I kind of lost the weasel there. You said a lot. But from what I generally got was... Uh, so this this world order that the, the only reason the war crimes exist is because the world order exists, right? So 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 the the, only, the West is the only ones who say like this is a war crime now, and we we include Africa in that. And yeah, and America has has historically been terrible, really bad, and and and, and violence against Amer American colonies on back then was completely justified and right because it was like an, we were like we were. We were evil we're evil people you know we were not going to be kind to those natives we weren't kind and and we still aren't we the, what's going on in hawaii and all that now there is still america has a lot to improve but i think we're also one of the only nations along with the european nations who who realize that and can see that now a lot of americans don't don't get me wrong a lot of americans are yeah i don't believe down i don't know international or, human rights is simply a tool that americans use to bully other countries, at which point we will always violate international rights. Okay, Iraq is a great example of this. We said Why Saddam would? had. We said Saddam has chemical weapons. We had given Saddam chemical weapons prior. We said Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. We have to stop that. Okay. Yeah. Why and then we went we into always... Iraq and did a shit ton more uh, uh, human rights abuses in Iraq than Saddam could have ever imagined. And as a consequence of that. Uh, ISIS was propped up. As a consequence of that, more death and more destabilization occurred. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died as a direct, not a direct consequence, but uh, it, with, with sanctions and also with our war, hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died, millions of Iraqis died, and tens of millions were displaced, both internally and also externally. This mm -hmm. is how the international rule-based order works, okay? The liberal... The liberal international order, this is how it works. We claim we care about these rules, but we never actually really care about it. We care about it only as far as we can use it to go and attack a fucking foreign adversary that we want oil from, for example, with, with respect to Iraq, or that we, uh, that we want to destabilize because right. they have I, democratically I say... decided to do socialism or nationalize their extraction industry or whatever the fuck they want to do. America is never operating on a on a moral basis. It has right. never operated very, on a moral basis. Yeah, we are very rules for thee, not for me, and world order. We are that, that's very true. 
we give rules to other people when we don't have any skin in the game, and it doesn't matter who us. When we have skin in the game, we let that one slide. It's okay, very, no, no, but we violated. Very... We violated ourselves. I'm saying to you mm, yeah, yeah, that well, these rules are not yeah. rules at all. These rules are not real rules at all. It's just made up so that we can justify going to war overseas, and then guys like you who could have a clear conscience otherwise look to that and kind of eat the propaganda a little bit and then end up, whether uh, inadvertently or w by realizing it, uh, defend America's actions by saying, well, who knows? The other side might be much worse. They're violating the rules. At least we have some rules. It's okay, not. Okay, yeah. It, right, it, that, right. that is the reason. That's the reason why you're mm -hmm. saying the things you're saying right now uh, after you know so much death and destruction that we have experienced over the course of the past 67 days where one of our allies have used our weapons over and over again to pummel relentlessly well, no, if I gave weight to, the, to like the, what the UN said and kind of all this stuff, and then I would be very like you know passing resolution, I get after resolution like, condemning Israel. And but it doesn't mean but, anything, um, so who cares? Right? Yeah, it doesn't mean. Yeah, it's all made up. It is. It is. So, so it's governments in, in general. It's all like you know we're all li lines on a map that gives dirt, that demands who, who, where our tax dollars go and who obeys who. It's all very made up. All human interaction is very just kind of you know. Yeah. Hey, pretend we're all Texans. Pew! Yeah, you know? remember, <laughs> this is this is also an important thing to remember. We don't yeah. even abide by the International Criminal Court. We pulled out of it in 2018. Mm -hmm. And before that, in 2002, I think it was 2002 or maybe 2003, where we passed a bill in the United States of America called the uh, Invasion of the Hague Act. So, like, there's never been an interest in fucking uh, defending uh, international rules at all. It's just simply a way to to get other people on board uh, mm -hmm. with our, our violation, clear-cut violation of international rules. So right. that's it. It doesn't mean yeah. anything. So I hope yeah, that, yeah, yeah. okay, well, we, we've, we've talked for quite a bit now. At this we point, have. So you're I got to right, move right. on and do more coverage. I okay. hope I was able to, I guess, change your mind on certain things. I don't know. If yeah, that... I, yeah, yeah. Can I just get one last thing? I, I will say that it doesn't have to be always america doesn't always have to be what it was in the past we as a population have the chance to improve we, we, we can do it together we, we just have to educate it away educate the hate away all right chat and hassan okay. thank you very much for having me on thank you for talking right. to me and you have actually uh, sway I, I was very very misaligned with my judgment against the against um the people up in, in Michigan and stuff like that. So thank you very much for talking to me. All right. Thank you for having an open mind and coming on. Bye, chatter. <laughs> Later, man. Peace. Okay. That was our first ever that was our first ever guest star feature. Oh my God. Everyone can say what they want, but I appreciate you talk taking the time to pull people back into reality and helping them out. Yeah. Um that was uh yeah, it's it's you know, that's the goal, right? I think it was useful to education show and chat how to talk to other folks. Yeah. Yeah, we did the split cord. It's been a while since we've done that. By the way, it's ironic because, like, the fucking UK ambassador to Israel literally told Sky News yesterday that a two-state solution is not going to happen. <coughs> They're getting real fucking horny with it, man. They're dropping all pretexts that, like, they give a shit. Um, They're going nutty mode. How is a normal chatter better to talk to than other creators with large audiences? Crazy. Wait, what? I mean, I have I have talked to other creators with large audiences too. What are you talking about? The only people that I the only people that I don't talk to are those who fucking have like an absolute psychopathic interest in not necessarily arriving at like Oh, you're saying how is a normal chatter better to talk to than like uh, the fucking Well, because the normal chatter does have an interest in learning usually. It's more productive because a normal chatter is just like, yeah, maybe I'm a little out of my depth on this. Other people come in with an agenda. Other content creators come in with an agenda. And that agenda usually is to just cut videos. Like, even if they don't have an ideological disagreement with me, they might even fucking like me in other circumstances. But YouTubers have fucking brain disease. You know what I mean? Like, content creators, myself included, have fucking straight up brain disease. Where it doesn't matter. They, they could love me. But if it makes them money to hate me, they're going to go in the hate me direction. That's it. Holy fuck, just when I thought Bang, you very couldn't get any worse. All right, we're going to move on from uh, Israel stuff. There's no room for disciplinary action against fighters who give their lives for the people of Israel in the heart of uh, hell in Janine. And their whole sin is saying Shema Israel in a place. 
Oh, he's fucking defending the dudes who went in and raided a mosque in Janine. Bro, Israel is going nutty mode with it in the West Bank. Yeah, it, it, this is like completely unacceptable. They went into a fucking mosque where people were praying. Here. Um, they went into a mosque where people were praying and literally fucking said uh, and, and started uh, singing. They raided a mosque and, and, and started singing in a place that has become one of our main centers of terrorism against Israel. We need to give our powerful fighters full support and not get involved in disciplinary proceedings and matters we are, that are not supposed to concern the IDF and certainly not in wartime. Here. Soldiers acting as Israeli army codes of conduct with the religious establishment. The soldiers were immediately removed. And Itamar ben Gavir is fucking uh, criticizing the removal of said soldiers. Bro, bro, listen to me. Listen. Like, before you go, oh, what's the big deal? Uh, and, and a lot of chatters will do this shit, okay? A lot of chatters will be like, what's the big deal? Who gives a fuck? And it's like, dog, it's a big deal to the fucking people who believe. Like, it's fu so fucked up. You're desecrating a religious site. What are you, ISIS? And yes, I will say it. Israel is isis real, okay? These motherfuckers behave like ISIS. No wonder they've also aligned with other Salafist movements like Al-Nusra in Syria in the past. Okay? That shit's fucking unacceptable. Watch Ice Israel be your next cancellation, brother. I'm wishing you good luck. No, man. Ice Israel is fucking real. It's more real than Israel. Straight up. You can't do that shit to a mosque, brother. Get the fuck out of here. Like, the, the opposite, the inverse of it is true, too. You can't do that to a fucking synagogue. Fuck you mean. It's gross. Anyway, here is the Israeli ambassador. Two state solution? What you is there did? still a chance for a two state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realize the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build but a but new does one. Does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own? Does, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realized they on the 7th of October. Though? The answer is absolutely no, and I'll tell you why. Well, then because how can there the be moment, peace? In, no, how can there be peace in the reason there is no peace Israel is because the Palestinians... How can, with, without offering Mark, a state to Palestine, how Mark, can there be peace in Israel? Israel knows today, and the world should know now, the reason the Oslo Accords failed is because the Palestinians never wanted to have a state next to Israel. They want to have a state from the river to the sea. So the two-state so solution is dead. Why are you obsessed with a formula that never worked, that created this radical formula. people in the other side? Why are you obsessed with that? Fascist, pig, fuck you. All right, here's a this pooty poo. Oh, back to the fucking goat, dude. My favorite uh, politician of all time. Never done anything wrong, famously. Pooty poo. He did, he did the classic, like, seven-hour bonanza with, like, Collins and shit. Morning, President Putin presiding over an end of year question and answer session. His first since his full scale invasion of Ukraine 22 months ago, vowing to fight on. The peace will come when we reach our goals that you have mentioned. And coming back to the goals, they remain unchanged. And so we have other, other, other opportunities either to come to terms or to, to have our way compellingly. An embattled President Zelensky in Europe for talks over money and support after meeting President Biden earlier this week and failing to persuade Congress to approve billions more for Ukraine. NBC News invited to Putin's rare news conference, Russia's autocrat looking to turn a page despite the continued war in Ukraine and opposition leaders and journalists in Russian jails. This morning, a Russian court extending the pre-trial detention for American reporter Evan Gershkovich to January the 30th. He was arrested last March on allegations of espionage, which he denies. Putin still keeping his stance with the West. We see the fundamental... You don't ask him, Putin calls you for the Q&A? Yeah. Dude, it's kind of wild. It's kind of wild how, like, big homies out here fucking being like, Russia has a right to defend itself. I'm surprised you are 100% on the side of Ukraine in this conflict. I'm wondering what your views are on the coup d'etat, the bombardments of the Donbass and Luhansk. I've talked about all this shit, brother. Okay. Ultimately, February 22nd, 2022. Okay. That's it. That's when Pooty Poo dropped the ball in a gigantic way. Okay. No. It's just not like, 
It's not even remotely, remotely acceptable. No fucking shot. Or 24th? The 24th, not 22? Fuck. Fuck! Shit. I got the day wrong. As a leftist, you should support the Putin because the West is bad. Yeah, here's the thing. Like, I can support certain aspects of, or I can, I can shit on certain aspects of, like, Western involvement in Ukraine while simultaneously also stating un, on a, no uncertain terms that, like, Russia's invasion of Ukraine is completely unacceptable. Just, like, being annoying about nuance and being like, you're either with us or, or without us, fuck you. <laughs> Goddamn dumbass Americans behaving like fucking piglets, which is ironic. They behave like little fucking hogs, but they do it while using progressive language. So they're like, wow, this is song guy. He's a real tanky. And then they do the, you're either with us or without us bullshit. Conditions to establish full-fledged relations with them. So far, we see none. The U.S. says it believes Russia still aims to overwhelm Ukraine. Back home next year, Putin will stand for election after 23 years in power. Whoa. Veteran politician Boris Nadishkin. Yeah, dude, Putin is going to stand for election, dude. Yeah, totally. What is the... I mean, he is, but like, election. Plans to stand against him. He Not going to lie, I think Putin will win. Don't fucking... Don't say it, dude. No shot. We don't know. He opposed Russia's so-called special military operation and openly says it's time to move on. It's dead end. Dead end. Ukraine's frozen conflict feels far from Moscow's... Meanwhile, Ukraine disbanded all the left parties and canceled all elections. Yeah, I wonder why the, the terms are different. Come on, man. One country is literally invaded and fucking annexed. The other country is doing the annexation. So yeah, one country, the country that's doing the annexation can continue having elections, just like America over the course of the past fucking 20 years during its war on terror was able to conduct elections over and over again, whereas the countries that were invaded were not able to. I hope, uh, you know, that clarifies it for you. Like, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Zell Disney by any means, okay? Uh, not his acting and, and not the way that he has acted uh, in this process. But the idea that, like, the idea that they could fucking hold elections normally is, like, half the fucking country, but, like, a person, a, a non insignificant proportion of the country is annexed by Russia. How the fuck are we doing that? Outlawing the leftist parties is bullshit. It's like, oh, they're Russia collaborators, yada, yada, yada. That's fine. That's, like, typical nonsense. So you know, Putin does it all the time, too. Um, yeah, no, the left-wing party ban was way before the election discussions. I know, I know, dude, I know, I know. I can't believe the fucking country that is invaded has behaved in an undemocratic uh, fashion. Yeah, I know. Of course they have. They're also pushing for, uh, conscription with, like, uh, worse age boundaries, too. Except none of it fucking matters, because they're invaded. Snow-covered streets, where Russians are in holiday mood. It's wartime economy, growing despite sanctions. Russian versions of stores have replaced Western brands. Reebok is now Sneaker Box. Starbucks, Stars Coffee. Timberland, now Bootswood. Many people now concerned <laughs> more about life back home than on the front line. While Putin appears undaunted. And Hoda, a New York Times reporter just asked President Putin about the jailed Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich, asking whether it is true that there was an offer of a deal that Moscow refused. President Putin saying, we have not refused it, we want to have a deal, but it should be satisfying for both parties. Hoda? All right. Keir Simmons Force there in Russia. Keir, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss... Cola Coca. Putin talked to his double today? Wait, what? Вы сказали, что вот ваш коллега да находится из австрийского, да? Какого-то там издания, не знаю. Ну, австрийский гражданин. Австрийский гражданин, да? Wall Journal. А. А, окей, я понял. Находится в тюрьме без суда и следствия. И в то же время That's kind of wild, bro. That is fucking wild. To just like, dude, imagine being in the room with Pooty Poo. And just straight up asking him a question to be like, I know a lot of that is just like allowed already. Like that's, you know, that it's all like a, a preset. It's scripted. But even then it's like, I'd still be scared. I, I would still be like, if I, if I say something that is received in a way that I did not think it would be received, like I could be fucking Prigozhin, like, you know what I mean? I know all the pro uh, guys. The questions are pre-authorized. Yes, they are. 
They are pre-authorized, but it doesn't matter. What if the public perceives it in a way that, like, you know, what if the public perceives it in a way where where they think you're, like, shitting on him and then they support you? If you call him pooty poo before saying what you're going to say, you can get away with anything, baby girl. Yeah. Yeah. Так что сказать, что это без суда и следствия, некорректно. Что касается возможных, возможных, возможной выдачи этих граждан на родину, ну, вы говорите, почему бы им не вернуться на родину? <coughs> почему бы им не совершать, не, не совершать правонарушения на территории Российской Федерации? Мы не то, чтобы... От... She's like, thank you for owning me, sir. ...казались их возвращать. <laughs> Мы не отказываемся. Мы хотим договориться... И эти договоренности должны быть взаимоприемлемыми и должны Um I think he doesn't read from a prompter. I think he knows what the questions are and he has already prepared his answers or whatever. But bro, he's been president for 23 years, dog. You think he doesn't know how to fucking respond on the spot? He's been dog. He has been the leader of Russia for the same time frame that these motherfuckers have been alive, some of them, okay? It's just like, he's so, it's so easy at that point. You're just, you also can, you know, kill people too. So there is probably a little bit of a, I would, I would suspect there's a little bit of danger that a lot of people are familiar with to be like, I'm going to do my very best not to say something silly. Устраивать обе стороны. У нас на этот счет контакты есть с американскими партнерами. И диалог идет на этот счет. Он непростой. He's just smart. You're being childish. No, I mean he is smart. Yeah, not smart enough not to know the fucking you know maybe you shouldn't have invaded Ukraine, but. Но э, я сейчас не буду вдаваться в детали, но в целом мне кажется, что мы говорим на понятном для друг друге для друг друга языке. Надеюсь, что мы найдем решение. I think that's a fake Putin. He's been replaced. The real one is gone, dude. I love. I love liberalism when it comes to like foreign adversaries and the way we analyze them. It also, it's like such a fun, it's such a fun take because it's a very familiar one to someone like myself because the hope that you have inside of that sentiment is one that I've heard a million times over from Turkish people about Recep Tayyip Erdogan. I mean, he has been winning. He embarrassed the U.S. of their own game. Like how dumb? Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy how he embarrassed the United States in their own game by literally solidifying NATO and and losing two other nations to NATO as well. Like one border nation and, and another one on top of that that joined NATO or is joining NATO. It's so sick. 500,000 dead. Fucking masterful gambit, sir. <laughs> like... Masterful gambit, sir. Thank you for shredding half of our fucking military equipment, showing the rest of Eastern Europe that you're somehow simultaneously both a danger because you're fucking manic, but also not a danger because you can't e even uh, successfully finish an operation in Ukraine. Masterful gambit. Can you please take turns to roast Zelensky? I believe it's his turn now. Brother, I don't, I feel bad. I, I, I feel bad roasting Zelensky. I'll be honest. You watched. You watch Zelensky for the past two days. Come on. Like, I can't I, I can't make fun of him more than than what how he has like denigrated himself so far. Dude, ever since October 7th, Zelensky has been a broken man. Okay? Like making fun of Zelensky at this point is like making fun of a, a cancer baby. Okay? Shit's shit's about to end any moment. You know what I mean? They're like, <coughs> yeah, I'm not gonna bully him. It's a cancer baby who they keep fucking trotting out to literally advocate for all of the other babies to have more baby food because he's about to die. That's the worst part. Because, like, he literally has to unconditionally offer support to Israel, America's ally, an extension of America, while Israel has, one, refused to give Ukraine uh, the Iron Dome interceptors, which, by the way, isn't even entirely Israel's. It's America's Iron Dome interceptors. Israel simply says... Fuck no. Israel, which has continued its relationship with Russia throughout that entire process as well, okay? Zelensky has had to fucking sit there looking like a mega-wish kid and be like, actually, it's perfectly chill that Israel has done all these things. I love Israel. Israel is actually kind of like the, 
the Ukraine in the situation, <laughs> please. And then what has America done for that wonderful e experience? What has America done for that wonderful uh, uh, deal for Zelensky? Oh, that's right. They took all the fucking dumb bombs that like he needs and given it to Israel directly on his face. He came to America to beg for billions of dollars of weapons. And literally one hour before that, America announced that they were doing an emergency authorization to give fucking the remaining artillery shells or whatever the fucking Israel. That's crazy. That's crazy that you sit there and you're just like, Israel has a right to defend itself. <laughs> I'm so glad that America is giving all of the remaining, you know, artillery shells and tank shells to Israel. It's perfectly fine. Yes, we will continue privatizing all of the remaining state facilities. It's cool. What? Zelensky humiliated Putin on the world stage? Ukraine army is making Russian army look like pendejos? Wagner over Putin? What? The way Wagner marched onto Moscow like they owned the place? Putin was in shambles? Bro, what happened to Wagner? What happened? Prigozhin is dead. Wagner is operating in fucking uh, African gold mines again. Like, also, you're literally saying, like, you know, these guys are, they're not great. Like, Wagner, not exactly great people. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Russia so much. <laughs> I love the, the most psychopathic Merc force that they have full of Nazis. <laughs> my man, my man's like, nah, dude, <laughs> that's the one I like. Those are the guys I like the most. Evan's ordeal has now stretched on for over 250 days. His life has been put on hold for over four, for over eight months for a crime he didn't commit. Although Evan appeared as sharp and focused as ever today in the courtroom. It is unacceptable that Russian authorities have chosen to use him as a political pawn. As the holidays approach, our thoughts even, are with Evan. I didn't even know was a U.S. ambassador to Russia. What the fuck? And Paul Whelan. <laughs> Paul Whelan. They're saying his uh, espionage conviction that he and his family are, are saying is bogus. <laughs> Might go ban for ban with the Ukrainian treasury just to fuck with Zelensky? Don't do that. All right, we're, we're skipping the fucking impeachment shit. Um, Zelensky should just go mask off and be like, yo, we actually need arms to fight an actual war, not civilian population and, like, some other allies. First of all, that would be even worse. Are you out of your fucking mind? Israel would destroy... Oh, dude, Israel would pop off so hard on on Del Disney. All right, let's watch, uh, let's watch Kai Sinat, who had my favorite artist, Nicki Minaj, on. What? I had, huh? Is that really your name? Kasana, yes, that's my name. Why? What do you mean, why? Sana? We got smart water. We have no, liquor. Because I don't, I'm not. We have getting... liquor. I'm we not... have orange juice. You're yelling, young man. We have... Young man? Yeah? You're yelling. Oh, we we have a uh, Capri Sun? I want alcohol. Let's see what you got. Pour some alcohol in a, in a, in a plastic cup that's, okay. that's clean. Yeah, of course. And yeah. and a little and a lot of juice because I'm not an alcohol person, but I might need it dealing with you because you are very annoying. Um, I'm okay. annoying. Kai, Tumbo, put the internet off me, please. What do you mean I'm annoying, man? What? It's kind of wild that Kai Sinat is like hanging out with Nicki Minaj on like equal terms. It it, it is a it is a wild moment. Like I'm out here fucking serving three minute ab breaks at the top of the hour. And this motherfucker's, like, hanging out with Nicki Minaj. You know what I mean? Think about that. I mean, it's cool because, like, it, it elevates the platform, I guess, right? Like, it puts the platform on, a, 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 on more legitimate terms. Stream peaked at, like, 350K. It was a wild stream. Yeah. You hang out with chatters on equal terms. Yeah. He hangs out with Nicki Minaj. I hang out with chatters. What the fuck? What is my life, dude? <laughs> what is happening? Here's a three-minute ad break now, by the way. You got on. You just try to kick me in my face? I thought we was teammates. Good fit today. And you smell good. What you got on? Pink Friday too. You like how I did that? <laughs> Pink Friday! 
Why you making that face? Son? I'll do what the fuck I want. Okay, you right. Type shit. Okay, can you explain to the people? Um, Yo! She been all in my TikToks and she's so fucking funny. Yeah. I love Nicki Minaj as well. Please, Barbs. Don't yell at me. Which celebrity would you most want to have on your stream? Oh, uh, I don't know. Remember when you went to war with her? Hilarious. I never did that. You're a liar. Shut up. I never did that. I never went to war with her. I would never do that. I love Bill Burr. I would love to have Bill Burr. I mean, I would obviously, when I'm looking at Nicki Minaj, I can't say anyone else. Nicki Minaj, I would love to have Nicki Minaj. Okay. And then after that, maybe Bill Burr. You little jealous, bro. Admit it. No, I'm not jealous of, of not being able to have Nicki Minaj on the stream. Are you fucking nuts? That would never happen. Here's better twerk and ass action. What do you mean? Guys, 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 enlighten you Twitch US chat, guys, guys, do, do not judge it, okay? Hello, exit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. say smile, smile. Good. hold up, I still that, hold up, hold up, Is he even twerking? Like, I can't tell. You happy now? You happy now? Okay, I'm done now. I'm Bro, XQC's got the inverse ass, dude. He's got an inverse ass. How is that even possible? <laughs> I said tweaking, not twerking. True. He's got the Hank Hill butt. That chicken butt. Bro, build like a parenthesis. Bro, people are like, oh, you do it. You do it. Like, you can't handle it, man. You can't fucking handle this ass. Shut the fuck up. Everybody's like, oh, you do it. You do it. You don't even know. You don't even know how this shit works. Like, it will kill you. Okay? You can't handle all this ass, man. You can't fucking do it. I mean, there's videos out there. You can see it. The Yard Boys cooked you in the last pod. Yeah, I heard. Is there anything fun? Nicki Minaj going ham on Twitter because her album didn't sell. That's probably why she went on the Kai Sinat thing, too. Um, imagine them convincing you that PF2 is doing 205 if Queen lost 12 hours and did 185. I have a bridge to sell you. People love this album. Breaking Spotify. But if you control the Grammy Super Bowl, Billboard, Radio, Dick Eaters like Smelly It. Paid blogs and paid radio personalities and voila, but tomorrow we feast. I agree. I think she killed it. They're so mad. They said 170, 190, knowing it was 200K already. I agree with my queen, Nicki Minaj. They're mad. They're mad because they're bad. Because she's the best. Nobody touches her. <laughs> That's crazy. Our queen made Barbie core have and eliminated Kissinger from this earth. In her name we slay. Yes. Where's the... Wasn't your rage there too? I've seen this video already. It's like killed my brain a little bit. Pantana's review of Pink Friday. Hey everyone, roll. No. We're on this one. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Starting off with the album with the Billy Eilish Nightcore samples. Downright criminal. I was cracking the fuck up. Oh, brother. Oh, no. I didn't say that. I, I disavow. I don't know this bald fuck, okay? He's Italian. Ew. Has anyone ever seen me hang out with an Italian man? I don't fucking... I don't know. I disavow. I disavow. Who is that guy? Why did you guys show me that? Ew. I discovered the best Chad Vice. Oh, okay. Okay. We got these right here. Okay. So they go... So it goes boom. Do I max my attributes out and go max? Oh my gosh. Oh my. Okay, here we go. What's going go 14? That's crazy. GG, it's over for me. The tall n is over with. Tall n done. Bro, that's Ron DeSantis. That's literally. Oh my God, he's doing the Ron DeSantis. He got the Ron DeSantis sevens on, dude. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Hey, hold on. I'm gonna put my fan. You got, oh, you got a charger? Bro, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> you got a charger? You look taller, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo, I charge him. Nah, you look dumb too right now. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. What's up, bro? <laughs> what's happening? Come on, bro. Give me a hug. No. Yo, what's wrong with him? Nah, for real, bro. Come here, bro. <laughs> You're my dog, bro. Oh, bro. I grew up, bro. I got hype boosters. Oh my god, bro, that shit was tripping me out. Bro. Hey, bro. Damn, bro, he's so phantom tax. He's so skibbity toilet. <laughs> yo, no, no. Yo, 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 you can't. Yo, yo. What's the word? <laughs> yo, what's the word, B? <laughs> yo, what's the word? Yo, you look scary, though, bro. No, bro, but look at the difference, though. Like, you're all. Yo. This is crazy! Nah, bro. I will Wait, Phantom is like around Kai's height? Really? I always thought he was like taller. That shit was scary for a second, bro. I was Yo. nervous. Yo. Let me know if you want something, bro. Nah, you can take these back. Fuck that. You don't want them? <laughs> that's crazy that he fucking... That's crazy that he's like 5'7 and he was like that... God damn, he's fucking built like a Mack truck. Nah, show us your shoes right now. I'm not wearing shoes. Five five to five eight is still five eight though. I mean, what are you doing? Oh yeah, 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 Dude, come on, dude. He's speaking at a different he's his voice. That that's not what he sounds like normally. Yeah. 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 Uh, Josh. I think it's Josh. I think it's Josh. <laughs> oh no way, dude. He deepened his voice. Wait, I gotta do it again. So I've known Josh for two going on three years. Mm -hmm. When I first started streaming, he was like one of the first streamers that I met. Mm -hmm. And from then on, we've been really close to him. He's, he's a good he's a good guy. I don't understand. Kai Sinez has only been streaming for three years. That's so skibbity toilet. That's so phantom tax. That's crazy. I can't I need to stop saying that. Oh my god, it's this I'm fucking I'm thirty two years old. The fuck's wrong with me? I'm fifty five years old. I need to stop. That is pretty skibbity though. It's pretty skibbity toilet. I'm 68 years old. That's fucked up. Three years got so big so fast. Yeah. It's jokes now, but you will say it before. Listen to this Nikki tip. I feel it's going to happen next. Really? I will tell. Sweetheart. Be honest. Okay. So, boom. Like. You ain't got no drinks for me, boy. Like, that shit is mad tacky. If I was if I was the girl and I came here and it was like, and you ain't say after five minutes, hey, girl, can I get you something to drink? Oh, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. He was drinking a little bit. Oh God, nineteen forty-two. Are you slow? Huh? What? You haven't offered me anything to drink. Oh, um. I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen next. Really? Oh my God, bro! I haven't laughed this hard in so long. I'm forty-two and I know the life. Oh God, see, this is what I mean. I'm appealing to this meme though. What is this? People born in 1995 are turning 50 next year. Let that sink in. Okay, dude. I hate these fucking memes. Australia is now dunking on the U.S. I feel like Americans have got to stop freaking out about Australian and Australian wildlife. We don't have puddle gators. Jesus Christ. Puddle gators. This is a full circle moment for Rich because his first video ever was him reacting to Nicki Minaj. 19. Oh, 19. Okay. 19. Yes. I think. And, and this is... Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, I remember this. It's good. Um, so I've seen this video before. What's popping in social media right now is Nicki Minaj. She dropped a new song called Black Barbies. I'm pretty sure that's the beat um, from Black Beatles. You know that song? Yeah. We're going around all over the place with the mannequins challenging Yo, this shit. is legendary yeah, right now, bro. Let's see what she's about. Let's see what she's cooking. <laughs>
definitely fucked up. <laughs> hey! I think I kind of had it. Can I, can I have some Vaseline? I'll be eating my, my, um, my... Is that clean? Yeah, yeah, it's clean. Heck yeah. You don't even need to Wait. do that, gang. Wait, play it, finish playing the... Oh, okay, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, try it. Enough said, enough said. Uh -huh. It's not even so strong, it's like you can get the party. I love it. I love it. Young Kyler's are my brother and I hate it. That's not Kai, man. That's Rage. That's Young Rage. How would I know if this is Libe in live? Yeah, he has 104,000 subs. Kirby Enthusiasm is ending with season 12, which premieres February 4th on HBO and Max. The 10 episode season will conclude with the series finale on April 7th. Larry David says, as Curb comes to an end, I will now have the opportunity to finally shed this Larry David persona and become the person God intended me to be. The thoughtful, kind, caring, considerate human being I was until I got derailed by portraying this malignant character. That's bullshit. I think the saddest part about it is that, I mean, he is a, a massive lib, right? Like, isn't he a huge lib? I feel like he, uh, he, I love him. I love him a lot. I think he is a phenomenal comedian. I think he's a phenomenal comedy writer. George Costanza is like, Literally one of the greatest characters of all time. Okay? But he definitely is a fucking huge lib. <sighs> I don't even care about the... I don't even personally care about the, the, the FTX shit. Good Lord, ban private equity. A very important message from private equity giant Blackstone. We buy assets and successful companies and then saddle them with debt. Use them as collateral. Then we turn around and we make them bankrupt. But by that point, we have already assured massive triple X returns to our real customers, the shareholders. Uh. Uh. It's like one of the best things, uh, honestly, I mean, money's not zero anymore. You know what I mean? It's, it ain't cheap to buy money any longer. So I don't know how the fuck these guys still operate in the way that they do. This right here is what kills me. It destroys my soul. Fucking Blackstone competing against motherfucking homeowners and for real estate. Why is it taking place? I'm out. It was nice knowing you. Bye, chat. They had a dream of quick ascent. Now a trillion under management. We look for market mega trends, best in life sciences. Get ahead of AI, always know what to buy. Get our brands, you can tell. Our superpower is our scale. Great returns for institutions, and I love solutions. Stay calm, stay positive, never give up. Never give up. We don't give up. Helping build wealth and security, a name you can trust. Not to be confused with BlackRock. They don't like they do buy assets. They do not make them better. It's so stupid. Please fire the consultant responsible for doing this. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's kind of weird that they have like SNL, like they, they've made like a SNL parody of like what they do, but what they do is genuinely fucking devastating. I wish Putin would nuke us. <laughs> Blackstone laid off 60% of our company. Yeah. Did they also, did they also dump a shit ton of fucking debt onto it? And then uh, eliminate redundancies. It's great. This tour rolls 
on. Blackstone and BlackRock are different com different companies. What do you mean? I know. What are you talking about? I, I know. What are you? Why are there so many things that should be satire being done unironically? I feel like I'm schizophrenic. Bro, why are you so hard on the Blackstone Griddle Company? Can you bring up the handy chart again? Yes. BlackRock is an investment firm. Blackwater is a private mercenary army, which is no longer named Blackwater, but it was, and they had to change it multiple times. Blackstone is private equity. Bridgerock is an investment firm. Bridgewater is an investment firm. Bridgestone is tires. Bridgestone. In Turkey, we have Bridgestone. Yolo no bilid. That was like, a, I still have that in my head. I still, that's a commercial jingle that's still stuck in my head. It's great stuff. And by that, I mean it's not great stuff at all. It's actually really bad stuff and really devastating. Naughty Dog is canceling Last of Us multiplayer. Another Sony L. Okay, I'm going to play this song while I go pee. It deserves to be heard. Sad that there's no muscly girls in here. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, sure, I like to joke around and talk about how, oh, I'm it's strong so women all the time, but that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls, really witty girls, singing ditty girls. I like the licky girls with the nice thighs. I like a good chest, no matter what size. I like the belly folds. I like the six packs, really tall queens and the short stacks. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls. Yeah, I just really like girls. Sad that there's no muscly girls in here. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, sure, I like to joke around and talk about how, oh, I'm strong women all the time, but that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls, really witty girls, singing ditty girls. I like the licky girls with the nice thighs. I like a good chest, no matter what size. I like the belly folds. I like the six packs, really tall queens and the short stacks. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls. Yeah, I just really like girls. Sad that there's no muscly girls in here. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, sure, I like to joke around and talk about how, oh, I'm strong women all the time, but that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls, really witty girls, singing ditty girls. I like the licky girls with the nice thighs. I like a good chest, no matter what size. I like the belly folds. I like the six packs, really tall queens and the short stacks. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls. Yeah, I just really like girls. He just really likes girls. What? Let's do it one more time. One more time. One more Sad time. Sad that there's no muscly girls in here. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, sure. I like to joke around and talk about how... Oh, Wait, no, no, come on, come on. Uh, you, you, you don't just love muscle girls, do you? Come on. I, you like muscle girls, but you don't just like muscle I'm girls, strong right? Strong women all the time. Yeah, you love strong women, but that's not but the that's only... that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls. Oh, really my God! girls, singing ditty girls. I like the licky girls with the nice thighs. I like a good chest, no matter what size. I like the belly folds. I like the six packs, really tall queens, and the short stacks. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls. Wow. 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 No way. He likes all girls? No way. That's crazy. <laughs> this is fucking hilarious that people people went and were like, this video was created by Joe Cat and posted on their channel on the 3rd of April, 2021. Because <laughs> Claire Penis posted this and said, just made this video. Let me know what you think to torture people. So what girls does he like again? Don't. He's getting, has he getting death threats for this? Is this insane? <sighs> what, quick question. What kind of girls do you like? Is that what you're saying? Quick question, what kind of girls do you like? Well, sure, I like to joke around and talk about how, oh, I'm strong women all the time, but that's not the only girls I like. I like big girls, pretty kitty girls, really witty girls, singing ditty girls. I like the licky girls with the nice thighs. I like a good chest, no matter what size. I like the belly folds. I like the six packs, really tall queens and the short stacks. From the mild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them round girls. Don't ask me what kind of girls I like, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. After the Claire Penis posting this, one of the animation fans who was mad at me sent me this cylinder, this weird cylinder, pretty cool. <laughs> Don't put your hand over it. <sighs> anyway, um, <sighs> so can we watch depictions of explicit animated naughtiness to criticize and educate? No, um, I think play, pay money Wubby got fucking banned for doing that. I don't know who Mr. GG is, but uh, apparently Steven Seagal wrote his own movie, and I, I'm a little worried because I don't know who this guy is. Thoughts on this analyst that keeps popping up with so an Oxford on professor YouTube? was at a loss for words about a UN veto of a ceasefire in Gaza with the question who can stop this so I looked up the professor's website no we're not doing this no more no more Israel Palestine stuff for today
Did you see Will reveal Tifa's titties on stream? Oh, Jesus. Mr. Gigi makes great vids. I mean, I don't know. I haven't I haven't asked uh, permission, so I don't know. If I can watch his video, especially because it's a new one, you know what I mean? It just came out. I do love, I do personally love uh, Steven Seagal, as you guys know. What the fuck? Why do I get, like, the dumbest shit? I get the dumbest shit on my fucking main page. Um, Steven Seagal wrote a good song about liking girls. We need to listen to that. No. No, we don't. Oh, by the way, I realized that I actually have not played Outlast Trials. Saw a video on Twitter, Palestine Kids having a movie night, and it was Angry Bird. Wait, really? Men should be allowed to be gay about pussy? <laughs> That's funny. True. No matter what size, I like the belly folds, I like the six packs, really tall queens. I did not watch I Did a Thing put a Belize on a car yet. No, I did not. Dude, I, I can't watch more I Did a Thing videos, honestly, because it, I just get very sad, and I want to I wanna go to, I want to go to Australia. Johnny Harris came out from Switzerland in their guns. <laughs> or not, um. What? what just happened? Zurich is beautiful. It's also apparently the most expensive city to live in. Kind of Switzerland. And there's a big festival going on. Everyone has the day off. They're all gathering to have a good time to celebrate guns. It's a shooting competition for teenagers, and they've been doing this for hundreds of years. Hey, we are going to shoot the Wearing deodorant. Didn't we watch this? We used to just be bored. I'm pretty sure we watched the Sigma Male content farms, no? Um, what's it like to be streaming on the softcore porn network now? I don't know. Ask your mom. She streams on the hardcore porn network. Fucking got him. Um, there was a there was a thing that I was gonna watch that I forgot to watch, and it was on the docket. How you going? You I know what's always annoyed this. me about being Australian, and everyone around the world keeps making fun of us for it, that we don't have the ability to shoot fast projectiles out of a moving vehicle. But today I finally can, as oh, Clash of Clans asked TikTok. me to make this expo from the game that can shoot a two kilo arrow over six hundred feet, all while moving on top of my car. All right, it turns out I'm not the first to do a sponsorship for Clash of Clans. And ancient civilizations like the Romans and French copied their expos from the game and made them out of wood using primitive technology. But they had a funny way of pronouncing expos. They called them bli blisters. And I was gonna copy their designs, but as far as I can tell, they were really, really tiny. And I want something bigger and more impressive. Also, I've decided I'm not going to copy anything about their designs, as the Romans were all idiots. And I've got something they didn't. Access to spear fishing stores that stock overpowered rubber bands made in factories in Shenzhen. The Romans did, however, have access to beards and massive parties, which I don't. So we'll find out if that affects its performance. So this is the plan. The rubbers will run along the side of this square tube, and I'll have some bearings on the front, which the rubbers will come over and then get pulled to the back with a winch, which has a quick release, which I made in my last video. Now, the point of these bearings on the front is that if I just had the rubbers tied to the front of the expo, they would only start providing pull force to the arrow here. But with the bearings, you can pre-tension the rubbers and allow them to speed up the arrow until the very end of the muzzle. So we should get more power, but... Dude, I can't be the only one who gets, like, unnecessarily scared of uh, rubber band snapping, right? I also don't know. So the first thing I did was turn down this big block of aluminium in the lathe and cut it into these housings for the bearings, which are less comfortable than the houses they are used to living in. But now the bearings... But even when I was a kid, I was so scared. Like, when people would do the rubber band gun, I hated that shit, dude. Which is like, yeah, sure, pussy shit, but, like... I was. I was very scared. Nicely fit the rubbers. Then I just put them onto the side of the rail. Next, I attached the winch on the back. And I went for a hand winch, as it feels more historically accurate. And I like the noise it makes, and being able to feel the tension of the rubbers getting harder and harder to pull back. And the suspense of each click bringing me closer to the rubbers snapping and taking out my eye. Which I just wouldn't get with an electric winch. And you've probably noticed that the frame is already painted and you haven't actually seen me weld anything together or make anything. I'm just re-welding over welds. And you know in that previous shot of me turning down the housing for the bearings in the lathe? That was a lie as well. 
and it was actually just a can of beans in my lathe. And I just lied to you again. It wasn't even beans. It was actually a can of tomatoes. But why tomatoes! do I keep lying to you? And you might be thinking I'm doing this because I don't want to show you the horrible conditions that the three children that actually made this frame work in, but that's not it either. It's because making stuff like this always takes so long and is relatively boring. So my mate and I actually made it all of this and just didn't record it. Oh! And now in an attempt to make- How the fuck? Bro, that's not supposed to open, dog. That's not supposed to open, dog. What the fuck? Dude, this is like- you show this to a dude working at OSHA and he just has an aneurysm. Make this whole video longer and show the process on camera. I'm just doing extra unnecessary work. So next I just pretended to do some more work. Yeah, welds. it is. That's how you change the band. Yeah, not when you're fucking cutting. What the fuck do you mean? The entire purpose of that thing closing is so that it doesn't open when you snap it. What are you talking about? And now comes the really hard part, where I need to pretend to make the whole bottom half of my frame that attaches to my car, which my mate Rowan already made. And now it's done. Well, functionally done. It needs to look more like the expo from Clash of Clans. But first, I really wanted to do some test shots to find out if this even works in my yard, in the middle of a populated suburban city. And for anyone that's about to write a comment getting angry at me that I'm testing a ballista in a populated area, let me just remind you that I have a ballista that may or may not work. So we decided to test it first with one rubber in an attempt to build up suspense. But first, to build up even more suspense, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the sponsor of the video, Clash of Clans, and the ongoing... Yeah, I'm just really glad that he lives right next to a kindergarten. So obviously, you know, if he ends up having like a really, really horrifying accident, he only ends up killing a bunch of kids. So it's like, who cares? You know what I mean? event clash for nature clash of clans is a super fun strategy game where you build defenses upgrade your base and attack other players and since i announced that i'm in the event everyone has been raiding my base non-stop who keeps killing all my guys and i keep losing and people keep raiding me Clash of Clans has an ongoing event named Clash for Nature, which is almost reaching the end and will be having a significant update coming up right after the release of Town Hall 16. In Clash for Nature, there are two teams, the charity's Team Trees or Team Seas. And if you've seen my last video, you know I'm on Team Trees. All your in-game actions during the event will lead to planting trees and removing trash from the ocean in real life. Any of you can join the event right now, even if you haven't played Clash of Clans before, you just react. scan my QR code and then you get gold through multiplayer battles and looting other players bases just don't loot my base please and whichever creator and community that loots the most gold will win a tesla and other prizes and i'm currently ranked fourth in the clash for nature event and if we win i'll get a bunch of prizes i can give to you guys also i just want to stop papa plate from winning so go download clash of clans now okay back to the test of the expo with one rubber hey. Just take this ready three two one that sucks and that was not no, very didn't. impressive. So we put well, on yes, another rubber, and I also forgot how to do countdowns. How was that? And that looked significantly quicker, which is good, as it's gonna be even faster with a third rubber. So we put that on, and also attempted to shoot it through the chronograph so we can get some speed readings and then compare it to the Romans. And we can also compare it to the speed of the Expo and Clash of Clans, which looks like it's going very fast. That's crazy. And that was way slower than I was expecting. The maximum speed we got was 22 meters a second. And apparently the Roman ballistas could shoot a 400 gram bolt at 90 meters a second. The bolt that we're shooting weighs two kilos though. So I cut it down so it weighed 400 grams and gave it another go, which might make it five times faster. He is pointing it at the children. That's true. And my first shot was 36 meters a second, but I think I know how to make it faster. You know what I said earlier about Romans having an advantage because they have beards and engage in other activities? So I thought my mate Rowan should have a shot. This is me and Rowan <laughs> does... Put your sense. face shield down. Thank you. Two, one. 
And Rowan's was suspiciously faster than my shot at 38 meters or 130 feet per second. And that's not 90 meters a second fast like the Romans, but it's still pretty good considering the Roman ballistas that achieve those speeds had a draw weight of 5,000 pounds, while our Expo's draw weight is only around 500 pounds. Don't ask me how that's possible. I really don't know. But then I realized something. How did the Romans know how fast they were shooting? They didn't have chronographs or Gavin from the slow-mo guys. So I think all the Romans were lying, and the same with the French, especially the French. Okay, now it's time True. to make this look like the level 10 expo from Clash of Clans, which we did by covering it in foam. And this may surprise some of you because you're stupid, but these limbs here don't do anything. Neither does this foam on the front or this aesthetic stream. Sorry, that does. And now you're probably looking at this and thinking, Alex, which is my name, this looks a bit like the level 10 expo from Clash of Clans, but how is it going to shoot magical bolts and auto lock onto targets I really and then hope auto we got a reload this, like dude. in the game? Well, it's not. That wasn't in my budget and also that's impossible and you were just going to have to play the game to see that happen. It will hopefully still shoot and look really cool though. Okay, I think my neighbors are preparing for siege warfare, so it's time to take it out to Hamilton's farm and do some real tests. That's, uh -oh. Also, this is obvious, but anyone watching, especially people living in Syracuse in the fourth century BC, don't put an expo on your car or try any of this at home. And we're gonna do a couple of different tests, like a penetration test on this car door that I stole from an undercover cop car, and also shoot this historically accurate Spartan suit of armor. <laughs> And this armor is a good test, as in the game, the expo can be used against troops like Pekka, this giant guy in a suit of armor. Then we'll have a distance test and an accuracy test, and then finally a drive-by test. And whoever gets the most points wins something. I haven't decided yet. Uh, Ron, do you think we should do a range test first? Yeah, that's fine. See distance? Yeah. Okay. It's a good way to lose a bolt. Yeah, but then at least... And then we only have to shoot two. Yeah. It's perfect. It's, it's great. And also, if we do a destruction test first, we might f*** up the bolts. Yep. We might destroy them. Um, I was going to say we can have a competition, but it won't really be a competition because it's just going to be who can wind it back the furthest and tilt it at the lowest angle. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, first I wanted to know how far it can shoot. So we loaded up the small bolt to do a distance test. Oh, I'm pretty... Oh, face shield. That's what I f***ing forgot. I almost brought some fencing helmets. Maybe I should put this on. Actually, then I can't see. Nah, you put it on. No, I'm not putting it on. Okay. It's gonna keep my face away from it. Two. Where'd it go? Holy. That was pretty good. Right that was there. pretty good. The fletching was weird. And that acted really weirdly in the air with the duct tape fletching that I put on. And also one of the rubbers snapped. But even with that, it went over 120 meters or 300 feet. So we put on another rubber and took off the fletching and tried again. Look at my boy, dude, wearing the fucking... Hey, he's wearing the hat, dude. Look at that. Two, one. Whoa. Similar distance. Okay. And I thought that flew a similar distance, but it turns out it flew a lot further at around 160 meters or 520 feet. But that was measured by my steps and I am slightly biased. And also the steepest angle I could get the expo to was like 15 degrees because of how I attached it to the car. So if it was at 45 degrees, the bolt would go much further. So now we're going to try the expo up against some targets and see what it does. And Rowan was up first. Oh. Ah! Wait, there's no way the camera is like yeah, in the direction. Action. See our point system we're going for here. What's oh, worth the most? Idea. So there's three of us shooting. Yeah. I think if you pierce the armor, you get three points. Yeah. If you just pierce a mannequin, you get one point. If you miss, you get minus one. And if you get through the car door, four. Okay. So you can just choose. What were those points again? Points again? Don't ask me that. <laughs> There's no, it can't hit me if you aim it down at me right now, right? Huh? What are you aiming for? I'm going for the door. He's going for the door? Yeah, he's a four pointer. Or maybe I want the Roman. I don't know. There it is. I don't know. I have no idea. Three, two, one. One. Down I missed. <laughs> and he didn't account for the drop of the heavy bolts and shot yeah. low in between their legs. So he's on zero points. And next was Alexa. Can you open this door? My lady. <laughs> Miss, uh... Yes! That's exactly what I wanted. This feels amazing. Yeah, this I love they both so have the good. same shoes. Feels... Bro, oh. this is the most Balkan fit I've ever seen, bro. He's got the kappas shoved into his fucking socks so they don't get ticks, okay? 
and he's wearing Chelsea boots. It's this is a this is the most this is the most Balkan fit, dude. Look at this man. And I feel awesome just being at the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loading. I'll go record. I feel so powerful right now. I'm gonna go record on this guy. Don't. What are you going for? Uh, I think Alex. Go, go, go. Is it? Go, no, you go. You can go more. Get higher. Get higher. They're not accounting for the Three, the height. Two, one. What does that count as? <laughs> what the f I took his pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I got dressed him. I did exactly what I wanted to do. And somehow, Alexa took the guy's pants off. And I don't even know how many points that is worth. Probably nine? And now it was my turn. And I was feeling the pressure to hit something. What angle were you shooting the ballista at? Don't tell him that. Yeah, I'm not telling. You work it out. You build the thing. I don't know what I'm aiming for. Oh. It's okay. Still got it. What was that going? Oh, this. Springs. Okay. Can you go further? <laughs> nice. Sorry. You're sabotaging me, Rowan. Oh, what? Did you lock it in? Nice. Job. Zero, minus one, minus one. And two of the rubbers broke and it didn't go very far. So I was on minus one. Okay, so after Rowan and I spent an hour retying all the rubbers, we moved the car closer and had another shot. Yeah. Can I go for man? No, I go for the car door. No, I go for man. Three, two, one. Yay! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> What? <laughs> it, did, it didn't hit front on though. <laughs> it just flew. Yeah, that was gonna. That's gonna destroy your windscreen if it flies off. And that bolt hit sideways and bounced off. And this is all very hard. I'm starting to think that expos and ballistas aren't the best siege weapons, or I'm just horrible at making things. And unlike the game where the expo automatically locks onto enemies, we were having trouble hitting anything. So I moved the. Uh, this is why they lost to the. Lost against the emus? Yeah, fucking Car typical. a little bit closer. Oh my god, bro, come on. They're gonna took fucking aim break the- at the Spartan guy. Count us down. Three. I really think that's just gonna bounce straight off, actually. Two. Yeah. One. Oh, whoa! In the heart. Straight through! Mate, um, Alex, amazing aim. Thank you. Incredible. This that's, is all we had to do. you from that far? Well, I know. Right in the oh my That's god. A great shot. Yeah. yeah, don't touch him. Right, did you aim for his heart? Uh, kind of. And that was pretty impressive oh. damage. It only stopped because the bolt got wider and it almost went all the way through. Broadhead into him? Yeah. It'll absolutely go through that. <laughs> Poor guy. So then Hamilton's mate had a shot at the car door. You winded it all the way back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Woo! Did you get it? It went in, maybe. Oh, whoa! What? Holy sh! Dude, that sliced through so easily. I like the Look at that. The way oh, it just, just like a peeled it up. Peeled it like sides? a can. No, just one. That's nuts. Oh, it must have hit this and then pushed, yeah. pushed up. And now it's Hamilton's turn to shoot the Santa guy. I mean, fair. Car doors are pretty, pretty fucking slim. That is true. Is not exactly. Car doors are not exactly very strong. Oh! <laughs> Executed. It. Holy! Wait, was that? <laughs> oh my god! In the heart again? <laughs> One of the biggest things pounded in my head in basic training was never to use a car door as cover while under fire. Yes, you're supposed to. The only part of the car that you can use as cover if you're under fire is the engine. And that's only because of the engine. And even that is not great, but it's like that's the only part of the car. That you can stand behind. That's great. He's got a spear sticking out. Nothing's <laughs> bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we know that the bolt would do some serious damage. Basic training for what, Antifa? Brother, who says basic training? Damage. But we still don't know how easy it is to use while driving. So I tried that. Yep. Yep. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, drive slowly next to them. I won't point it at you, boys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, go slowly next to them. Take so a bit closer to him. And that was ridiculously hard to aim, so I tried again. Yep, you can go. Go a bit closer to him. And we couldn't find the bolt in the long grass, so we formed a search and rescue line. And besides finding a body that Hamilton had buried on his farm earlier, we couldn't find the bolt. <laughs> but luckily, on the way back, Alexa stepped on it. 
which is great, because now Hamilton won't die while mowing his lawn. Okay, we were getting pretty bored and sunburnt, so we told ourselves that this was the last attempt. <laughs> yep. Here we go. Get him, Alex. Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, in the neck. Oh, wait, I don't need to keep driving. <laughs> And that was extremely fun to shoot and did some great damage. And as for which one of us wins my made up competition, probably Alexa for taking the guy's pants off. And there you go. I think I did a pretty good job of replicating that expo from Clash of Clans. And Mayan actually had enough power to even take down armored troops from the game. So go download Clash of Clans right now and scan my QR code and join mm. the event to not only plant trees, but also potentially win a Tesla and other prizes. And considering I'm number four right now, we are pretty close. Also a hot tip for new and existing players, you should get the builder package for your town. And that gives you the advantage of progressing quickly in the early stages of the game. Good luck in the event. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that. Are you going to ever hang out with the boys again and finish that Chinese movie? Uh, one day. Hey guys, have you ever felt like holding plastic axes and diving into a freezing cold pond because that's what modern Vikings do? Me neither, but believe it or not, that's what some people are doing. And we're going to talk about all of that in just a second. But first, my debut comedy special, Keep Busy, premieres on November 10th. Click the link in the description or go to this website to get your tickets to the live premiere on November 10th. And then we'll also give you access to the on-demand version afterwards. I worked super hard on this comedy special and I'm really proud of it. So I hope you guys check it out. I hope you support. If not, I understand it's all good. But thank you for the support anyway. It's all, all video. Right, yeah, see you November 10th. From a month ago. Enjoy the video. It's been a while <laughs> since I've looked at one specific niche community on TikTok and offered like a totally unbiased, fair, non-judgmental opinion. Viking shit is so elder, polyamorous, millennial coded. Oh my god, that's so good. That's on a good it. And by a while, I mean never. I don't think I've ever done that. But it's been a while since I've playfully poked fun at one of these TikTok subgenres. I think the last one I did was Water Talk with Danny. But since Halloween is right around the corner, I figured it would make sense to you know, get in the spirit of things, right? You know, maybe talk about a community on TikTok where people uh, dress up and play pretend. So I started doing some research on that and I fell down quite the gnarly rabbit hole. Eventually, I stumbled upon a creator named Freya Jenny Viking Vampire and real quick, oh my no God. irony here, she is my new favorite TikToker. She cosplays as like a Viking slash vampire and she claims to go vampire mode whenever she smells that uh, sweet, sweet blood. I don't know if you can see that man right there, but he has the blood that I'm talking to you. I could smell it a mile away. What the fuck? 274,000 likes? Also, it's broad daylight. Fuck you mean? We'll do an anime AI recap in a minute. Way. I've got to do vampire mode right now. Incredible content. But through her account, I found an entire like sub community of people on TikTok who dress up as Vikings and just make tons of videos about living out their Viking fantasies. You know, Vikings, right? The people who traveled from village to village, killing and kidnapping people while also like stealing all of their shit in order to colonize. Yeah, there's like a whole group of people on TikTok trying okay, to- Okay, but they were fucking cool though. Body that, which is a little odd, right? That's like if someone was cosplaying as like a mafia boss or something. Oh wait, never mind. Just the concept of TikTok Vikings was so fascinating to me. So I did a bunch of research on this community and what I found was pretty, pretty shocking. So come along with me as we take a deep dive into the Vikings of TikTok. So when I began my research into the Vikings of TikTok. They also work with the Ottoman Empire, I think like they were like, they, they linked up at a certain point, right? think so one guy kept popping up and them Leif erickson fuck no dude uh, pretty frequently and his name is peyton parish he's a for me for me i think it's appropriate to colonize england the varangian guard was an elite unit of the byzantine army of the 10th and the 14th century he served personal bodyguards of the byzantine emperors the varangian guard was known for being primarily composed of units from northern europe including manly norsemen from scandinavia but also Anglo-Saxons from England, the recruitment of distant foreigners from outside of Byzantium to serve as the emperor's personal guard was pursued as a deliberate policy as they lacked local political loyalties and could be counted on to suppress revolt by disloyal Byzantine factions. Runestones, the Fandrunestones and Norsagas. 
a musician who makes a ton of original Viking themed music, and he also covers a lot of old Viking songs. Uh -oh. And he's actually gained like a pretty big fan base of like millions of people just from pretending to be a Viking while singing. Uh -oh. And he's been a pretty frequent face on uh -oh. my like favorite Instagram account, Catatonic Youths, as an account where they post like cringy music stuff. He's been on there a bunch for his just inherently cringe videos, like this cover that he recorded in his car. All right, let's see if you guys remember this song. It's not very Viking to have a car, dude. Unless it's like a Vikes, Vikes wagon. Oh let's watch the TikTok. Jesus fucking Christ. DK, Donkey Kong, DK, Donkey Kong is here. He's the leader of the bunch. You know him well. He's finally bang to kick some tail. Okay, that's enough of that. I'm going to run the ad break right now, which I'm not even recommending you subscribe to avoid because that might happen again. Okay. And there, that's it. <laughs> DK, Donkey Kong is here. He's the lead. It's kind of weird that um, Curtis, who is known as like a famous Nickelback stan, right? Red CXY, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, allowing 10 people to see the beautiful music, the cacophony of sound. Um, yeah, Curtis is a Nickelback fan, so why is he even making fun of this guy? Leader of the bunch, you know him well. He's finally been to kick some tail. He's Are you even a real Uber driver? And I think this guy gets dunked on so frequently is because he like genuinely sings how I sing when I'm singing along to like a Creed song. Well, I just heard a new today. Don't rock. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing bad about Viking themed music. I think it's fine. Fortress by Protest a Hero is like one of my favorite albums of all time. And a lot of the lyrics in that album are based around like old Irish mythology and shit. So I think some of that music is okay, right? But this guy's style of Viking music is giving off a lot of Imagine Dragons vibes, you know? Literally, because they imagine dragons exist and they're killing them with their axes, you know? <laughs> but regardless of what I think and say and do, this guy's fucking torn around doing huge shows and stuff, so, you know, people seem to really love his music Wait, and what? content. Chips on vigor and waves are Damn, all right. <laughs> Big group of Vikings behind him. That's pretty, that's pretty scary. <laughs> I bet they're gonna start chanting along with him now to like make it even more scary, you know? Okay, really building anticipation here. I like it. No, they're there just to look hot in the background. All right, any second now. It's gonna sound really cool when they all start singing. I wonder how like Nordic people feel when they see this shit. You know what I mean? Also, half of this stuff is like, I mean, I don't know about this guy, but like half of the stuff that half of the people that do this, like pagan LARPing are unironically Nazis. Like they, which like the esoteric rune searching uh, and, and uh, you know, Nordic lore and like fancy themselves to be Vikings is like OG Nazi shit too. But like, I, I wonder as far as like, as far as like Nordic people, like how do they perceive like white Americans being like LARPing is, is, Vikings. Thunderpound with on. Okay, okay, never mind. Dude, this is like this is like when you had to do like an oral group presentation in class, but like only one person did all the work, so you just like <laughs> you just awkwardly stand behind them while they do everything. Also, I thought the whole thing with Viking chants are like they're done with like a big group of, of Vikings, right? Like they would sing these war chants as a big group to like scare their enemies and shit. If it was this instead, one guy and then everyone else just standing behind. It's just weird because it's like like they LARP as as Vikings, and someone said it's like weebs, but I don't. I I feel like Nordic people don't like lean into this as much as like, or even I, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Japanese people certainly like use this as a cultural export, like their past, and still care about their traditions in a, in definitely not a way that I I don't think like Nordic people are are promoting their shit. So these guys just kind of found it. And are like, this is my shit. This is extremely my I'm shit. Them? No one's getting scared, dude. Oh my god, it's a Viking ship! Everybody run! They don't lean into it because they understand the Vikings were huge rapists and don't want to associate with that? Okay. Wait, can you guys hear that? Okay, false alarm, everybody. Sorry. It's just Creed. 
But what's interesting about all of this Viking music, our guy Peyton was actually once an aspiring country musician, once putting out a song called Country Girl. But then when he posted a video of him singing a song from a Viking themed Assassin's Creed, got like six million views. He switched genres pretty quickly. And honestly, I don't blame him, okay? I do the exact same thing. It's just really funny to go from country music to Viking music. I guess they're pretty similar, right? Cause country- Yeah, I mean, that's country for Nords. Country music is like famously sung by dudes who are not country. And Viking music now is sung by people who are not Vikings, obviously. I guess it's really not that big of a departure. They also both got boots and beards. And I think this Viking style of music has really caused the Viking- It's great because it's both gay as hell. Fucking got him, but like literally unironically. In community on TikTok to grow at a really fast pace. Another example, there's a Swedish death metal band called Amen Amoth. I think that's how you pronounce it. And they have a song called Put Your Back Into The Ore. And when they perform this song live, all the people in the audience sit down on the ground and pretend to row a big boat together. Row, row, row. And you know what? If I'm being honest, when you show me shit like that, when you show me shit like that, I, immediately I'm like, Wurzum has fucking ruined this. And and many, many of the death metal Andes have ruined this. I know that's different. But like, as soon as I see that, I'm like, are those guys racist? What's going on? Nazis really did ruin the runes and also black metal in general. I don't know anything about Amon Amarth, but. Honest. I think this is something I can actually get behind. Dude, at my old age, do you know how nice it would be to just fucking sit down for a while at a concert? <laughs> that sounds like a dream, dude. Every band needs to do a chant like this from now on, okay? Sleep, sleep, sleep. Good night, Curtis. But the growth in the Viking music genre has pretty much provided all of these people a soundtrack to post their videos to. And some of these dudes are diving head first into the Viking aesthetic, literally. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that tweet where it was like, fellas, what's stopping you from doing this? Like, being like this or whatever? And it's like, I don't know. It's cold. My pee-pee will shrink. Like, I don't I don't feel like this is a good idea to to do, you know? I, I don't like that. The, the thought of how cold it is will make your penis shrink a little bit. <laughs> Gee, Floyd. He's going to be Thor after that one. Why right, special? You know, like Thor. Is this what Vikings did though? Is that all they did? I'm not like a history buff. I'm history scrawny. But is this what Vikings did? They just fucking ah! And then they dove into like a little pond. I understand why people are so scared of them now, dude. They're out of control. Whenever they showed up to a village. Yeah, they're not, he's not actually sh- jumping with sharp objects, brother. Are you crazy? Those are definitely foam. They would just find the fucking highest building and just fucking let me jump off of it. <laughs> that's what struck fear into people's hearts. Oh, maybe that's why they wore the helmets. Oh my god. Damn. And here's another video where a guy is getting catapulted into a fucking lake while holding an axe over his head. <laughs> Dude. Relax, what? man. What is the point of this? They didn't have catapults back then, did they? I don't know. There were catapults inv- invented. Is they 400 BC? How did they have full working catapults back then, but not like cable TV, you know? That seems... That seems weird. Me when I shoot the Loch Ness Monster. And I was pretty confused after watching this catapult video, but I did a little bit of research into Vikings, and this is actually how they come out of the womb. Just legs spread, catapulted into a lake. They're already holding an axe somehow. Pretty cool, man. I've been learning a lot. I know I'm making fun of these videos, but like on a surface level, they're not inherently bad or anything. I just think the existence of them is funny because it's the same as like the country boy tiktok video that i did fucking years ago the country persona as well as the viking persona is so like hyper masculine and threatening so to think of like an image of like a typical viking juxtaposed with the act of filming a tiktok is really funny to me like to genuinely be like tonight we attack the village i will kill everybody in the world if that means protecting my family And what I just did, that's not even that far off, dude, because I have seen so many genuine Viking thirst traps on TikTok. And I'm sorry in advance, but we're... I mean, everything is... On TikTok, everything is thirst traps. We're gonna watch some. POV, your Viking comes home from a long work day. Damn. Okay, King. Okay, Viking. Hey, guys, I'm editing right now, and I didn't realize he spelt 
<laughs> this Viking spelt workday wrong. Makes sense. I guess Vikings didn't really have a, a firm grasp on spelling yet. He spelt it how an Italian plumber. He, no, he spelt it how Nordic people would work a day. Plumber would say it, you know? It's been a long work a day. <laughs> Worst. He spelt it in a way that he's like, uh, I'm coming home after a long work a day. Viking ever, dude. Like his leader tells him to go set traps in the forest and he's like, say less. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, I I don't know what this video means. What does this mean? Excuse me, what does this mean? What does it mean? After a long work day, your Viking comes home and stares at himself in the mirror? Did they even have mirrors in Viking times? I don't I don't know anything, dude. I'm not a history buff. I'm a history scrum. When were mirrors invented? 4000 BCE. You could figure out mirrors, but not Bluetooth. In okay, Turkey. This goes all the way to the top. Anatolia. I just don't understand this video. Your, your a work day? I don't think a Viking's work day is something to thirst over. You know? Remember that. Welcome back to my it. husband. The Viking. Honey, I'm home. Technically, what long before any fucking Turkic motherfuckers were there, but hey, listen. Hey, how was work today? Oh, not so good. My new department is brutal. And which department is that again? Brutalizing. <laughs> oh, yes, right. Sorry. It's like today I had this great plan to steal this one villager, but then Ragnar comes out of nowhere and burns the house down before I can get to him. It's just so cruel. <laughs> Well, you're gonna have to put your differences aside. I invited him over for dinner tonight. You invited Ragnar, the famous Viking arsonist, over for dinner tonight? It's not a big deal. Now I'll be right back. I have to go check on dinner, okay? I don't want it to burn. Yeah, that's Ragnar's job. Meanwhile... I'm Ragnar. I love burning stuff. My husband, the Viking, will be back after this YouTube video. But the thing that bugs me the most about all these Viking thirst traps is like, these are so inaccurate. Wait, what the fuck? Is... The thing that bugs me the most about all these Viking... Bro, this dude doesn't even have... Thirst... I thought he was like tatted up with Viking shit. That's crazy. This dude just like copped the Viking aesthetic after like doing a whole bunch of... Like, he's a weeb too. Traps is like... these. These are so inaccurate. You know how gross and stinky people were back then? I don't care how attractive they were, one sniff of a Viking's balls, balls. dude, you're gone. Your, your fucking eyebrows are getting singed off. Smelling a Viking's balls, balls <laughs> probably makes you fucking hallucinate. According to historians, maybe I am a history buff, oh, according yeah. to historians, there were actual Viking warriors called berserkers who would fight in like a trance-like state and just fucking go crazy they wouldn't feel pain and stuff they would just lose their mind and it kind of makes sense you think about today people using like smelling salts before they lift like a bunch of weights that's a real viking Dude, right then, there before battle <laughs> all vikings had to do is just <laughs> that's so gross but uh cringe thirst traps aside i wanted to get to the bottom of this community i wanted to find out what is so appealing about the viking lifestyle and aesthetic and during my research i stumbled upon a tiktoker named bearded viking seven i don't even want to know what happened to the first six so this guy makes a bunch of videos about the viking lifestyle more specifically he talks a lot about what it means to be a modern Viking, which is odd, I know, because, you know, those words don't really make sense together. Vikings existed like a thousand plus years ago. Like, how could there be modern Vikings? That's like saying, I'm a compassionate Republican or I'm an AJR fan. It just doesn't make sense. You know, those people don't exist. But let's find out what a modern Viking really is. What is a modern Viking? The philosophy I'm using comes from a company that a lot of you guys know, the beard struggle. Okay, so yeah, the what? modern Viking term was coined by a beard care brand. And on their website, they say, the modern day Viking is defined not by his ancestry, religion, or place of birth, but rather by the things he believes in. That's such cope. In. That's literally for people who are, you know, working at uh, uh, like a marketing firm to also feel like they are a Viking. You know what I mean? It's so funny. It's like you're, you're, living, in, you're living in Alabama, okay? You own an HVAC business and you're like, but I'm a Viking. I'm <laughs> this beard brand told me the modern Viking is defined not by his ancestry, religion, or place of birth, but rather by the things he believes in. Uh, a modern Viking is part of the future, but keeps the values of the older times. A modern day Viking community believes in bravery, honor, loyalty, discipline, and honesty. So I guess it's taking all the admirable parts of the Viking culture and applying it to 
modern day life. I don't know how much bravery, honor, loyalty, discipline, and honesty went into killing and kidnapping people in the name of colonization, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> I'm not a Viking. Okay, Someone he's really harsh in my fucking vibes right now, dude. It's like talking about... It's like talking about how samurais were cops. It's like, yeah, bro, I know, but they were fucking sick. Have you thought about that? It's like kind of cool. Also, the people that they were doing the colonization to were... The OG colon, I mean, they became the worst colonizers later. So it's someone like, then commented on that TikTok saying, Dan Law! I mean, you're not a Viking though, unless you actually go on raids, which is a fair point. That was kind of like their whole thing. So let's see what he says about that. But welcome to the 21st century, where we have a football team that has horns on their helmets and call themselves Vikings, but we have no issue. And we even have Viking cruise lines. Wait, I don't get it. Is he saying my culture is not your costume or some shit? But he's not a Viking. The fuck? The Vinky? I don't really understand. And the crazy thing is, these are mainstream things going on calling themselves Vikings. <laughs> I honestly have never heard anybody complain about either of those things. So, there's one. What was his point there? <laughs> I think this guy's a Nazi. I mean, honestly. what was his point? I don't get it. Was he trying to say that the Minnesota Vikings Bruh. <laughs> were culturally appropriating Bruh. Vikings? <laughs> I don't think so, man. A Minnesota Vikings crowd is only angry, violent white dudes, okay? Seems pretty Viking to me, dude. I'm gonna talk about raiding here in a second, too, so stick around. <laughs> yo, yo, what? Don't. <laughs> Don't talk about that. I'm gonna talk about raiding here in a second too, so stick around. I'm gonna talk about raiding here in just a second. Dude, I have never heard that sentence before in my life. <laughs> that is the first time that has ever been said. What's up guys? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Stick around to the end where I talk about pillaging. Uh, and make sure to watch that video. Top five villages to plunder. And obviously I can't forget my human trafficking tier list. Remember how I said I was gonna talk about raiding? Well, here we are. First off, do you know why the Vikings were raiders? One, they were ambitious enough to build boats that could sail across the ocean to find new lands without no- Dude, fucking hell yeah. He said- Dude, he's talking about, he's talking about Vikings like they, like, again, he is, he is like neoliberalizing Vikings, dude. He's like, yeah, Vikings, like, they loved supply side economics. <laughs> let's talk about, let's talk about the ambition that Vikings had. Fellas, do you love rising and grinding? You know who else did? The Vikings. They were on their Sigma Grindstone shit. Knowing that there were new lands out there. So what they did is they saw things that they needed and they were like, huh. I'm gonna take these things for my family. A lot of the Vikings just wanted land so that they could farm and provide for their families and expand. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, I love this guy. I actually love this guy because he's gonna tie it back to like his shitty dead end job, which is awesome. Bam. Modern raiding is like chasing your goal with Ah, he did it! Oh, that's so perfect. I love that. Dude, come on, come on. This guy's awesome. I take it back. I don't think he's a Nazi anymore. I think he's just like, he's harmless. He fucking said modern day racing or modern day rating is basically just like, you know, when your manager comes over and says, Hey, have you finished those spreadsheets yet? And you say, not yet, but I'm going to, I'm going to get to the bottom of that. I'm going to finish it right now. Acity. Okay. To that, I just have one question. What is blood yapping about? <laughs> no, okay. I think I do. I think I get what he's trying to say. I think like, for example, if you wanted like a promotion at your job, you, I guess you'd sort of just like raid your boss until he gave it to you. I like that. No quanti consequences. Okay. Consequences. If your boss won't give you a promotion, fucking, fucking kill them. I also love in the video how he pointed out. <laughs> Weeby, how the fuck did you do that? Like, how did you even unmod yourself? How was that even possible? I don't even understand. It was a bit how. Yeah. Vikings just wanted land for their families, which makes everything they did perfectly fine. A lot of the Vikings just wanted land so that they could farm and provide for their families and expand. Um, you got any land for me? Uh, just a little piece of land. Uh, just one itty bitty piece of land. I'm literally trying to colonize. Uh, and it's just interesting to me that a modern Viking stands for bravery, honor loyalty discipline and honor. i think it's funnier it's like i don't really give a shit about like the vikings wanting a little bit of land i think it's funnier for him to just like turn that directly into uh you know sigma grind welcome shit. to my story of how i went from christian to pagan 
Oh my god, he's oh dude, he's going the full distance. There were several really transformative moments for me. I was Christian for about 23 years before I kind of discovered that I was pagan. My mindset switched almost overnight to more of like pagan thinking after one book that I read. I'll tell you about that book here in a second, but first I want to go into the position I was in mentally uh -oh. before I found this book. I was in Not a good. very dark, dark, dark place. Yeah, I, I, I suspect. Nobody who's not in a dark place goes, I read one book and I'm pagan now. I wouldn't say offing myself type of place, but my girlfriend was thinking of leaving me. I started to truly feel like my dreams would never come true. My life overall just kind of felt like it was- Why is he constantly doing stuff? Like, do the stuff you need to do and then shoot the video, man. Every cut, he has to be doing some new shit. Starting to fall apart. I was working a back-breaking labor job digging pools in Arizona, which is 120 degree weather. He's just like getting slapped up by these fucking branches in every video, which is very Viking-like. I was always a very confident person, and I noticed that my confidence was disappearing. I then realized it was more of my mindset being the issue. So I started looking into mindset and or philosophy style books on YouTube. I hate to read and I love audiobooks, so, you know. So I found this book called The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. When I read this book, in the first chapter, it taught me that we are not our body. We are a spiritual being having a human experience. That blew my mind. So I started diving deeper into that reality. And at the same time, I started really embracing my Norwegian heritage. And that's when I started discovering that there's a ton of different types of pagan belief systems. I started to realize that with that mindset, I was able to answer a lot of the questions that I felt like my other belief system, Christianity, just didn't answer for me. The answer to most things when I asked them were to have faith and trust. Bro, he's getting progressively sweatier throughout this entire process as he's just like slapping, slapping them shits around, dude, over and over again. Just straight slapping up. God. The cool thing is now I trust in myself and in my spirit or the universe to be able to handle this human experience. Everything happens for us, not to us. Now, it took me about eight months after reading this book to start diving into my mind and realizing that now I have a very pagan belief system. Around the same time in those eight months, my life did a complete 180. I started diving into my spirituality, started my TikTok, became a full-time content creator, started tr uh, tra- Sick, man. I love when- I love when people's dreams are just becoming a TikTok content creator. And I say that as, like, someone who does politics online on Twitch. Like, this shit sucks as a dream, brother. What the fuck? Yo, dream something cooler. Like, what do you mean? A traveling? Full time? Everything started to click for me. And then I realized being pagan was just realizing that you're the spiritual being having a human experience coming from a source of everything. That was about three years ago. I do love people being like, I got real spiritual with it. And then what did I do? I fucking started a TikTok, dude. <laughs> I started a TikTok and I'm a life coach, but with a different aesthetic. Oh, and what a freaking transformative experience. Anyways, that's my story. And I would love for you to tag me in yours. Remember, you are worthy, you are enough, and you are loved. Aw, I mean, he seems nice. Honesty because in another one of his videos, there's a little sketch where someone comes up to him and they're like You know, you're not a real Viking, right? And he's like, no, I know I'm a modern Viking Well, man, I see you wearing like Thor's hammer from the Marvel movies. This is the Mjolnir. It's not originally from the Marvel Man, all you guys are like the same and it's one of those It's so funny that he's like he's like Actually, this is not from the Marvel movie like come on dude Come on, your shit is so lame. It's so lame, dude. Come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Classic um, one character speaking calmly and eloquently, so he's got to be the correct one. You know, versus the other character talking more passionately and expressively and emotional, so he must be in the wrong. Those videos are always super fun to watch and really cool and not biased at all. It's kind of like the sketch version of those, like, SJW gets owned with facts and logic. <laughs> but in this TikTok, the expressive guy is like, You know you're not a real Viking, right? And this is how the brave, honorable, loyal, disciplined, 
and honest modern Viking response. They technically pillaged, fought, and... And what? I mean, he kind of owned Curtis there. He kind of fucking clocked him. He kind of fucking destroyed Curtis there. Curtis made an entire video for 18 minutes only to get owned by this one TikTok. Dude, chill in. Relax, bro. So when someone is questioning you or criticizing what you're doing, I guess the Viking way to deal with it is just fucking choke them. Uh, the to be fair, that is true. So honestly, that's fucking, he's living his Viking life, dude. Respect. He's living La Vida Loca right there, honestly. The modern Viking community believes in bravery, honor, loyalty, discipline, and honesty. Nice. Now that guy is dumb. This guy is also apparently building like a Viking village where people can go and live. Uh -oh. We're building the first Viking village in America. We're building on 40 acres of land in Kilgore, Texas. And apparently there's like a ton of people who are down to live there too. Uh -oh. Everybody keeps asking me, when can you live on the land? Ted Bundy, you would have loved TikTok, man. Just a tip, guys, if a TikToker that you follow is like, yo, come live at this commune with me. Unfollow them, okay? That's weird. TikTokers are supposed to make videos, not towns. That's my job, okay? Only Curtis Town is allowed. Also, dude, there is no place worse to build a Viking village than Kilgore, Texas. Cause you know, the Viking's main mode of transportation was by boat. So having a Viking village that is a four hour drive from the closest large body of water, it seems a little silly, dude. You're gonna need some bigger catapults if you're gonna reach the Gulf of Mexico. But also at the same time, it kind of makes sense. Southern dudes kind of look like Vikings already, you know, and the Vikings had several important dynasties over the years, you know, same as the South, right? Well, mostly just the one dynasty, the, uh, the duck, <laughs> the, the, the duck dynasty. And while I was looking up all this Viking stuff, I was confused, like, is it, is it just like cosplay? Are people actually thinking they're legit Vikings? Like, is there a special thing you have to do to become a Viking, right? Do I have to shave the sides of my head? Do I have to do the worst thing ever and become a blonde man? I couldn't really find any details on it, but I did stumble upon a video of someone being declared an official Viking. So let's see what that entails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, middle Americans are so bored. Like, I say let them be cringe. You know what I mean? I didn't really learn too much from that video. I also don't know why there's a pig from Angry Birds down there. But at least now I know there are official and unofficial Vikings. I'm just having trouble figuring out what this guy did exactly to earn the title of official Viking, you know? Bro, this is why motherfuckers... This is why motherfuckers in Idaho waited for eight hours to get in and out, Okay. It's just like, this is it. This is the only thing you got going on beyond the, the fucking, beyond the eight hours of wait for a silly ass uh, in and out burgle. And now my son, since you have shaved the sides of your head and put huge round leather bracers on your arms for some reason, I can now declare you an official Viking. And killed all those innocent people. What? My 23andMe results say I'm 3% Scandinavian. It's in my blood, mom. I'm a Viking. He responded fierce, to the video? Fearless, noble warrior who takes what he wants. Someone think? He doesn't care about the consequences at all. Please open up. Fuck! I gotta get out of here! These consequences will be dire! You're under arrest for murder! Hey! Stop right there! Bro! 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 I think in conclusion, it's a little strange to want to like base your entire identity and belief system around a group of people whose entire existence focused on pillaging, murdering, kidnapping, and colonizing. But hey, I guess that's why they're building the Viking village in Texas. I think this is just like what bored men do, right? Like this is what, this is bored men activity. You're bored, you're a man, you just like look to, you got no prospects, your future looks relatively bleak, so what do you do? You look to the past and imagine a different mythology for yourself. Oh, yeah. But one positive thing I can say about Vikings is a lot of them had big old bellies, so they must have been eating good. And speaking of eating good, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. That's right, this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Folks, my wife and I have been eating HelloFresh every Let's hear what this response is. Famous made a video of me. Pretty cool, right? Well, actually, hold on a second and stick around. Now, I do quickly want to say I don't do drama. So please do not use this as an excuse to be negative towards anybody. 
I just that is not the Viking way. Doing drama is not the Viking way. I want to get some information out there because it was misleading and is genuinely affecting my channel. You guys who support me, thank you. Wait, and those you of you coming to my page after watching his video on his page right here, this is the information. So Curtis has a pretty heavy influence. Respect. It's not easy to do. And I have no trouble with that. And he makes <laughs> He said, dude, won't even organize a raid on TikTok. Yeah, bro, fucking raid his ass. This whole video trashing on content creators, a lot of which are my friends in the Viking community. Which, hey, we're used to it, so no hate there. I have a clip from the video I'm about to play just to show you the problem I have with it. This guy is also apparently building, like, a Viking village where people can go and live. We're building the first Viking village in America. We're building on 40 acres of land in Kilgore, Texas. And apparently there's, like, a ton of people who are down to live there, too. Everybody keeps asking me, when can you live on the land? Ted Bundy, you would have loved TikTok, man. Just a tip, guys. If he's like, dude, fucking Ted Bundy, not a Viking. How dare he? How dare he compare Ted Theodore Bundy? It's fucked up. Also, more David Koresh, but it doesn't matter. David Koresh would have never done a, a Viking thing. A TikToker that you follow is like, yo, come live at this commune with me. Unfollow them. So that's the part I have a problem with. And again, no hate on this creator. I'm sure he just wanted clicks and views. To each their own, it happens to everyone. What's up with the music? Why did he fucking... Wait, he, he hit the music. But in that video specifically, I said you will not be able to live on that land. We are building a festival ground. A place for celebration, parties, concerts, and amazing experiences. And then immediately after that, he tells people to unfollow me. Which I'm going to be honest, I've lost hundreds of followers. And that's just sad because he took what? the entire video out of context. He didn't watch the whole thing. And even if he did, it means that he cut out the part where I said you can't live on that land. Which is an important aspect based off his claim. Bro, damn, dude. Curtis, you fucked up. You notice there's a whole other set of emoting being developed around doing stitches or whatever? I am going to be fair, though. I do aim to build a homestead community in the future. But I'm not going to be the head of it. I don't want to be like a king or whatever. It's not like that. It's just a place for people who want to get off grid and live. Oh my god, he dyed part of his beard and his hair. The old way live off the land that's a goal for the future and to be honest i love traveling too much to even be living on that land full time it wouldn't be mine yeah he said he doesn't want to be king he wants to be yarl <laughs> i do not want to be king i want to be yarl that point but i am going to help start that however i'm just a little disappointed in the way this was approached content creators tend to forget on here that people are human again i have no trouble with the fact that he's just trashing on viking tiktok Whatever, you don't have to believe modern Vikings or anything like that. There was even another video in there that was taken out of context, but I Damn, don't Damn, bro, he just, like, kind of gave up on this. Bro, be a Viking, dog. Fucking defend your honor. What the hell? <laughs> I feel kind of bad. <laughs> bro is not making Vikings look hard. Yeah, get in there. Destroy Kurt. Destroy Curtis Town. That's a town. There's, like, robust resources. Bro, in Curtis Town, I heard there's a bunch of fucking... There are a bunch of the uh, <laughs> church boys in the monastery that are fucking they, that are holding on to a shit ton of artifacts. Those are shiny. Get the fuck in there, pillage, man. Enslave some of these motherfuckers in Curtis Town. Look, that's my Yarl dog. We're losing the fjord. <laughs> oh no. I don't want to dive too deep into it. I don't do drama, but there is a level of understanding that needs to be had. Again, no hate to this creator. I don't want you guys to hate on this person. I do want to say, however that I believe making videos trashing people may not be the way to go. And I can't say I'm perfect in that aspect either. I'm sure there's some videos out there. I just want to make sure if people understand, I don't think this dude's a Nazi. I think he's like a straight up neolib, okay? You can take out of context and make me look. He's like a, like a marketing guy. That way too. But man, my biggest problem Ooh. here is don't tell Lose people to shit. unfollow people. This is my entire life. I've been trying 10 years to live this life. And I have amazing supporters on here. And again, he's probably not even going to. He seems shockingly well-adjusted, lol. I love him. I'm astounded. No, that's what makes it so much better. That he's like... That's what makes it so much better. That he's not... He's not Vinland Saga Season 1. He's Vinland Saga Season 2. He's out here like, I have no enemies. You know what I mean? He's out here like, let me farm my... Let me farm my potatoes, okay? I am going to farm so fucking hard that I'm going to be able to buy my way out of indent indentured servitude. Okay, that's what he's doing. I'm gonna see this video, but I will say I honestly am hurt. 
I do have human feelings for any of you out there like be a strong man. I'm tough sometimes, but I feel feelings. And this, this unfortunately hurt, Curtis. Again, you do have a big influence and I respect that. But using it to tear down- That's the Viking way though. He's like, I respect that. You have big influence. Somebody else kind of sucks. Yeah, he's Anyways, with all that said, if you made it this far, stay awesome and all love. No hate here, guys. Bye. That's crazy. Someone famous made- I don't think most people know how the Viking community are. He's one of them. You should visit a festival and spend some time with Vikings. Dude, this guy's fucking, I need to watch more of his shit. What the fuck is he doing? We are sharpened yet. I don't know. We'll see. We, we All right, everybody speak. watching right now. Everybody watching. Get ready. This is a clash of two Vikings. A crucial challenge to take us on with everything you got. Because we will give you everything you got. <laughs> well, keep in mind now, we've been battling very hard for two weeks straight because we were in that competition. So we have been uh, putting out some raids. That's true. I mean, we're not making excuses, but we have been I putting out <laughs> we've been putting out a lot. Fuck, oh, it Nicole. shows that I joined. Get the hearts right back to you. Yes, we raid. Yes, archers lose. Yes, we that's raid, right. Raid. Make sure you guys go over there, tap the screen like he always says. Tap the screen, share some love, share out the live, and in the chat, we say, archers lose. And over there they say, we raid. Yeah, that's what we do, yeah. <laughs> oh, this much guy, love. Guys. Much well, love. Well, Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, okay, I'm done. I'm done. You guys already fucking went in there. Stop. East. Hold what? on. What is it? Where is this going? Mortal. Come out and celebrate Yule with us in Kilgore, Texas. Oh my god, he did it. He achieved his fucking dreams, dude. He's doing like a Ren Fair, but Viking style. What is this? What is his deal? Is he the fucking... Oh, you have arrived. But, who are they? Oh, them? <laughs> They're with me. Well, let's celebrate then. Come on. <laughs> What's up, family? I got a few updates for you. I'm officially back. Odin shared his wisdom with humanity. Yes, Odin, the king of the Aesir God. I love that he literally did a highlight through his eyebrow and his hair and his mustache and beard. This is literally worse than being caught watching porn. Uh, excuse me. There's no, there's no sequence where, like, if you were caught watching this, if you were caught watching porn, the person who caught you wouldn't immediately join in on the fun and start jerking off. Meanwhile, we get caught watching this. Everyone's like, I'm a Viking too. Fuck it. YOLO. Give it to me. Love this Viking archaeologist dunking on the LARPers. No. No, the Vikings did not have shin line tattoos. I am Frederick, your friendly neighborhood uh, Viking archaeologist, and I'm here just to rem remind you that you should not steal indigenous. Fuck this guy, bro. Fuck this guy. You shouldn't steal indigenous people's practice. Fuck you, man. Classic. Let me tell you, I know what he's going to do, okay? Oh, guess what? The Vikings, Vikings actually did not have horns on their. They did not have horns on their helmets. As a matter of fact, this is something that people uh, decided after the fact. It's like, yeah, bro, we know. Just let it. Let, let people have fun. In ah. People's practices. Shin line tattoos are a practice associated with especially the native people of what we today call modern Canada or Canada. And this practice was for a long time. Uh, Whenever a Scandinavian person says, speaks in a calm tone, I always think they're saying the truth every time. They do. They are actually. Um, forbidden by the Canadian government. These people was uh, therefore not allowed to practice this tradition. And lately they have started to rediscover their own history, past and costume. And they have kindly let us know that they don't really want people taking this practice because it means quite a lot to them. And if we want to talk about Vikings tattoo, we can do it. But we only have one source about this. Ibn Faldan's travel journey where, well, it's mostly agreed among archaeologists that he probably met uh, Swedes in um, during his uh, travel. And he Yeah, this is the door gas who would stay behind the village and write poems when the real Vikings went raiding and pillaging and stuff. Exactly. Like, nah, don't do it. Don't do it. Them having tattoos 
or body paint. The translation there is a little bit iffy, it can go either way, but it's bullshit. You can have paint or body art on their body except above the neckline. He is very particular with they did not have tattoos in their face. So if you want to be a proper Vikings, don't tattoo your face. And if you want to be a good Viking, as I'm sure you want to be, please don't steal indigenous people's practices. It comes off as a little bit uh, colonial to be. God, he's so nice. I'm obviously joking when I make fun of this guy. I want to make sure that people understand that. Because, like, he seems like such a good guy. Fuck. Fair. And while the Vikings did colonize a bit, maybe we can, you know, be the better people and, you know, go a bit beyond and listen to the people who are asking us kind of quite kindly to just stop. So please, no more shin lines in your Viking cosplay or neo-pagan outfit. Figure out something else, something new, something uh, interesting. Look at the historical sources, go from there. I'm sure you can figure something out. If you want help, feel free, reach out. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And if I can't answer it, there's plenty of people out here that can He's help. like, don't be colonial, don't do colonialism. For example, Professor Howard Williams, who have done so many videos on this topic. Go and check those out and you can learn a great deal and get new inspiration for doing authentic uh, Viking Age. Uh... I, I love him. I. What's his TikTok handle? It's digging up ancient or something. I don't know. Digging up ancient alien. This guy's not a part of the Viking community. He's, I think, just an archaeologist. Like an actual archaeologist. Um, meanwhile, the Vikings on TikTok. Ships on bigger of the way. Oh, yeah! yeah! So let's do the bird and blaze. Each horizon is a new beginning ride. Yeah, bro. This is like History Channel's Vikings. That's what it is. Or the Last Kingdom. They watch too much television and now they think this is how it works. But it is not how it works. They're just LARPing. Anyway, uh, I have a headache, which is not the Viking way. Um, but for this reason, I will be ending the broadcast. I don't know why I have a headache. But uh, shouts out to everyone watching. Hope you had a good stream. Hope it was fun for you. And I will, of course, be back tomorrow, as always. Better boot up 5M, no pixel tomorrow. I didn't set it up at all. I didn't set up uh, no pixel at all, which I fucking should have, most likely. I do need to drink water. I don't know what the fuck's going on with me. Anyway, <sighs> I got to figure out what kind of character to make if Standing I do it. Introduction starting off. There's no way there's this many Alan Wake or Spider Man 2 fans in here in this community. Like, there's no way because when I play, there's like fucking 8k people remaining. Like, everybody leaves. I, I don't believe you guys. Everybody keeps asking, but I think it's just the most like outspoken motherfuckers. Anyway, love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.
Street. 